Enjoy being with you here during the kickoff hour. Rick and Bubba join us in one hour from now. So let's buckle in and, and hey, get set. Let's go. A uh, lot of stories, a lot of personal things going on, and so uh, we will uh, go through those one at a time. Plus, like I said, if you want to chime in, you can do so at 866 be big You help produce this hour. All right, well, here we go. We're getting getting fired up, ready to go for another day. Over to my left is Mr. Greg Burgess, and to my right, it is Michael Helms. What's up, boys? How you doing? Yo. Everybody good? I'm sorry, you back over here. Let me right. get that down, that yo, up yo. right there. Yep, yep. Uh, as, uh, as we get the day going, um, it was kind of funny because I forgot. Uh, I didn't kind of, I didn't really, really <laughs> forget, but I, I kind of forgot, and that is that we had a little system come through yeah. as we were coming into work. Uh, and I knew about it because of our dog Jack and oh, and us go. giving him these, the the, these calming treats now to see if they work. Uh, and marijuana um, gummies. And I uh, no, it's not that. Uh, and and so I um, I gave those to him around three fifteen, I guess, as it came through. Then got in the shower, my same routine. And uh, as I opened the door to leave. Between, I just, I absolutely forgot, and I walked out to the biggest gust of wind, and it threw that it's door blowing. open, hit the pantry door. I'm like, good you, night alive. You, you and the dog both getting nervous? Winds uh, just flying in, rain's you coming in sideways. And I did. I just peed right there. Right there. Uh, couldn't help it. Just couldn't. I just started <laughs> peeing. Uh, but, um, but hey, we're here. Thought about you, too, driving in it, Greg. I was like, you know, he's really, probably off in it. It wasn't bad until right when I pulled in the parking lot. Yeah. And it was raining pretty hard. Then. Yeah. If you noticed, I parked a little closer than I normally would. <laughs> you do. I saw I saw a blue out there. Yeah. I don't know what you've named it. I call it blue. <clears throat> you call it blue? I do. It's a blue truck. Ahead. It is. <laughs> deep blue. A deep blue. Ooh, it's deep a deep blue, blue truck. Um, I know you said, Lisa, I sent this to the team last night, and I know you, you told me that Lisa stepped off in it and watched it's it a little funny. bit. It's pretty funny, yeah. She brought up, she you know, talks about shows on TV. I didn't expect this one. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the Fox. Because I fall asleep so early, I couldn't watch it. The Fox series, uh, Special Forces, World's Toughest Test. Um, and, I, you know, we got so to So you're be, saying it living up to the hype. A lot of mm-hmm. those shows, like, it, it, they'll show previews, and mm-hmm. then that's basically the So you liked point. it. Oh yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I, I um, it was after dinner. It was a little late, and it's too late to really sh- get into anything. Uh, and so I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna check this out. I saw that it was an option, and I'm like, okay, here we go. Uh, I saw uh, Amendola, a former NFL. Yeah. Uh, I saw um, it was at Mel B, a former Spice oh, Girl. Spice Girl, Bubba, um, you had uh, all kind. You got Dwight Howard. Uh, you just, I mean, you had so many personalities in it and I'm looking at it and I'm going, Oh wow. There's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew oh wow. Mike Piazza is in it. Uh, uh my Mike goodness. Piazza. I, I, I think I might watch this. And, um, about okay and, nice. and I, and I saw it and I was like, okay, th- this looks pretty interesting. I saw the trailer. I had to, wanted to watch the trailer again. And then I saw the, uh, the bad A's that are running it yeah. and their credentials are, are something else. I mean, we got uh, Navy, former Navy SEALs. We got, I mean, <clears throat> hey, y'all, we, we got things that they said we can't even tell y'all what we've been doing. I mean, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and um, they're running where well, they're running everything. And they're like, I don't care if you're a celebrity. Tests. I don't care if you're a Hall of Famer, which Mike is. I don't care what your deal is. When you're here, you're ours and you'll do what we say. And they put them through the ringer. And in episode one, we already had two drop out. Are we? Is that the key? See who survives? Yeah, yeah. Is, I guess they, whoever gets some to the competition end. competition or? I don't know that it's a competition. I just from what or I was it just an exhibition, right? I, and I didn't, I didn't probably do a good enough job on like reading up on how the shows ran or whatever. I just saw that the challenge is to get to the end to where they would say, "Yes, you're part of the team and you are a special forces, okay. uh, and just and you're going to leave here better standing. than you were." You know, come over your fears and all this kind of stuff. And so, um, just going through it and seeing the the the, the cast and the different personalities. And, and how all that played out was pretty interesting. Dr. Drew, uh, I mean, the first episode, he's out. He had Dr. some kind Drew, of – What? Well, he sat there. He was in their little tent, uh, which is their quarters, where yeah. they, you know they go to sleep and they got the cots and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and and he was just, like, pale looking and uh, cotton mouth Dr. and kind of – and everybody's like, hey, are you okay? And mm-hmm. he goes, I, no, I don't think I am. I'm kind of nauseated <laughs> or whatever. Well, anyway, he ended up needing an IV. He was dehydrated. And when they said, "Hey, if you get an IV, you're out," really? And, yeah. 
So he didn't say I want to well, leave. Because you got to have, had to leave. Right, because, you, hey, you need medical attention. Uh, so Dr. we can't Drew. really do that here. We need to get you to a facility, to a hospital, get you an IV, because it what they were doing was not correcting how he felt. He was actually getting worse. Uh, and, that you know, being dehydrated, can, yeah, if you don't take like care for, of it. To it's, lose one of the contestants. No, you no, know, you don't want that. that. That'd be tough. Any, um, uh, any turds in the bunch? Anybody now, so anybody, far, anybody bow up to him? <laughs> so far, um, uh, and I don't know what this. Who this Kate? Is it Goslin? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, it was a girl that had them eight. How I many? Not eight. How many kids did they have? They had a bunch. Uh, was it eight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It may have been. She did. She uh, she hurt herself uh, falling back. Uh, they had this one deal. The first competition. I say competition. The first challenge. Eight? She had. To, you yeah. had to stand on on an, uh, in a on the edge of a helicopter. Yeah, and you had to fall back backwards Ooh. into the water oh yeah and they're somewhere in jordan by the way in the desert wow. okay uh and she hurt her neck uh and she and, and she even called it herself she said i'm kind of a candy but i, I want to try to get through this um she's also 47 yeah yeah she was probably one of the older ones her dr drew uh and a couple of other ones did she have to leave uh she did what because about her plus eight? she needed she had to go what to the hospital How old are they, now? they wanted to do an x-ray on on her neck and make sure that she was okay uh, Jamie Lynn Spears, Brittany's sister. Okay, I know who that she's, is. Uh, really? She's dealing with some some demons that she's trying to get through in the first competition. Uh, but she's, she's trying to make it. Now, Mike Piazza, he's basically said, look, I'm just going to call it. Since my retirement, I've become soft. And I need to find out if I still got a, some fight. Okay. I, you know, I still got some fight in me. I still it, got a dog in me. Yeah, that, yeah there you go. sitting back on that money enjoying life. Uh, and Good then, of course um, – uh, you know, you got um, Dwight Howard. He's just so tall. He's so yeah. big. Uh, Montel Jordan. You remember Montel I, Jordan? Yeah, he didn't have a talk show or something. Oh, well, no, he. Uh, well, he might have, but uh, he uh, had the song. Uh, oh, what's his? Oh, um, I'm thinking about. Well, Mon- I'm yeah, thinking about uh, different Montel. Uh, anyway, he's he's I've kind of funny. Sing us it to it. Nah, uh, I, 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 give us a little I'm bit more of that. that. Let's nah, see if we can figure not. it out. What you say? Hannah Brown's in it. Oh, good lord! She's trying to get back in the spotlight. Yeah. Chef uh, Tyler Florence Don't know is, is in it. Not in the celebrity chef. Yeah, I know. Um, you got, uh, as I said, Danny uh, Amadola. Amadola, yeah. excuse me. Uh, you would think he would be really good. And, and, and he, he's kind of NFL. been the one. He's <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Danny Amadola, former NFL. <laughs> uh, he's kind of he, he's kind of just been going through it. They haven't mentioned him much, which means he's pretty owning it. That's probably. what I was going to say. He he's had, probably he that far it. out of the league. What, it's, two years? Yeah. Did Montel, I'm looking this up, I'll make sure the same guy. Yeah, this is how yeah, we that's do. what I was saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, this okay. is how I, I saw, know you know. And um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> is it um, Anthony? Is NFL it, fella. Scar, uh, how, how, Scarmucci? What's his name? Anna, I think you're uh, right. Anthony. Oh, Scarmucci. Scarmucci the, is, it, is that the, how you say yeah, his last name? What, what was he something to do with Trump? He, he, yeah, he was like his uh, the the White House yeah. press, whatever. But and briefly. He, he wasn't he, there long. He, he, he even said it. I mean, I was that for 11 days. Yeah. You know, uh, so he's like, you know, I deal through different things. Communications uh, director. Any more NFLs? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Ken- so they have a wide spectrum of people. Yeah, yeah, Kenya Moore, she's one of the uh, no, no, no. Uh, celebrity housewives, oh, something okay. another, whatever. You love that series. No, I don't know about all that. Especially but I guess what LA. I'm trying to say is it, it's like they ain't – it's le- it's like that. Well, I don't care who you are. I mean, we're going to see if you can. I actually saw in pull the previews when they put them in a vehicle and dunk them under the. Water. Oh yeah, there's like all kinds of things. And then, then then you got personalities where different fears and and, and different things in their lives. Oh, yeah. You know, they're, they're trying to deal with it, and and they even are, are talking to them. They're like, you know, I got to <laughs> overcome this. You know, and then if it gets too serious, like. Uh, this, you know, Spears was really upset about some something that she was trying to overcome, and they call her in, talk to her, make sure she's mentally okay, and and all that. But nah. I think that you would like it. I oh, think I, both I think of would you too. would. I'll, and I know I'll you've been it. talking about it. Some. I, um, I saw the previews, but then it, you know, I guess I can watch it on Hulu because when it comes that's on the network, it's like nine o'clock. That's what I did. Yeah, that, I just watched. But, but for some reason, one. Lisa watched it. She was bringing it up to me, which is funny when you brought it up. Yeah, I, but she somehow loved it. I think it, there's though. four episodes out, and I've watched the first one. I'll second guest dinners with friends because they can be interrupted by diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or oily stools. 
It turns out I have EPI, or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, which means I'm missing the enzymes needed to digest food. My doctor prescribed Creon Pancrelipase, an oral prescription medication that replaces pancreatic digestive enzymes. Creon treats EPI due to cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, pancreatectomy, or other conditions. Creon may increase your chance of fibrosing colonopathy, a rare bowel disorder. Tell your doctor if you have a history of intestinal blockage or scarring or thickening of your bowel wall, if you're allergic to pork, or if you have gout, kidney problems, or worsening of painful swollen joints. Call your doctor if you have any unusual or severe gastrointestinal symptoms or allergic reactions. Take Creon as directed by your doctor and always with food. Do not chew capsules as this may cause mouth irritation. Other side effects may include blood sugar changes, gas, dizziness, sore throat, and cough. These are not all the side effects of Creon. Creon is the number one prescribed EPI treatment. Ask your doctor about Creon for EPI and visit creoninfo.com or call 800-633-9110 to learn more. That's C-R-E-O-N info.com. As a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 is going to depend on the team members that you surround yourself with. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently. They make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on job qualifications all on one platform. They'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Bubba. That's linkedin.com slash Bubba. Terms and conditions apply. Looking to save time and money in the new year? Get HelloFresh and take control of the clock and your budget with delicious recipes delivered right to the door. Spend less time in the kitchen with new, fast, and fresh recipes packed with flavor and ready in 15 minutes. And at 25% cheaper than takeout, HelloFresh is the most delicious way to save. Save up today for 22 free meals plus free shipping with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. The code Bubba, HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. A good pair of wireless earbuds is indispensable in 2023. And for premium audio at the perfect price point, you got to go with Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They offer optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit and a 32-hour battery life. Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of the other premium audio brands. Get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Bubba. That's buyraycon.com slash Bubba. Our friends at TheraBreath have some good news if you have bad breath. Try TheraBreath Fresh Breath Oral Rinse. TheraBreath is dentist formulated by Dr. Katz himself. TheraBreath doesn't mask bad breath like those burning alcohol mouthwashes that can actually irritate sensitive mouths. It's alcohol-free and free of gluten with no added dyes or colors. Find TheraBreath in all your favorite retail and drug stores. Look for the bright orange cap or online at TheraBreath.com. You can find a direct link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. TheraBreath, confidence in every capful. All right, folks, you've heard us talking about what Relief Factor can do for your pain for several years now. If you struggle with occasional aches and pains due to aging, exercise, everyday living, consider this. Relief Factor is 100% drug-free. It's made up of ingredients that simply help your own body deal with its natural inflammatory response. And we kid you not, Relief Factor is for real. And the majority of people who order the three-week quick start for just $19.95, go on to order more. Try it at relieffactor.com or rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Helix Sleep mattresses are made right here in the USA, and folks, they ship right to your door for free. If you don't love it after 100 days of sleeping on it, they'll pick it up for a full refund. But based on how we feel about our mattress and what the 12,000 five-star reviews say on Helix Sleep mattresses, we know you'll love yours too. Head to helixsleep.com slash bubba for $350 off all mattress orders. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. That's helixsleep.com slash Bubba for $350 off or visit rickandbubba.com under sponsors. Today on Hey Culligan, smooth skin and soft hair comes from where? Here's Mike. Hey Culligan, I've tried every conditioner, lotion, and body wash known to man and my skin still feels like sandpaper. It could be your water, Mike. Oh, that's harsh. More like hard water. Are you interested in smart, high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? Huh? Want baby smooth skin and soft, luxurious hair? <laughs> yeah, can you hurry? I have a date tonight. We're already on the way, Mike. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan Water expert at Culligan.com. Having trouble picking a New Year's resolution? Car Shield has you covered. This year, we don't have to worry about how much it's going to cost to fix our cars when they break down. Prices on just about everything are still rising, but we've locked in our price and it will never go up. This year, choose coverage through Car Shield, a resolution you can easily keep with protection plans for around 100 bucks a month that cover more parts than ever before. Go to carshield.com slash Bubba or call 800-465-6550 or go to Rick and Bubba dot com. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the
the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. We are rolling back 23 minutes past the hour. It's the kickoff hour. I am Speedy. There's Greg. There's Helmsy. We are the Good Time Gang. Rick and Bubba, as well as Adler, join us right after top of the hour, and then we'll get this thing going for the main show. But until then, we're kicking out, kicking things off with the kickoff hour. That's why it's called. That's that. why you kick it off, pal. Today, National Popcorn Day, and National I don't, I don't. How are you on popcorn? I, I well, I, I'm not real big on popcorn, but Terry is, and and I, I I don't seek popcorn out, but I've noticed that if it's available, I'll go to it. That's me. I yeah. enjoy popcorn, mm-hmm. but I hardly ever eat it. She's but got when this... I do, I do like it, and I, the microwave popcorn is a game changer. Yeah, when that came out, right? I, I know that was a long time ago, yeah. but in my world. <laughs> but I tell you what else I like. I like the smart pop white cheddar that you buy mm-hmm. in the chip section. Okay, that is. See, I don't seek anything like that out, but I have white cheddar. Well, there'll be something smart in, pop. Okay, um, it's good. Terry, it's also a smart she's pop. found something she can eat uh, popcorn wise, and so she'll make it every now and then. And she didn't just make a little; she makes a big bowl of it and and puts the top on it, and then it'll sit there for days and just go by and get you a little every now and then. So. Popcorn's like, kind of like back in my life a little everything bit. Everything else, I like it a little burnt. Yeah. And then in the holidays, the chocolate-covered popcorn, mm-hmm. caramel popcorn, some good stuff. Mm. Don't eat a lot of it. Yeah. Hardly do, but I do like it. Do y'all like to eat anything when you watch movies? Like, you know, yes. popcorn in a movie is always a thing. But if you're at home, do y'all do you go, hey, let's make something and watch a movie, or do you sit down I don't down announce and watch it, it, but I'll. You don't? I'll, okay. No, but I've noticed chips and salsa or chips and a dip is my go-to okay. snack. Uh, for movie or TV watching. I'm normally the one snacking, Lisa doesn't. Do y'all turn the lights down for a movie? Yeah, I turn the lights off. No. Completely. Okay. And right. Amanda can't stand it. I See, have one one uh, lamp on in the corner. That's what Amanda mm-hmm. Amanda wants a light on. I don't there. want the big light on. I right. want everything So you got to have one on. You get scared See, or something? It's too dark. No, I just don't like all that. <laughs> Little man gets scared? <laughs> I just don't like all that around me. Uh, darkness? A, I'll fall asleep. Okay. Oh, normally. okay. Okay, right. well, that's say that. You know. Because I feel like I, just, I can see better. I don't like light, it when the like TV. I don't like it when the TV's the only light in the room. I don't oh, know. Really? Oh wow, he's geeky. That's the way no, Amanda, that. Amanda's it Amanda's the same way. Right. It just doesn't look right. Uh, well, see, I I'm trying to set the mood. I try to if 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 I hey, watch the movie it. mood, not that mood. Right, Greg. Greg, Greg they're watching you, a movie. I mean, Good night. Um, if pal. if I'm watching a movie and we turn it down, I've got to if I'm gonna eat anything, it's got to be something that I don't need light for. So I would think yeah. of chips and salsa. If it's dark, yeah. I'm dropping salsa. That's hard. No, it's no, hard. No. That's dark. TV light. I mean, you're like, you're like, what? Where is everything? That TV light handles that. You got a TV tray. <laughs> yeah. To set it on. You still we, have? Those? We do have one of those. No, but I like them. We got a coffee table. Ooh, that raises, I got money. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those. I think everybody has coffee. Tables I don't know at that everybody point. does. <laughs> um, but it, it sits this there. New thing is coffee and it, table, and it raises up. Like I've a, seen oh, those. You got sure enough good I coffee table. That's a good one. Very no expense. No, I hit a little Cajun pretty, trail mix. Old. Yeah? I get me okay. just one little plastic bowl. I uh-huh. put Cajun trail mix in it. No, it's small. Little now, bowl. are you guys, do y'all like popcorn and chase it with something chocolate? You know, there's that, that craze, is a good too. Thing. Yeah. I don't hate it. Okay. Every now and then, I'll put Parmesan cheese on my popcorn. Really? Yeah. Interesting. You know, they have this different stuff you can do. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like really, I, at the movie, when they put the butter on it, it's okay, but mm-hmm. I don't like butter flavored microwave. I want plain. I don't like the butter flavored microwave. Hmm. I don't know why. Want it plain? Doesn't come into my world enough to. to yeah, I don't, again, I hardly hardly ever yeah. eat popcorn, but when I do, if I it's like around, it. I may grab me a handful, but I don't. I don't like. I don't know the different flavors. I don't. I don't. You I don't like know about I, kettle cooked. Tell you this, opposed I, to regular. I, I will say this: I don't like the way it makes the house smell when it's cooked. Yeah, because we always overdo it. Yeah, yeah. I can remember when I was a kid. My mother, I get in trouble yeah. for that and burning pizzas. Well, I'll burn a pizza in a minute because <laughs> yeah. I like it that way. But when I was a kid, they had to put the, the popcorn seeds in a pan and, mm-hmm. and pop, 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 mm-hmm. you know, and then they had the Jiffy Pop, that big alu- uh, aluminum foil thing that would mm-hmm. rise up. You remember that? Mm-hmm. We thought that was cool. Then microwaves came out. And Ter- the like I said, popcorn was a game changer. Well, Terry has found something. She puts it in the pan. She puts them in the pan with the little top on it oh, okay. and, and, and stirs it around. All of a sudden, pop, 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 pop. and when it decides to pop. Let me tell you something. It's popping, and the top's coming up, and everything. Mm-hmm. When's uh, the last time? I mean, smells smells the whole house up. Yeah. We we hadn't had which I is mean, good. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't know. But we hadn't had really a a, a game changer creation 
in the food world and you know think. lately it's been You're like right. years like, like to, to, what are you talking about like we progressed with popcorn we progressed okay. with everything but like everything's kind of been the same for the last few nobody's come out with some kind of food vigil that makes your life better in the food world yeah yeah it seems like the focus has been uh, i'm a, this is we're making the same thing but we're going to try to make it better nobody has yeah when it's, soup you know. and I, I usually don't go this route but when soup came in a microwavable bowl as opposed to a can yeah you could pop the top off stick it in that was mm-hmm. pretty good but I actually like uh, the can kind better. The can kind? Well, I, won't, I don't know. I well, like soup in a can. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Mabry came over the other night. Terry had just made some popcorn, and when they, they go one step into the house, and you can hear Mabry, oh, somebody's made popcorn. How about you can instantly know when somebody's made popcorn? It yeah. smells a whole house. Oh, no. Out. You're, well, you're aware of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why I was saying that. It stinks up the house. It yeah. Does. I guess yeah. you got to like that, that smell. But when yeah. you open that yeah. bag up and the heat uh-huh. comes out of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Steam. A little Parmesan uh-huh. cheese in there. Come on now. Shh. Starving now. I've even seen people put hot sauce in. Just I just know how y'all like hot out. sauce. Dude. Dude. I'm out here, by the way. I got to get us some more. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Ran out yesterday. Really? Two days ago. Here? Yeah. Oh, you know, man. I bring my own little Tabasco and put it in there. Oh, okay. For oh, eggs and stuff like that. When okay. We're okay. I like that salsa they sent on them eggs. Uh-huh. Pretty good every morning. All right, so we're hungry now and kind of want some popcorn. I got um, a popcorn. I got some peanuts in there. I'll go get some. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. There's some another stash of Thank peanuts you. is Thank here. You, Dan. you got to be quiet. Dan. Or Bubba's going to be back in your office. Be quiet about it. Dan, call Dan. Him, you call him Dan. I just did accidentally. <laughs> Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Whether you're making big changes this new year or you're just settling back into a consistent routine, chances are you could use some audio accompaniment. Uh, on this journey, I know that for me, I, 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 that's crucial. Uh, a good pair of wireless earbuds is indispensable in 2023. For premium audio at the perfect price point, you got to go with Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds, they look, they feel, and they sound better than ever with optimized gel tips for that perfect in-ear fit. These earbuds are so comfortable, and they will not budge. Trust me, Raycon's give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. With Raycon's, you get quality audio at half the price of the other audio brands and it's no wonder their everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five star reviews. Now's the time for you to check them out for yourself. Go to buyraycon.com slash Bubba today. We'll get you an additional 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Bubba to score 15% off. Sure, we'd love to drop those leftover pandemic pounds but how sick are all of you like me seeing these ads for weight loss pills and fad diets? I've been there. I've done that. They don't work. I'll tell you what works. Eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables a day. You do that and the weight can fall off. But A, vegetables, not a huge fan. Or maybe B, who has time to prepare for that every day? legitimate concerns. Let's talk Field of Greens. Field of Greens is a science-backed formula of specific fruits and vegetables you're not going to find in any other product. Proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you burn calories faster and you lose weight a healthier way. And Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. Yes, you'll look and feel healthier fast, but the greater proof comes at the next checkup when your doctor says, wow, you've lost weight, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Let's get you started. 15% off your first order. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba. Fieldofgreens.com, promo code Bubba. Have you tried an American-made Helix sleep mattress yet? Unlike a lot of other mattress companies, Helix owns its own manufacturing facility right here in the States. You order, they ship your mattress directly from their facility right to your front door for free. And if you don't love it after 100 days of sleeping on it, they'll come pick it up for a full refund. But based on how we feel about our mattress, which we we love, by the way, and the 12,000 five-star reviews, What they're saying about Helix Sleep mattresses, we know you'll love yours too. Nervous about buying a mattress online? Don't be. The Helix Sleep Quiz takes into account your individual sleep preferences to match you and your partner with a perfect mattress just for you. Plus, you've got that 100-day risk-free trial. They also have plus-size mattresses and kids' mattresses ranked best mattress winner by Parents Magazine. Head to helixsleep.com slash Bubba. We'll get you $350 off all mattress orders. That's the best 
offer yet. HelixSleep.com slash Bubba for 350 bucks off your mattress. Folks, we've been talking about Relief Factor on our show for quite some time now. Do we guarantee Relief Factor is going to lower or eliminate your occasional aches and pains? No, we never make a claim like that. But what I can tell you is that the majority of folks who ordered the three-week quick start pack for only $19.95 go on to order more. Now, what we really like about Relief Factor is it's 100% drug-free. It's a supplement that's made up of ingredients that simply help your own body deal with its natural inflammatory response. For a lot of us, that's very important. Getting older, working outside in the warm weather, even exercising can cause frustrating aches and pains, or maybe it's the occasional back, shoulder, or hip pain that's bothering you. Relief Factor has helped us and so many of our friends, so when you think of it this way, is a dollar a day too much to see if you can get out of some of that frustrating pain? To order this three-week quick start pack for $19.95 plus shipping and handling, just go to relieffactor.com. That's relieffactor.com. Let's see if we can get you out of some of that pain. Also, you can go to rickandbubba.com. Look under the sponsors button for a link. Folks, do you need to hire new people? Well, as a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. And they go beyond resumes data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates and they make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. And that's just part of why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the other leading competitors. They'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. And right now you can post your job for free at LinkedInBubba.com. That's LinkedInBubba.com. Terms and conditions apply. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba. 25 minutes until top of the hour. What's Baby up? It's the kickoff hour, and we are rolling <laughs> uh, for another day here. And uh, we thank all of you for going, yes, we will tune over and uh, enjoy the Rick and Bubba show. Uh, and we thank you for doing so. It's the Good Time Gang. I'm Speedy, and there's Greg Burgess and yep. Michael Helms. Uh, we call him Coach, uh, and uh, Helmsy is with UAB Tennis, uh, men's UAB Tennis, um, and uh, that's his uh, other life after the show, and so he's off in that, uh, and I love the snaps of you on the court uh, or behind I, the I scenes. I was going to ask you, every once in a while, I'll give you some. Oh, just, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because right. I love location checks. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm off in something, and oh, wow, so that's what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, and so I know uh, – you know, in in helping promote uh, the, the team and parking is an issue. So let's just let's just discuss right, both. So downtown, First of all, downtowns yeah. it's a it's a tough one. Before man. we go there, I just park. want a, a public service announcement to everyone because we've tried to fresh. I've, I'm starting to put some things uh, on our social media here with some. I found me a little app that I'm excited about, and I'm using it both for Rick and Bubba and for the tennis world. Right. And uh, I'll just call this check your lyrics. Okay, check yeah, your yeah, lyrics. You, do. you, you want to make sure it. you do that. So I was putting together a tennis video, and I thought I was sharp, and I thought the I'd caught some good video, and this app edits everything up for you nicely and puts a little song to it. Dude, I got a song, and it was a nice little beat. I was getting into it, mm-hmm. and I and and it You're was getting into what it. I thought <laughs> it was saying was working like Riley. Or working Riley? like Raleigh, I thought that it was kind of a it was kind of like a rap song kind of mm-hmm. thing, and I thought, well, hey, that's got a good tune to it, and it doesn't have any cuss words in it, so I can put that out on our UAB men's tennis mm-hmm. Instagram. Well, then before I put it out there, I thought, let's check and make sure Riley is not some kind of you know because you don't Did you know. think I'm they're older. referring to somebody that we didn't know well i was thinking working i was just thinking if it sounds if it says working like riley mm-hmm. then it's pro- riley probably works hard and mm-hmm. that'd be a good song to put to our guys who are extremely hard workers okay this whole time do you know what the song was saying so glad I didn't put it out. Mm-hmm. Twerking like Miley. Oh, big difference. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. working like Riley. No. Working like Riley's not even a thing. You think yeah, you get yeah. one of them to it's, twerk it while was, you took it was, Please do it that. It was twerking like Miley. And I was like, 
So <laughs> she showed me last night. Amanda Miley goes, don't. "There's a part of me that wish you would have put that out." Well, you get on the rug and twerk like her, like Miley. Mm-hmm. So thankfully, I didn't do that. Um, but good catch, check, coach. Check the social medias for that. The I other thing that, that I that I have, <laughs> I said I was not going to do. We kind of brought it up briefly as I started down this mm-hmm. venture. Dude, I've got to tell him. I, I I feel like I need a scooter, guys. I do. I feel when you like say I, scooter, do you mean the stand on type? Yes, the stand on the stand on scooter that is uh, battery powered, and I, I feel I feel like I need one. Does Helms need a scooter? Is my question. All right. So now this is you can wreck. <laughs> all right. For those of you around the country, you got to understand something. UAB, it, its home is in downtown Birmingham. Yes, middle of the city. All right. So. Because a lot of people might not know that. Yeah. I mean, even though it's University of Alabama at Birmingham, yeah. a lot of people might not know the campus is in yeah. down the downtown It's really area. a great location, too. It right. really is. Right. It's and so uh, don't think, even though it's a great atmosphere, don't think, hey, it's, you got your own college campus and, you know, all this kind of thing. Rolling no, you, green hills. You've got, you've got busy roads and stuff. And so oh, yeah. you've got, you got parking lots hey, that, are assi- you up that are assi- yes, assigned to, uh, uh, to uh, staff and others, but sometimes if you've got to move around, you can't go jump in the car and move around every time because then you can spend half the day trying to find a parking That's spot. That's it. That's the key. And, and and so you see a lot of scooters. They offer yeah. them to the students where they can get on a scooter and ride it around and then just leave it wherever they – Nearly jumped on one of those yesterday because yeah. you can do like an app thing. Maybe yeah. I should start Is one here. of them close to where you park? They're all over the place. Yeah, they're so all, they over, all the over the city. And, all over, and so you have – you can scan the top mm. of it yeah. and it'll – and it'll you know, and it, I guess it does your distance and it charges you depending on how far you go or how long you use it. Right. And you then could you just charge, leave it you wherever could, you go. You could start there and see, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I like this, but I know – for that's one of those companies I wish we would have thought of. Yeah. Because so, so, what they'll do is they have they'll, bikes too. Though. Yeah. They'll, yeah. They've got obviously they can track all these devices, and so once they get to a certain power, low power, they go pick them up, charge them, then put them back out where they need Station. to be at the mm-hmm. different stations. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And and most larger campuses have things like this. Yeah. So this isn't just a UAB Some have thing. Oh yeah. But you Craig. are <laughs> you are encountering an issue. That's the Amish. Where you've yes. got to get around campus. Yeah. And and it's like, man, if I go get my truck I absolutely would do it. I, I God I like where my truck is. It's parked there. If I move it, I lose a spot. I hate looking for parking. Oh my gracious. And he, right. and he didn't have a small vehicle. It's, no, you know, and that's your, been a struggle too. It's your crew cab. Yeah, I so, don't like looking for parking. So, um, I, would so yeah, you, you, I would definitely. Ride. I've I got so. several. Like, Can, so you got to think. I'm about. I've got several different places that mm-hmm. I have to go each day, that are within, uh, probably about a mile of one another. Honestly, and it, there's just no easy. The parking is the biggest thing. To your point, it's not that I can't get in my car and get there. It's I can't get in my car and I can't find a park. Mm-hmm. And then you get into that position where like okay well i've paid for parking for two hours because this particular parking spot only allows two hour parking Mm -hmm. i've paid for it i've done everything the way i'm supposed to with the app but now i'm here for four hours instead of two and so now they could actually write me a ticket Mm -hmm. then i'm in a rush to get to a meeting and and all of a sudden i've got to find a park and now i'm in a legal spot yeah, in the parking oh, lot yeah. that I don't have the decal that's right. I'd scoot around. And so I was completely against this. Now you're back to parallel parking, which you haven't done in years. Oh, I tried. I, I, I tried it the other day. It took me like seven turns. Um, <laughs> Take oh, your bicycle in the back of your truck. Or a scooter. Uh-huh. I can't do a bicycle because that's work. You know yeah, what I mean? I just, really, oh, wow. I just assume walk. You didn't you know, do the bicycle? I just assume walk. Okay. Um, and I've done that. Hey, Tuesday walked a lot. Uh, Monday walked a lot. Uh, Get uh, yes, yesterday yeah. it was this it frustrated me because I was back and forth back and forth in in the vehicle mm-hmm. but, and because of a little rain mm-hmm. I just feel like I probably need to keep a scooter with me in case I need it and I, I was completely against it mm-hmm. until I looked up the other day and saw one the great the legend Casey Dunn on the scooter <laughs> oh, hi, hi, the hi. baseball coach at UAB and I looked at him and he looked was at it an me, off-road scooter Huh? No, okay. no. But he, hey, he looked at me almost like he had been caught doing something he right, wasn't supposed to. Like right. he did not want me to see him on the scooter. And yeah. I'm like, so you're on a scooter? He goes, man, you got to have it around here. Got to have it. Now, and was, I, it, was it on personal coaches, scooter or was it the – Yeah, he went and got him a good okay. one. Now, listen, he or either the, the university got him one. one I wonder two. if those that you rent, it's just like when you grab a buggy, sometimes you get one that ain't right. 
Yeah, yeah. there's that oh, risk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You're right. You're right. Because you don't you hate when you turn? I was like, oh yeah. Who likes that? All right. So a couple of things. Hey, can we pick out your helmet and your knee pads? Well, I'm not wearing a helmet. Oh yeah, and knee pads. I want you one with a mohawk. Yeah. No, and I won't. And evidently, that's not a rule because nobody wears helmets. I want to design your helmet. Design it. Yeah, I want to put something on it. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, let me ask you this though. I'm I'm at my location. I have my scooter. Yeah. Do you take the scooter in with you? Because if you drop yeah. it, it could be stolen. No. The so guys, are, you, so, are you tying it up so to a tree? What are you to, doing? No, no. Oh, so dang. I can. Let's. So our office is actually in Bartow Arena. Ooh, I got money. Ooh, I mean, what is that? Bartow. What does money have to do with I don't anything? Know. It's just you got. Hey, if I had money, we wouldn't have our offices in Bartow no, Arena. Buy They'd be out there. We'd loaded. Build them by the tennis court. Loaded. The guys ride these, the players, they ride them all over the place, to class, sure. to, to training room, to the courts, to whatever, the players' lounge. And so they will they'll they can ride them up to Bartow, but they can't ride them in Bartow mm. to our offices, right. which we've had to get on them about. That's probably mm-hmm. a good idea. Um, oh, you, did you say, whoa? Well, we, we've, whoa. we haven't seen them doing it, but mm-hmm. we've been t- there's been some complaints about, hey, hey, tell you boys once they're – Get in the building, stay off the scooter, right. just walk it to the office. Got it. Which makes sense. I mm-hmm. get that. Um, and we kindly told them, and they abide by it. They're good kids. Mm-hmm. But we put them in the lounge or right outside the the player's lounge office area. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where I would keep it. I'd probably keep it right outside the, the door. Or I'd maybe do in it. the office. I'd definitely um, do it. Oh, of course. Uh, you so got I'm thinking to. about just keep I mean, it. We're, we got to be efficient. Well, and get and I, have, I have found somewhere – that's right next to the tennis courts that I can – because that's my first stop because we practice at 11. So mm-hmm. that's my first stop. I have found a place where I can park and stay there as long as I want to, not get a ticket. Okay. It's legal, and I could keep the scooter in in the vehicle. And bring your base. And that would be – yeah, exactly. And then I would just right. scooter from there, right. and then once the day's over, scooter back, get my car going. So do you have your scooter getting place? Because, I, I mean, you got to go to and, Dunn and find out. And and i got to tell I know, you – I mean, hey, I know you don't have, have Coach seen, Dunn kind of money. Have but, you I mean, seen them? They're expensive. Yeah. Scooters are not cheap. You need oh, – The good ones. I don't know – I don't know enough about scooters. Um, you don't? I don't. Um I mean, can you get a used scooter, or if it's a used scooter, is it a piece? No, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, don't know. I think I just start question. brand new. Yeah. I think in this world, you probably start brand new. I, yeah. I looked at the, um, I looked at the name brands that some of the players had, and I looked them up, and they were they're not cheap. Mm-hmm. When I when I say not cheap, five six hundred dollars, yeah. seven hundred. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I just googled it. scooters for coaches. And this is what's you really up googled here. scooters Maybe for coaches. Those other ones. Did you really Google that? <laughs> no. Maybe use some of the rentals just to make sure you hey, like it before you go it I think that's what I'm going to do. This one ain't, I, I you know what I wish? I wish he wouldn't go uh, electric, and I wish he would be sitting there. Just, now, you can always yeah. do that. Yeah. You see a lot. You Without see a lot of that. Right. You see a lot of that <laughs> with the oh, students, yeah. and you yeah. see a lot of skateboards out there. Adler, this is his world. Oh, yeah. You know that, that skateboard of his? I'm going to tell you what was funny. I had to meet at the student, student commons building or whatever, yeah. uh, whatever they call it. There is a um, – At UAB? Yes. Okay. There's uh there's uh like a uh, the campus books not a bookstore but the campus store in there yeah. where you can buy swag and all yeah. that. I had a meeting in that building. It's a nice place, by yeah. the way. And um I had lunch had there yesterday. Pertained to UAB football and all that. So I had a meeting. Well okay. I, I made three laps trying to find a parking spot. And yeah, you, by now it. you're like So you're my world right there. You're every like, day. Okay, I'm about to go just park at Regents Park That's, uh and just walk five blocks. Yeah, which I've done. Know? I've walked three blocks out before. Yeah. Or I'm a claim I gotta go to the health department for something and, and park there. That's close by. Yeah. Uh but anyway I was I was completely frustrated. No if and I so could finally, find a spot I could park, jump on my scooter and go. Oh yeah. So I finally did. I parked and it was about three blocks away. So I'm walking and I see I see one of one of Reese's best friends, J.C. Sibley, who plays football at UAB, and he is digging on them scooters. <laughs> uh, now, he's 6'6". Six, six, don't understand that. And he's just... They, and he's, they're everywhere. And he's going, and he's going, to, he's going to a class yeah. or something, and I scream at him. He didn't hear me. He had his backpack on, you know, yeah. full, full school mode, right? Going to class, doing whatever I got to do. And then I look up, and they're everywhere. There's yeah. just scooters flying all over the place. It's gonna be funny when you look up, Matt, and there comes by. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's going. It's going. Yeah, there goes Bullet Head. But hey, if I, by about the third time, I almost just wanted to leave my car running in the middle of the road. Oh, I can't stand I, I, it because I only had to be there for like five minutes. What about when you get in one of them parking decks and you can't find a space in it, and you God. keep going up and around, oh, yeah. up, up and around? All right, well, look, buddy, you got money. What are you talking and about? And you can buy a six hundred dollars scooter.
Okay. Right? Huh? We'll see. Call it Coach Hounds and Scooter. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I'll second guest dinners with friends because they can be interrupted by diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or oily stools. It turns out I have EPI, or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, which means I'm missing the enzymes needed to digest food. My doctor prescribed Creon Pancrelipase, an oral prescription medication that replaces pancreatic digestive enzymes. Creon treats EPI due to cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, pancreatectomy, or other conditions. Creon may increase your chance of fibrosing colonopathy, a rare bowel disorder. Tell your doctor if you have a history of intestinal blockage or scarring or thickening of your bowel wall, if you're allergic to pork, or if you have gout, kidney problems, or worsening of painful swollen joints. Call your doctor if you have any unusual or severe gastrointestinal symptoms or allergic reactions. Take Creon as directed by your doctor and always with food. Do not chew capsules as this may cause mouth irritation. Other side effects may include blood sugar changes, gas, dizziness, sore throat, and cough. These are not all the side effects of Creon. Creon is the number one prescribed EPI treatment. Ask your doctor about Creon for EPI and visit creoninfo.com or call 800-633-9110 to learn more. That's C-R-E-O-N info.com. And Doug. Hey, listener. Welcome to Lemu's Karaoke Lounge, where Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need, and the music never stops. Hit it. There's an emu with a full-time job. His partner's Doug, but Lemu's the heartthrob. Grubs and worms, that's what Lemu eats. Gotta fuel up to save you money and hit the street. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Today on Hey Culligan, reverse to reduce. Here's Bob. Hey Culligan, I love fresh water, but I got plastic bottles coming out. Whoa, there. Bob, you are not kidding about the bottles. But did you know Culligan's reverse osmosis and always-on drinking water systems provide fresh, clean, delicious drinking water and help reduce the equivalent of over 15 billion plastic bottles from landfills worldwide? Holy fresh, <laughs> environmentally friendly drinking water. Am I right? Right, Bob. And we're already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Kentucky Fried Chicken's pot pies are just five bucks? That's a comforting thought, especially after a holiday season when you had to panic wrap gifts at 2 a.m. Come on. Watch the same kids movie 11 times. Again! And we're lovingly told your cooking was a tad dry, dear. Yeah. A $5 pot pie from KFC with tender chicken, savory sauce, and a flaky crust? That's a very comforting thought. Order your pot pie on the KFC app for just $5. That's finger licking good. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Tax extra. How long does it take to tackle a home project? With Angie, you could cross it off your list before this ad is over. Just tell us what you need. Indoor or outdoor, repair or redesign. And we handle the rest. Sending a top pro to get it done. You don't have to lift a finger. Except to tap the screen or click the mouse. Plus, Angie is free to use. So bring us your next home project, and we'll bring it home. Download the app or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com to get started. Folks, do you need to hire new people? Well, as a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. And they go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million members profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates and they make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. And that's just part of why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the other leading competitors. They'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. And right now you can post your job for free at LinkedInBubba.com. That's LinkedInBubba.com. Terms and conditions apply. Looking to save time and money in the new year? Get HelloFresh and take control of the clock and your budget with delicious recipes delivered right to the door. Spend less time in the kitchen with new fast and fresh recipes like Falafel Power Bowls or Southwest Pork and Bean Burritos, each packed with flavor and ready in just 15 minutes. Over 35 weekly recipes and 70 seasonal and convenient items, there's always something new to try. And pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step instructions make it easy to whoop up a tasty meal right at home. This year, skip that extra trip to the market, cut back on takeout, 
and get HelloFresh delivered instead. At 25% cheaper than takeout, HelloFresh is the easiest and most delicious way to save. Start the year off right with a great deal on America's number one meal kit. Sign up today for 22 free meals plus free shipping with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. That's the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba or RickandBubba.com under the sponsors for a link. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Day without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, All right, it's seven minutes until top of the hour. What's up? Thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday if you're listening live. This portion of the Rick and Bubba show is sponsored by LearBubba.com. You know, the stock market dropped 24% last year. Uh, and if you wonder why some people were still smiling, it's because they owned gold. Uh, even uh, with experts talking about a recession uh, year ahead, gold prices remain shockingly low. Uh, and that makes now shockingly. an optimistic uh, time to invest in gold. Uh, in fact, the CNBC expert predicts gold could go up 100% hitting $4,000 an ounce this year. So... Uh, we, we, we are telling you right now with over 25 years of experience in exceptional uh, trust pilot rating and their risk-free investor pledge, LearBubba.com is the choice to trust. Uh, get your free wealth protection investor guide and receive up to $15,000 in free bonus gold based on the value of your purchase. Just simply visit LearBubba.com or call them at 1-800-707-4575. That's LearBubba.com or call 1-800-707-4575 and talk to them about this. There's also a link at RickandBubba.com under the Sponsors button. All right, so we're, we're coming back. I'm getting lots of links uh, from people going, hey, here's a good scooter, here's a good scooter. Uh, Helms hey, is scooter. contemplating uh, now that he is uh, at UAB every day. Can we get a new nickname, call him Scooter? Yeah, Scooterhead. Because you've been a lot of people use Scooter as a nickname. Mm-hmm. Scooter Helms. Uh, and uh, he is contemplating <laughs> <laughs> getting a scooter because he has to travel around campus uh, and getting in his truck and trying to Got move Got my spots backpack, and, my scooter. By the way, nothing yeah. does my heart greater than running into students at UAB that listen to the show. Mm-hmm. Ran into an engineering student the other day as I was getting me some Asian food there in the food court area. I call it a food court. It's much bigger than that. It's that, that center you're yeah. talking about. Can it just be foods? it got to be Asian Yeah, food. I know. I was wondering well, about Well, they have that. all kinds of options, but that's what I did. This, I'm just saying the world I, we live it, in. Look, it's called Main Bowl, and oh, my gosh, uh, it's so good. Pretty good. And, golly. And, good. and hammered it yesterday. But, I, but I, I ran into an engineering student the other day that loves the show, listens to the show, and uh, it just fired me up to know he's out there getting after it, taking care of business. He's probably one of six people that listen there. And and <laughs> and he loves the show. Right. So it fired me well, up. Well, thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. That? Yep. That's and really I, awesome. And maybe you'll see me on a scooter one day. I may get one just to ride from the truck to the building here. This big parking lot, we I could do just feel ride like I, around for fun. I do yeah. feel like I need to practice before I go yeah. off. Hey, I, was, I, was I hadn't been on a scooter. I, we I don't can know go that I've ride. ever been on a scooter. Like, yeah. like a motorcycle Like a gang scooter race. Scooters. Yeah, I like that. Well, the bathroom's far enough away. We no, could just that, leave them right here and scoot around. Go around that Go around and get out in the front door. That may be our... Um, that may be our... Well, that's high, a good that idea. That made me go high pitch for some you reason. Did. I know what you did get in high um, pitch. I yeah. will ask you this. Can you the borrow... position. Can you be that guy, but can you borrow somebody's scooter and do a dry run and see... If I don't think I can borrow it, I think I'm gonna have to do what Greg said and get one of these off the street. Yeah, just but then you take you a like chance it. on one of them maybe not working appropriately. Yeah, but it, you do need you get to kind of try one that. with a crazy wheel because you know people abuse them. I know, I throw them down. Yeah, nobody does right no more. No, they don't. Nobody wants to work anymore, and and nobody just does. Did it you don't see? Do right. Did yeah. you see? And y'all are gonna love this. I think the first day in office, the Pennsylvania governor, the new one. Uh, let me find this here. Hold on, I'm going through. I'm going through all the show prep. Sorry. Uh, there you go. Pennsylvania governor removes college degree requirement from most state jobs on first full day in office. Talking about so it's these just, jobs had required it obviously up to yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. And what? Why are we doing that? It says uh, just one day after being sworn in as governor of Pennsylvania, uh, Josh Shapiro, I guess. Um, 
he signed an executive order getting rid of four-year college degree requirements for most state jobs. And, but it just goes back to when you said nobody wants to work and yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And we had that. We're other, dumbing down everything. Yeah, and we you had know, that. I'm, I don't have a college degree. I'm not saying that you got to have a college degree right, to be but successful. It, but if the job required that before, sure, right, there must have been a reason. Right. Yeah. Right? And yeah, exactly. And you know, we had that other. What was it? That Ivy League school or somebody where all the students demanded A's. You know, yeah, they, whether they, they were made them or not. Them, and it's just we're dumbing everything down. And, and, and to think just, that anyone would actually think that was possible, right? It tells you where we're at. And that type of mentality is not what made this country great. No. No. You should raise the bar. Correct. And make everyone work harder to achieve that. But Correct. we're lowering the bar. Yep. Exactly. Well, we got idiots in places they don't need to be. Mm. Gosh. Uh, so anyway, uh, that just I thought about that. That's one of the stories we have today in your America. Um, so there. Yeah. And one story that if we don't do today, I'm going to be mad that we had <laughs> yesterday. Uh, the man that was arrested for leading police on a chase when he had a stolen John Deere tractor. I saw that. And um, and he was uh, yeah, he was blaring um, the Dukes of Hazard theme, uh, and it was. Uh, you got to give him credit. Yeah. If he, I mean, if you're gonna go out, go out with style. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What a story he's got. Now he's in jail, but he yeah. is. He is. He's in jail. And what was he... the initial chase over? I don't remember. Um, was he driving? I don't know. Here I go back to the stories. Well, um, never mind. You yeah. Well, I'm that. just kind of touching. I was just some of the stories we got going. What on started today. this high speed chase on yeah. a John Deere? <laughs> <laughs> and then while I'm at it, I'm gonna crank Dukes of Hazard just yeah, for and, added yeah. effect. We're a day late on it. We just never got to it I yesterday. Forget it. Never mind. Um, no, never mind. Good, it didn't happen. Good. As far as I'm concerned, it didn't happen. It was in North Carolina, and um, nah, he's accused of stealing the tractor and leading police on. A few miles long chase. Uh, the reports say the chase uh, shared on TikTok showed police chasing the man uh, in, a, in a reportedly stolen John Deere oh, tractor. Oh, stolen. I got it. Okay. Uh, and uh, the man struck multiple cars in the tractor during the incident, including a police vehicle. Uh, a church was also damaged along the, uh, with a dumpster being hit. So he was, out, he was completely out of control. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got to get to that today. Most sure. people while fleeing the police don't have a theme song. <laughs> no, that's no, pretty no. good. Uh, Helms, he'll take all your scooter emails. That's right. Oh, Greg at rickandbubba.com. Scooter Helms. I know that we did the Mark Zuckerberg story last hour, and and but I, I we didn't have the Ted Cruz commentary then. Yeah, that uh, and we played more of the um, the lighter side of senators not acting like they knew what was going on as well. I don't think they were acting. Yeah, well, that, I think they truly true. did not know. But yeah. like um, I said, it was wa- it was like watching a young person be interviewed by the two old men that sit in the balcony on the Muppet Show. <laughs> yeah, but but Ted, uh, it, it, hey, 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 uh, tell me about this newfangled Facebook. <laughs> um, <laughs> New fangled. Is this like your Twitter? <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, um, I mean, I've never felt like I was a technological genius till I heard uh, yeah. these old I men. I felt like an that. MIT grad listening <laughs> to questions. And I did. It was sad. Tell me about this graham cracker thing everybody looks at. <laughs> Something graham. Uh, but anyway, so um, let's. Uh, Ted Cruz got to the heart of it all, which is we're really trying to figure out if you use your platform to advance your ideas and block those who disagree. Right. Bingo. This is a big concern for, for most. And so so here Ted just wants him to come clean about this, and, and it's, it's an interesting conversation, and really I think he gets to the heart of any concern that somebody might have about what they do and why they do it. It's a pretty good exchange. It's about five minutes long, but it's good. It works on both TV and radio. Just take a listen. Bruce. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zuckerberg, welcome. Thank you for being here. Mr. Zuckerberg, does Facebook consider itself a neutral public forum? Senator, we consider ourselves to be a platform for all ideas. Uh, let me ask the question again. Does Facebook consider itself to be a neutral public forum? And representatives of your company have given conflicting answers on this. Are, are you a First well, Amendment speaker expressing your views, or are you a neutral public forum allowing everyone to speak? Uh, Senator, here's how we think about this. I don't believe that uh, there is certain content that clearly we do not allow. 
right, hate speech, terrorist content, um, nudity, anything that makes people feel unsafe in, in the community. Um, from that perspective, that's why we generally try to refer to what we do okay. as a platform let, for let all ideas. Just because the time is constrained. It's just a, a simple question. The predicate for, for Section 230 immunity under the CB, CDA is that you are a neutral public forum. Do you consider yourself a neutral public forum? Or are you engaged in political speech, which is your right under the First Amendment? Well, Senator, our goal is certainly not to engage in political speech. I'm not that familiar with the specific legal language of the, the law that you, that you speak to, so I, I would need to follow up with you on that. I'm just trying to lay out how broadly I think about this. Well, Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many Americans who I think are deeply concerned that, that Facebook and other tech companies are engaged in a pervasive pattern of bias and political censorship. Uh, there have been numerous instances with Facebook. In May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that Facebook had purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news, including stories about CPAC, including stories about Mitt Romney, including stories about the Lois Lerner IRS scandal, including stories about Glenn Beck. In addition to that, Facebook has initially shut down the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day page, has blocked a post of a Fox News reporter, has blocked over two dozen Catholic pages, and most recently blocked Trump supporters Diamond and Silk's page with 1.2 million Facebook followers after determining their content and brand were, quote, unsafe to the community. To a great many Americans, that appears to be a pervasive pattern of political bias. Do you agree with that assessment? Senator, let me say a few things about this. First, I understand where that concern is coming from because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. And I, I, this is actually a concern that I have and that I try to root out in the company is making sure that we don't have um, any bias in the work that we do. And I think it is a fair concern that, um, that people would, so, would, so would me, at least me, wonder about. Let me ask this now, question. Are, are you aware of any ad or page that has been taken down from Planned Parenthood? Senator, I, I'm, I'm not, but let me just... Uh, how about MoveOn.org? Sorry? How about MoveOn.org? I'm not specifically aware of those. How about any Democratic candidate for office? I'm not specifically aware. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. In your testimony, you say that you have 15 to 20,000 people working on security and content review. Do you know the political orientation of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review? Uh, no, Senator. We do not generally ask people about their political orientation when they're joining the company. So as CEO, have you ever made hiring or firing decisions based on political positions or what candidates they supported? No. Why was Palmer Lucky fired? That is a specific personnel matter that seems like it would be inappropriate to You just made to a here. specific representation that you didn't make decisions based on political view. Well, is that I, can, I can commit that it was not because of a political view. Do you know of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review, how many, if any, have ever supported financially a Republican candidate for office? Senator, I do not know that. Your test. We thank you for being with us. Man, there's a lot to do today. And we're thankful that you are with us. This hour started a tradition back on uh, 2001. When uh, America was attacked, we began to start this hour with the national anthem. And today's no exception. We do it again.
Eight minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show. We are thankful that you are here. So here we go. We'll unpack another one today. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler have already kind of warming things up. Adler's settling into his spot, but uh, the other three guys gave us a kickoff hour to kind of get things going. You know how you move around a little bit, let's stretch out. They've kind of laid the day out. Bubba and I and Adler will join them now. We'll all go forward and see if we can't uh, put another day in Rick and Bubba history, now 29 years old. Uh, so everybody on the field now but one, the silver tongue one, the man with a golden voice, professional lunch eaters man of the year, the inventor of pizza and a cup, Shakespeare's worst nightmare, and the master out of Kang's English. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bill Bubba Bussy! How about it, Bubba? How about it, Rick Burgess? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, come on in. And a hallelujah to you too. Well, you know, it's uh, we we'll, we'll, we will not spend the whole show on it, but I know it's almost one of those things where everybody's in the room going, "Hey, is he going to say anything about it?" Uh, but uh, th- those of you that uh, that have been here for a long time, now, new people, you may not know that, but fifteen years ago today, historic moment in uh, the the life of this show and uh, individual lives, and my life, and Sherry's life, and our family's life. Uh, and, uh, and today is that, is that marker sometimes, uh, you know, I, I told Bubba, I said, I, I just kind of go with what God seems to be saying when this marker shows up every year. And that is, uh, when we, it was over the weekend, uh, 15 years ago, and it was the strength to stand conference, which Dawson just had this past weekend. Uh, and, uh, I was there speaking, uh, at that conference and, uh, and, and, and calamity and tragedy. Uh, hit our family and uh, and hit this show that had to go and face a show coming up that Monday, uh, and that was the earthly death of my youngest son William Bronner Burgess 15 years ago today. So we'll we'll spend a little time on that today. We certainly won't do the whole show on it, and uh, I'll share a little something. But you know, one of the things I'll say with uh, with this uh, song is um, you know it, this particular year, as strange as it may sound to some of you, feels like a, a year of Thanksgiving giving thanks uh, for, for all that has been done in our individual lives and all over the world that, um, that weren't going to happen any other way. So uh, I know some of you may not be able to understand that, but uh, I honestly today have been thanking God for what he's done through this. And there is a lot to thank him for. So, uh, so we will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll land on that a little bit today. Uh, again, not the whole show. Some other things you need to know. Uh, that ties into that kind of nicely is our walk through the Revelation. That archive is uh, is is available today. Man, we we really yesterday when we start the seven letters to the churches, the church at Ephesus started yesterday, and there was a lot of application in that lesson. So if you uh, if you, and these you know this is Jesus talking to John, so we're hearing from Jesus in his glorified state. Pretty big deal. Uh, so what he had to say uh, yesterday. Um, as we wouldn't be surprised, was very profound and powerful. So if you haven't caught that, you weren't with us, I would highly suggest that you do, uh, and that'll be part of that as well. And then in our interview, in our Rick and Bubba University podcast today, I cannot wait to introduce Bill Bubba Bussy to a very, very colorful character, Kirkwood Bullis. Uh, Kirk you mean that name again? Kirkwood Bullis. And he is, Kirkwood a, Kirkwood he, 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 Bullis. is he is unique as that name. Uh, he is a unique cat, uh, about six foot seven. Uh, and, uh, and the fa- my favorite picture Kirkwood's ever sent me of him was him doing mission work in China. 
and him standing in the middle of a bunch of Chinese people. <laughs> I wish you funny. could see it. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. Where's Yao Ming when you need him? Yeah, it? and yeah. he's uh, he. I met him, uh, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about that in the podcast in a very, very unique situation. But now spend time with him, and uh, uh, because he is a worship pastor at uh, where I go to church. But we're going to take on something that people email a lot about. We talked about the show, talked on the show a lot about. Uh, we'll definitely get his story because he was a stand-up comedian. Uh, he was going on to be, uh, you know, a pastor, and then felt pulled to be a worship pastor. Uh, it's uh, he's a very interesting guy. But we're going to also talk to him about what people ask about a lot. There's some worship songs that are creeping around right now. That should we be concerned? Should should we be singing these songs? Uh, and should we be singing songs that are produced from churches that? that preach what they preach, even the songs that they have that may the, maybe the theology isn't bad in the song, but is that a bad trap for you to be pulled into what they teach in their churches? Uh, so, you know, because there's some big, really dangerous theologically churches that crank out a lot of worship songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, But what they preach and what they teach is it's heresy. So, so is that is that concerning? Does it matter? And so we'll talk to him about what it's like as a worship leader to kind of discern some of that. I know some of the things he's done, which is why I picked him for this uh, this podcast. But um, it, it'd be interesting to hear what that's like. And, uh, and it doesn't mean that his opinion is, is exactly what you should do, but I think it's always interesting to talk to people that have spent time doing this and see how they're kind of maneuvering through it. And uh, but his story alone is a is a very interesting story, and uh, and and, and what he, a great name. Yeah, and he'll he'll talk about the first time that uh, he'll tell straight up about the first time somebody walked in and said, you know, we're going to have Rick Burgess, the radio guy, come in and, <laughs> and and preach until our until our pastor gets here. And he said his first reaction to that was not positive. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't imagine. He was like, "We're going to do what?" <laughs> and uh, and then we then we ended up becoming friends. And and the very first day we were ever together, I took a shot at him from the stage about what he had on and he said and he said and from that moment on I thought okay this is going to be an interesting ride. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you come into that world. It can happen. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that and uh, but he's now uh, become a really good friend and I think on this topic will will be a great guest to yeah. discuss this because he has been concerned about it and he's saying you know it's not an easy thing to to maneuver, right? Uh, but it's important. So well, that'll be that'll be Rick and Bubba University the podcast today. So that'll be out this weekend, so you can enjoy that. Also, we got a lot of stories to unpack today, Bubba. We made a joke yesterday. What if you had to be at a convention where John Kerry and Al Gore mm. both spoke? Mm. I didn't know that actually happened. Oh, listen, the Al Gore speech is just precious. It's just precious. It is precious. So we'll jump into that today. Your phone calls today at 866-WE-BE-BIG. A lot to do, so stay with us. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Tony says... It is not enough that we just connect people. We have to make sure those connections are positive. It says we have to make sure people aren't using their voice to hurt people or spread misinformation. We have a responsibility not just to build tools, to make sure those tools are used for good. Mr. Zuckerberg, do you feel it's your responsibility to assess users, whether they are good and positive connections or ones that those 15 to 20,000 people deem unacceptable or deplorable? Senator, you're asking about me personally? Facebook. Uh, Senator, I think that there are a number of things that we would all agree are clearly bad. Foreign interference in our elections, terrorism, uh, self-harm. I'm Those talking are about things. censorship. Uh, well, I-, I think that you would probably agree that we should remove terrorist propaganda from the service. So that, I, I agree, uh, I think is-, is clearly bad activity that we want to get down. And we're generally proud of, of how well we, we do with that. Now, what I can say, and, and, I, and I do want to get this in before the end here, is that I am, I am very committed to making sure that Facebook is a platform for all ideas. That is a, a very important founding principle of, of what we do. Um, we're proud of the discourse and the different ideas that people can share on the service. And that is something that as long as I'm running the company, I'm going to be committed to making sure is the case. Thank you. So it sounded like at one point, and I knew Ted wanted to get these other things in, and that was fine, but he almost, I mean, you had Zuckerberg almost admitting that he knows he comes from a very far left-leaning place, 
And then he didn't let him finish. I wish he would let him finish what he was saying there because it sounds like he was about to say, "I fu- I fully understand why you think what you think." And right. And um, so, yeah. but he didn't let him finish. But but anyway, I know we want to get those other things in. But I, I think Ted was just trying to make him commit. Are you a public forum? Are you? Do you use your First Amendment right to limit the speech based on what you believe or what you like? And I don't think that's bad. Uh, I, Unless you pretend you're not doing that. Well, he, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's saying really what he answered is we're, we're open for the most part, but we do censor people on each side, although the Republican conservative side's obviously getting more censorship than the, the left side. Yeah. But you know what? It's okay. It's a private business, in my opinion, for him to do it. What it does, it opens up another opportunity for another company to come in with a Facebook-type product and lean the other way, like Fox News was a balance to CNN or whatever. Yeah, I agree. And 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 when people know that and have an alternative, then they can pick what they want to be involved in. We'll be back. Awesome. Twenty-one minutes past the hour, Rick and Bubba show. Thanks for being with us. Bum, ba, da, bum, ba, da, bum. All right, so we mentioned we played John Kerry, just a little tiny bit of John Kerry uh, yesterday, because that's about all the John Kerry we can stand. Rick, I, did we play the clip? I, I can't even remember the clip yesterday exactly which one we played, but did we play the one where he? basically was saying that those of us in this room, something has brought us here. It's almost, you know what it made me think of? Um, Mm -hmm. What was that UFO movie? uh, You know, Contact? No. um, Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the Close close, Close Encounters of the Third third Kind. kind, Right. How all of those people were just drawn to that mountain Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. that thing. And he kind of, he kind of suggests that, that all of the people in this meeting were drawn there through something that's inside them that clicked, that, that has brought them together to save the planet. Now, and, the one we had, remember, he said, no matter what we do, it's right. still going to be doom and gloom. I think it's too late. You we we got to find, other... find that one, Kerry, got, because it, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, it's a, it's a short, like, 10-second deal. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll find that. We, I saw it yesterday as part of uh, the same 
kind of in the in the same uh, uh, Twitter follower. Same speech yeah, he was yeah, doing exactly. Yesterday. Yeah. The but world, we have Al Gore today. Yeah, the World Economic Forum is what you, Bubba's talking about. World Economic Forum, where all the global elitists get together and uh, and point their fingers at us. And and of course, we've said this about Al Gore when he nearly was president. And if he just won Tennessee, he would have gotten it. That's his home state, by the way. Yeah. We said he went unhinged at that point. Remember, he disappeared. He grew yeah, a beard. Right. He started acting real weird, and he's been crazy really ever since. Yeah. It's like he got so close, and it made him crazy. I think. I think it. You know, the only thing he could have done to get crazier was to like you know date or marry a Kardashian. Right. Um. You know, it, it's it's like it threw him over the edge. He, he couldn't take the disappointment of can, it. Can Can I tell you this too? When Al Gore was Bill Clinton's VP, when all that came together, I know a lot of people who were uh, Democrat or, or leaned that way, they were, they were like, you know, we wish Gore was on the top of the ticket and Clinton was the VP. Mm-hmm. And then after that eight years and that loss to Bush, it's, it's like crazy. something happened to yeah, him. It made him crazy. Um, by the way, taking this Kardashian analogy, moving over here on the side, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but somebody sent me an article that Kanye has married somebody else privately. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, they saw a wed- they saw a wedding band on his on his. That's finger. correct, but we don't know who this is. Uh, they do, and she's a bit of a Kim lookalike. Okay, all right, I don't know who this person is, but anyway, <laughs> all right. So let's go to Al Gore. Here, here he is at the World Economic Forum, and y'all are saying he's about to go batty. Yeah, yeah he I, has a little rant here. I, Rick. I want you to while, before you hear his rant, I want you to know this too. According to uh, the show The Five uh-huh. on Fox. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dana Perino, who we've met, who used to be a press secretary, said that I believe the number was 1,400 private jets flew in for this conference. Of course, Bubba. 1,400 of course, private jets. Because they're more important than us. And, and it was it, either 1,040 or 14. I can't remember the exact, but it was over 1,000 private jets. The damage they do, if you believe they're garbage about carbon emissions, the damage they're doing to the world, ha- we have to stomach it because they're so important. Now, our ability to travel cannot be tolerated because we're not as important. Right. So, but but they get to do it, and it, whatever damage it, is done, I mean, it, 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 it's the, their value outweighs the damage. Now, not you, Speedy. Right. Not me. Not Bubba. Not Greg. It's not Hamley, the most not ridiculous. Adler. We don't. We we're vilified for right. doing this because we're peons. Right. We're the we're, well, they're we're, a bunch of elitists. Right, is what exactly. they are. Right. They need to be, have that. Knocked down about two steps. Well. All right, here's Al Gore. Check this out. <clears throat> and the accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day on the Earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had. And we need have had. And we need to make some changes. Easy, buddy. Did he fly there on a plane? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Well, then it's, Um, it's, it's total hogwash then. Rick, the he, numbers, doesn't, he doesn't really believe the it. The numbers now. and stats that he throws out, all suspect. Yeah. All, all suspect. All suspect. How many atomic bombs a day did he say? Rick. Okay, like listen, I want to ask you this, too. I want to ask you this, too. We just we just hundreds. started using this term, uh, atmospheric river, with this last yeah. big big push of weather on California. Have, has anybody heard of the term rain bomb before? These terms. No. Or or is there can we have one documented picture of the oceans boiling? Anybody? Boiling ocean. No. Anybody? No. I, I can't no. But I think they should be no. I think they sit around a table. Look, I've sat around these tables on things involving our show, involving campaign, you know, campaigns, <laughs> uh, advertising campaign. To come up with terms. And somebody says, All right, I need what are some scary <laughs> things? Somebody and somebody said See if you like this. And I can see it on the dry erase board. Yeah. Somebody yeah. wrote rain bomb. They said, ooh. Rain yeah. bomb. Ooh, rain yeah. bomb. That does sound bad. So what does a rain bomb? Well, you know, when it rains a lot. Okay, uh, okay so it's a <laughs> rain bomb. All right, so what, what's another one? How you feel about boiling oceans? Ooh. Wow. 
boiling. Or like you can see water boiling on the stove, not a gas one, of course. I, I wanna, but I mean, I want right. to ask too this this concept of the <laughs> of the night. poles are going to melt and and the sea water is going to come up. Do we have any documented thing on sea level rising? Uh, and what, there may be some variation in it. I, I don't doubt that. But I, is there any any documentation on that? Remember the Obamas just spent what thirteen million or something on their uh, their retirement condo, and it was four foot above the sea level uh, in Nantucket yeah, right, up there, yeah. wherever it was. Well, and and they're predicting that seawater levels are going to going to rise six foot, eight foot, yeah. all this stuff. So why would you buy a house you that's wouldn't. only four foot above? You wouldn't. That wouldn't and, make sense. And I remember people pointing this out. Of course, they've been silenced. The Obamas are not going to invest in the kind of money in, in the place they have if it's sitting there where man-made climate change is going to destroy it. I mean, that's not. I mean, it, if it's, you, it's what they actually do. And I would say this about our faith. I would say this about anything you claim. Whatever you do proves whether you personally believe it or not. If I if I was trying to convince y'all with all the passion and fervor in the world that there was a, a machine gunner outside and he was going to cut you down if you went outside, but then I stroll out to my car to pick up something. No. It doesn't make sense. No. Um, and, and so much of this is about, is it humans causing it? That's, right. That's right. Yeah, that's correct. Right. 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 The temperature of the earth has never been constant. It no. was never locked in. No. So you can't you can't blame all of this on on human act, on cars. No, you're well, right. we've had two ice ages. The question I mean, isn't whether regular bubba. The question isn't whether climate has had some really bizarre, outrageous highs and lows. It has. The question is what role, if any, do human beings truly play in it? That is the question. Right. I can point to you all kinds of weather and climate phenomenon, <laughs> but do human beings have any say? It's my hair. Donald Trump update. Uh, we'll get to Syria here momentarily, but something a little lighter uh, is that uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide uh, rotated. Uh, went to see Trump after winning another national championship. Uh, and um, and we uh, we there have. Uh, I th- thought I heard some of that going on just there. Uh, they uh, they went to see Trump, and it's funny the, just the way he does his little speeches and, and talks, you know. I don't know, everybody always freaks out when he takes a piece of paper and throws it away and just starts talking. But, but this time, um, he and Saban, hey, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, hey, Trump and Saban, they're very similar. They're very tight. We get to do what we've got to do to get the job done. It's a process. Very tight. So um, do we have uh, do we have him talking about yeah. the tide here? It's a, it's about a eleven minute um, uh, mm. video here, but so but we've queued it up to one of the funnier moments. Now understand, it looks like that that the players are actually having a really good time, and um, Saban if, uh, even said that he had never been in the Oval Office. This was the only time he was invited into the Oval Office, uh, and of course Trump seized on that. Oh, you mean you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so yeah. now. They, he's gone back and he's recapped the national championship game against Georgia and all the big players in it. Okay, and he's he just talked about Tua and, and the, the the big long touchdown pass and he's turned around trying to find him and then he's wrapping up. Take a listen. Unbelievable throw and a catch. Every moment of hard work and preparation for Alabama paid off. We're mm. proud of you. We're proud of your teammates. Each member of this incredible football program, you can all be proud of yourselves. We're proud of the way you play. We're proud of the way you represent yourselves, your university, and your state. And that is a great, great state. I know, because I won it by 32 points. (laughs) (laughs) I actually think more than that, but anyway. You know, with the press, you like to keep it low, because they'll always correct you. (laughs) And we're proud to once again call the University of Alabama our national champions. Thank you, and roll tide. (laughs) uh, It's a a great honor of mine to introduce a man I have a lot of respect for. Don't know him, got to know him today in the Oval Office. 
And you've been here six times, but it's your first time in the Oval Office. They didn't invite you, the other president. They don't invite you, see? <laughs> Trump invites you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but he is a great coach. And you know, he's a great winner. I think more than anything else, he's a great <laughs> winner. Coach Nick Saban. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Hey, and Saban didn't speak long at all. He just I was even talking. A row, Trump. <laughs> you know, not many people get invited to the White House, so uh, not many people get invited to see the president and meet the president. Uh, so this is a special day for our team, uh, a team that uh, is being honored here because of their achievements in terms of winning the college football national championship, which makes me very proud. Uh, this season was a little bit of a metaphor of life uh, in terms of uh, the togetherness, the hard work, the perseverance that these young men sort of put together to overcome a lot of adversity, uh, to create a legacy for a lifetime and a memory for a lifetime for them uh, because of what they were able to accomplish together as a team. Uh, this group of young men uh, will also uh, learn a lot of lessons, I think, that she will help them be on. more yeah. successful in life Real because bright. of the experiences they had together this year as a team. Uh, special thanks to our administration, Dr. Bell, our athletic director, Greg Byrne, uh, and all the supporters of Alabama football who make our team special. And it's now, Price. Thirty-five minutes past the hour, Rick and Bubba show. As uh, we make our way back, how'd you sleep last night? It's important. It's very, very important. Uh, it lifts. Uh, so helixsleep.com slash Bubba. Could have been better. Uh, if you, it might be your mattress, Bubba. You might want to look into. Up, right? Yeah, you might want to look at helixsleep.com slash Bubba. Go there right now. Uh, like Greg and his wife Lisa, they did this. They've loved it, uh, and they customized the mattress uh, just like they like it. Just like you like it. Like just tell you them the way you like to sleep. Like it. That's simple, Rick. Uh, I like to sleep on my back. I like to sleep on my tummy. I like to sleep on my side. I like a firm mattress. I like a soft mattress. Yeah. I like something in between. A little quick survey, boom, done. I'm a little bit large. I need a bigger mattress. I got that too. Could be extremely tall, and I might be a little wide. Yeah. Whatever it is, <laughs> might be a little heavy. Might on be that both, uh, and they will. They can handle that too. They send it right to your door, customized for you. You get to sleep on it for up to one hundred nights and decide if you want to keep it or not. Uh, and we're going to get you three hundred and fifty dollars off on this wonderful mattress. Uh, if you go to helixsleep.com slash Bubba, uh, get a truly amazing sleep. You also find that link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. So the World Economic Foreman, <laughs> uh, for, a forum, as the global elitists look down their snotty nose at the rest of us and talk about how bad we are and how they are more, so important, they must save the earth. Let's go back to the John Kerry quote, Adler, that uh, we, we played one quote yesterday, but we missed this one. Uh, and this is when when this is precious. This Rick. is him telling what I just said. We are global elitists, and we've been chosen to save the world. Please listen. Okay. To this. It's okay. almost like in the when I first heard him say it, close encounters of the third kind came to mind because they have all been, and they don't know why, Rick, but they've been pulled together through mm. some yes. cosmic joining at the hip. John Kerry was building the planet. Was building some clay thing in his house like yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. All right, so here we go. You had to see the movie to get that joke. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> and when you stop and think about it, it's pretty extraordinary that we, select group of human beings, because of 
whatever touched us at some point in our lives, are able to sit in a room and come together and um, actually talk about saving the planet. I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial to think about, quote, saving the planet. And if you said that to most people, most people, they think you're just a crazy, tree-hugging, lefty, liberal, you yes, know, do you're right. or whatever. Yep, you got that one and, right. And there's no relationship. But really, that's where we are. No, no, I, f I, don't, I, I find, no, no, let me be perfectly clear. I find you to be arrogant. Yeah. That's what I find. You, you and all these other idiots, you think you're going to save the planet? Rick. I find that. Oh, yeah, the what correct are you, term. Are you is the Avengers? Rick. The correct term is pompous ass. Right. Yeah. He's just, that's the correct term. Are He's you, just continuing. I'm sorry. You think you're the <laughs> Avengers? You right, think bro. you're the Avengers? That's make believe. Oh, Rick, God. it's just like when they called him out about his plane. He was like, yeah, but I'm so important. Correct. Yeah. It's okay. I got to get around. Yeah. I'm, what what little damage is doing, I'm, my importance outweighs it. That's I, basically what he said. I've again. come to the conclusion he thinks this series that we are enjoying called The Chosen is about them. Yeah. yeah no, it is. Guys, this that's picture with all these people. People that took their jets this should have been a zoom you know that phrase this should have been an email of this course. whole conference should have been a zoom if what you guys are saying is true none yeah. of them had to be there no. they all could have done this and not lost one carbon emission yes absolutely rick they gotta let's come, say, to, they gotta come together again? rick to save let's everybody hear, let's hear john Kerry again can right. we hear john Kerry or, or uh, let's al hear gore. john Kerry to begin oh, with and we'll go to al gore okay i just want to hear it again okay all right i'll be sure it soaks in there okay here. Save the planet. Unusual. And when you stop to think about it, it's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. That we select group of human select beings. Select group. Because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives. Unbelievable. We're able to sit in a room and come together and um, actually talk about saving the planet. I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial to think about quote, saving the planet. And if you said that to most people, most people, they think you're just a crazy, tree-hugging, lefty, liberal, <laughs> you know, do-gooder, or whatever. You got that part right. And, and there's no relationship. But really, that's where we are. Rick, they're pretty special. I, I got to tell you. You know, you realize, too, if John Kerry had not run down a catch-up heiress, nobody would even know who he was. Right. You realize yeah. that. Here, here would be – that's yeah. so good. Here, here is what I – does anybody remember uh, a Charlie Brown Christmas? Okay. Mm -hmm. The first time, I can't remember her name. You know, the two girls that are, they're not Lucy, but they're the other two. Sally. And they don't, and they don't like, no, Sally's kind of sweet. They don't like, that's that's his sister. Yeah. Like, they, they, they don't like Charlie Brown. You know, one, the, one of them wears like a purple dress, one a green dress. <laughs> Violet. Violet, yeah, or whatever. But but w it was one of those two. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> if if the, it, I'm going to say that if John Kerry, this is my reaction if he told me these idiots are the ones that have been touched to save the planet. Yes. You remember when Violet or the other one was told Charlie Brown's going to direct our Christmas pageant, and she mm -hmm. said, oh, no, we're doomed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, that's me. I would think <laughs> if this is the bunch oh, that boy. has been put in charge of saving the planet, I say, oh, no, we're doomed. We're in yep. trouble. I yep. mean, what a bunch of morons. <laughs> Can you imagine your, your, your whole life depending on what John Kerry and Al Gore are going to do and their, and their global friends? Rick, I got news. Uh, this, I got what news is this, for John super Kerry. friends? They're, what is this? Is this the Hall of Justice? No, I tell you what it is, it's scary. Because they, mm -hmm. they really think they're saving the planet with their little decisions in there. Well, you know, I, I'll I, tell you I, what they're saving is their accounts. I hate to tell it's, them, but we're not that big and well we're not it. that important, and God's not going to let us destroy the earth. He's going to save the planet. They're going to save I mean, it. Save it. This You're is our the, last hope. This is the same group that... Um, had, uh, that had that creepy video that said "Welcome to the future," oh, where yeah. you will you will own nothing, you will have no privacy, no. and you will be happy about that, it, it, as if owning mm. things and oh, and, and privacy was a burden. What, that they what, what a bunch them. of tyrannical, uh, overreaching, nice. fascist propaganda garbage! <laughs> That's what that is. Mm -hmm. Don't forget asinine. Asinine. Yeah, do, do you want to? Play Al Gore again. Yeah, one more time, Al Gore. <clears throat> this is so good. I, I just can't. the dynamic duo, yeah, Kerry and Gore. I can't get enough. I really can't. And the accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by six hundred thousand Hiroshima class atomic bombs. Exploding Stop the tape. Yeah. Call him out. Six hundred thousand Hiroshima <laughs> class 
Did anybody go, where'd you get that number? Every day. 600,000 Hiroshima class bombs can you show every you, day. Can you show your work on that one? Yeah. Where, where would you, you research? Hear that I like number? See, I like Don't let that number math. go. You can't just Don't say you let that number go. If I, said, if I said six, if I said six a day, that would be terrible. 600,000? Golly. Is Ridiculous. He, lo- he should be. So right then, a doctor should walk in and go, okay, that's yeah. what we're waiting to hear. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, need, you need to come with us. You have to the guy with the white net. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody yeah. honestly needs to call him out and go, right, you're going to have to explain that number. Okay. Yeah, walk Let, that out listen, for That's a big number. Walk it out. My favorite is the boiling uh, ocean. The more, bowling ocean. Let's go yeah. further. Single day on the earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs Isn't and it? sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political oh, authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had. And we need have had and we need to make some changes. He wishes he, he had said had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he really wishes that. that. Could we I get wish he could get a hobby. Could we get him a volume? <laughs> I mean, Settle down. <laughs> I, I, okay, I, I listen. Mean, he he didn't say it's going to. He said that's what's causing mm-hmm. the oceans to Correct. boil. Correct. Yeah. Now, where are we having boiling oceans? All right, I, I call it where, that. Time. Where is the moisture being sucked out of the land? That's called evaporation. That's part of the cycle, right. by the way. Right. I don't mm-hmm. know how you do without that one. All right, right. so 600,000 Hiroshima-level <laughs> bombs mm-hmm. daily mm-hmm. boiling the ocean. Ocean, got yep. that. Yeah. Rain bomb, yep. got mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And what is what that? was this abs- a- 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 atmospheric river? What yeah, is that? Atmospheric river. What? That that's the weather uh, alignment that has caused the latest uh, round of storms in California. So that's an now an atmospheric river. Yeah, yeah that's what they. All right. Calling. So and then the other is sucking moisture, sucking <laughs> moisture out of the ground. All right, causing drought. Billions of climate refugees. Yeah. Okay. And billions. <laughs> billions of climate refugees. Correct. Yeah. And for some reason, that's led to xenophobia and authorita- authoritarianism, mm-hmm. which is really what it's, they're pushing on yeah, us. That's what yeah. they want to yeah. do. Yeah. You realize you tell the funny. many how to live. I think sometimes I think you're all right. They say what their ultimate goal is, yeah. and I think their ultimate goal is we can't self govern anymore. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. that I think that's yeah. their I think goal. Al Gore is the biggest yeah. threat to self government. It's a it's a classic it's a, it's a classic left move that they've done forever, yeah. and that's accused you of what they're doing. Yes. Yeah, you're right. And classic. And there's people that just eat that up too. That's By the way, that's a good one. I will say this to what I said to my dear friend Rich Wingo when he said he saw 500 ducks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Al Gore. That's a big number. That's a big number. That's a real that's big a, number. That's a big number. 600,000? That's a Daily. Big, that's a big number. Hiroshima bombs. That's a big Think number. Think about the heat. He, that, just, that, he just spoke that, up. Hey, that's a large number. <laughs> Why don't you just say it's a lot of bombs? That's a big number. <laughs> it says get a little warmer. <laughs> it's a big number. It's like he put the speech together using a book called Scary Words for Scaring People. Right. Yeah. 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 I think they sit around. Somebody said, I like Rain Bomb. Put that one up there. We'll keep that. How's Greta missed out on this? Oh, oh yeah. She's How's, faking she, getting arrested. Right. Yeah. yeah. She's doing a photo op in Germany. Yeah. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Special thanks to President, um, our President, to <laughs> invite us here and make this a special day for us. President Trump, thank, thank you, you so much. Just now, remember his name. Because of our gratitude, our captains would like to make a presentation uh, to our president. Mm-hmm. Captain, they're stepping up. There's a guy right mm-hmm. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they get a jersey young. for him. There it is. Trump. Looks good. Mm-hmm. I'll put it on. I'll put it on. <laughs> <laughs> he say skill player. Skill player, 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 <laughs> skill player too. <laughs> And they take some pictures and yeah. hang out. He shakes some hands. Hey, Ray Trump. <laughs> what if Trump um, put a helmet on? That's two winners on the stage right there, gentlemen. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Ricky, come here. Trump lets you come in the Oval. <laughs> Trump. They got a helmet, too. Yeah, First like. himself is Trump. <laughs> third, part, third person. Come up here. Trump lets you in the Oval. Uh, and, a, and a football. Great state. They're going to win it by like 32. Probably more. Probably more. <laughs> <laughs> so now on this note, too, in our Trump update, I understand that Russia says they'll shoot down any missiles that we fire on Syria, mm-hmm. and Trump has said, well, I'd get ready because here they come. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> Rick, it, it's, 
if if it wasn't so serious, it would really be comical. Oh yeah. We have the Assad government, and now they're in bed with the Russians. Okay, the Russians yeah. won't influence in that area. They've never had that, so they're helping the Assad government prop them up in their civil war against rebels who are trying to overthrow him because they want to free Syria. Well, the U.S. is backing the rebels. The Russians are backing the Assad government. Well, earlier uh, this week, I guess over the weekend, we had the reported chemical attack outside of Damascus on civilians. We saw the video of it, all of this. Um, The U.S. has been trying to get the U.N. to respond to it. Russia's vetoing it. Saying that it's, a, they're saying it's fake news. They're saying it didn't happen. Not fake news. Where's the evidence? Right. Oh boy. So we've got one of these kind of standoffs. So the last time that Syria used chemical weapons on civilians, uh, Trump replied with a cruise missile attack on the airfield where it came from. Right. And they are indicating that that might be an option that they're looking at again. As a matter of fact, um, the European Air Traffic Control, or known as Eurocontrol, that controls air traffic all over the Europe and Mediterranean area, has put out emergency uh, notices to airline pilots saying you need to be monitoring special situations, that they're anticipating Western governments using a military strike against the civilian government in the next 72 hours. So you got planes up there that tell them to stay out of this area, be careful. Your communications could be scrambled for a bit of time. We don't know what all's going on. Just be aware. Well, the Russian ambassador yesterday, or as a senior official, vowed that the Russia Russian military that is uh, in Syria is capable and would shoot down any U.S. missiles entering Syria, and then, then they would turn around and target the launch sites or the source where those missiles came from. President Trump tweeted out, (laughs) he said, let me get you the exact quote here. He said, get ready, Russia, because they will be coming nice and new and smart. (laughs) Get ready, here they come. And we have... They're nice ones, they're new ones, and they're smart. We have quite a bit of military assets in the region. We have more headed that way very capable of conducting this operation and defending it. So. Well, there you go. Tom- minutes to the top of the hour the rick and bubba show 866 we be big as the number all right so more from the world economic forum bubba rick uh, the hits just keep coming we yep. have the pfizer ceo and he's got a big uh, announcement uh, pfizer too. ceo is he part uh, of the this, elite this is 4b part, part, mr adler yeah i guess he is because we all were told to go get uh, we hadn't we were evil people if we didn't rush out to get their vaccine yeah. check this out see if you who wants to get in line for this baby all right here we go where are you on a flu vaccine based on mrna oh the studies are running they have completely recruited we are waiting for cases as they accumulate means that people have been vaccinated placebo 
vaccine, and now the disease, some of them will get disease, and then we are waiting to unblind the data to see what is coming. I think we'll come in the, this year, in 23. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, you can't guarantee a timeline, depending on the clinical trials. No, because but your you... your best guess, what would you think? Uh, I think uh, by the first half of the year, maybe. First half of the year? Yeah, June, July. Wow. And, and so, are, how far are we away from one vaccine that's both COVID and flu together? First, we need to have a flu. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if we have a flu, already we started uh, uh, experiments to combine the two. Uh, so that we don't lose time again. Uh, I think we'll come more or less all together if it is successful. What did he say? Well, his scary accent. I yeah. what I, he's I, I, anytime I mean, you let somebody who has an accent that sounds like he wants to take over the world, right. that doesn't help. Who is that, yeah. Dr. Mangala? Mm-hmm. What in the world? Goodness, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, good. I, it sound, I, it sounds, I don't know where it is, but it sounds very Ruski, <clears throat> very Russian, very scary. You might as well have wadded that sound yeah. right up. Yeah, I, would, I think, I, hey, back to, Greg, back to PR again. I think I'd go, Oops, so we're going to go out and talk about, you know, you know, we're having some PR issues on some of our vaccines. I know, I know. Need to calm everybody. And even talk about maybe we can combine some vaccines. We're going to have a, a you know a, a vaccine party. Uh, let's just throw it all in one vaccine. Uh, who you want to go out? Well, let's not put anybody out there who has a scary accent. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we we'll get Morgan Freeman to tell people. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. uh, it, it's um, I don't I don't know that having his type of accent about yeah, something well, terrifying. If, if I'm the board of directors at Pfizer, we yeah. got to have somebody else. Yeah. I mean, the guy may be brilliant. I don't know. But it, uh, they, they say the presentation to the Americans, I, I don't. I ain't buying mm. what he's selling. <laughs> sorry, people yeah. that talk like you in the past have, have tried to take over the world. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're just going to pass. Uh, uh, it says here that he is a um, Greek-American. Mm-hmm. Well, he's more Greek than he is American. It veterinarian Greek. and the chairman of and chief uh, executive also. Wait, did you say veterinarian? Mm-hmm. <laughs> say that again. Veterinarian? Mm-hmm. You mean they, animals? You don't what? That's what it says here. Yeah, I'm that just, can't uh, be true. We don't. We, we got a wait, veterinarian man. out talking. What? <laughs> That's yeah, Rick, that may explain why he said that uh, right after you get that shot, you need a good deworming. I know. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. That, yeah. yeah. He was motivated by an early love for animals and medicine and is well, let's, let's put him in charge. Does that reshaping upset? Pfizer that? to be a company focused on research and development. Wait a minute. Pfizer was created by a veterinarian? No, I think he's, he's, he's the a CEO. High ranking person. He's a CEO. Well, okay. that's pretty big. Um, he joined Pfizer in 1993. We we reported on this a little bit earlier. Uh, I have a good week. one, but I'm not sure. Yeah, really. Mr. Also Adler, great- uh, cut number five, if you would. Um, CNN now reporting, and I wanted you to hear it from their own voice, that they've kind of overstated the COVID deaths. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. This is CNN now, not Fox, no. not Newsmax, no. not Rick and Bubba, no not one, Hannity. No one's asked Glenn Beck to weigh in. Yeah, mm-hmm. CNN. Mm-hmm. Doctor, these are two separate things here, overcounting deaths and overcounting hospitalizations. As you know, I covered this closely being in the Trump White House when this happened. I talked to a lot of health officials about this who are actually kind of skeptical of this claim that you're making. And I think one big thing has been what is the evidence that these COVID deaths are actually being overcounted? Well, this is the reason why this kind of transparent reporting is going to be so important. There is a way for us to look at death certificates and also to look at the medical records of individuals prior to the death. And I think this needs to be separated into three categories. One is the um, the COVID as a direct contributor, the primary cause of death. The second is, could it be a secondary contributing cause? So, for example, somebody with kidney disease, COVID then pushes them over the edge to have kidney failure. That's COVID as a contributing cause cause. And then the third is COVID as an incidental finding. So somebody coming in with a gunshot wound or a heart attack and they happen to test positive. I think that we need to separate out and look at the percentages of each. That percentage would have shifted over time as well. In the beginning, probably a lot more people were dying with the primary cause of COVID. That probably has shifted. And I think, again, we need to understand this. Another reason to understand this, too, is a lot of people are wondering when they should get a booster next. When do we need a second booster or another booster? And the only way we can know for sure is to understand who is getting severely ill and when uh we said that three years ago y'all, y'all, told, we just now y- doing y'all told us to shut up mm-hmm. we weren't allowed to say this three years ago you were you were yeah. banned yeah i agree with you medical doctor or whoever you are yeah it would be important to to have a different column contributed to death meaning i had a comorbidity versus 
primary cause of death. Yeah, I think we probably needed that early on, and you're right. That would give us more information on deciding how desperately we need certain treatments and we'll bypass the normal research and development because it's an emergency and put it out there untested on humans to any high degree. Yeah, it would be great that we had that very clear information because it'd give us a better picture of our current need, right? Wouldn't that have been good? She Mm -hmm. even threw in there, yeah, if you had a gunshot wound, we probably don't want to put you over there in the COVID cause of death, even if you tested positive. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I'm a C student from Calhoun County. I could have brought that one to the table. I don't know about the gunshot people. I mean, I think I would have been the first one to raise my hand. I don't know about the gunshot people. I think think it was the gunshot. Yeah, Yeah, I think just two columns, either of or with. I, you died in, uh, You died of COVID or you died with COVID. Yeah. Right. We could just it's, simply div- divide it up that way. Like we tried to say, couldn't yeah. say it. Just like the example that we had of someone who unfortunately had a car wreck. Mm-hmm. They yeah. wrapped their tree around a pine tree. I mean, their car or truck around a pine tree. And the sudden stop is the cause of death. Well, they just happened to run a COVID test on them. They had COVID. Oh, must have been COVID. Caused them to rent. Well, it, was no, back, the it was back to the hospitals getting money, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Was that true? Because we were told I don't that, know. that for I'm every just... case they got so much money. That that actually, no, that, if that's that true, there's true. Your that actually yeah. vetted out, and it was a doctor who ne- then was now serving in Congress who said that's a fact. Well, we had one you know, that well, we, guys, we know there, personally said reason. that, too. Yeah. You want it. Pers- and the reason why it was done, of course, this is the government not thinking things through, through as always. They were trying to say, well, there's going to there's be a need for more treatment. They need to be able to cover the cost of this. Uh, but what it turned into is, you know, we get more money if they have COVID. Yeah. Uh, and we and we can tie that Even to. Even though they, and plus, if we don't have to spend a lot of that on their care because they right. died of a gunshot wound. Right. And that's th- what that is. That's called profit. Mm-hmm. That groundbreaking uh, medical information that we just got was from Dr. Lena Wen. That's CNN's medical analyst. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then don't don't forget this one, and they, and they include hospitalization in that. Hey, our beds are full. Yeah, I got that, but how many of them are due to COVID? Are some of these beds full of people who would be in here anyway? Yeah, if, and hospitals if, try to run yeah. at near full anyway. Yeah, if yeah. if hospitals yeah. have fifty percent beds full, they're going out of business. Yeah. yeah. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Well, speaking of animals, uh, let's talk about uh, palmade. Now, you've heard us talking a lot on the program about how important nutrition is to us. And over our years, you know, we've been poor with our nutrition, and then we try to get better about our nutrition. We bring you stories about nutrition, and we really keep saying the same thing. Well, you know, the human body is made uh, needing a certain fuel to operate uh, uh, at its peak performance. Well, that also applies to animals, and many times uh, we don't really think about that. We just think, well, here's some food for my dog. Uh, Let's put it in the bowl. He seems to like it, Uh, and we move on with our lives. Uh, And because they are animals and uh, they are unable to communicate to us, I'm not feeling great, I don't have any energy or or whatever the case may be, and that's where Paul made is a product you're going to love. And you're going to see this. In your dog, uh, this supplement for your your pet is fantastic. Uh, They do the same thing uh, to pet food as they do to a lot of human food. Now they strip it of all of its vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that your dog needs to be healthy. So you can avoid that by using the longevity formula from Paul Maid. That's P-A-W-M-A-D-E. It's an all-natural supplement for dogs made with 23 dog-friendly superfoods to keep your dog healthy and strong. Now, veterinarians have approved Longevity Formula Boost, uh, the nutrient intake, and they pr- they say, you know what, it also protects the dog against toxins and guards against uh, any premature aging because the dog's not getting what it needs. So uh, you need to move to get the Longevity Formula right now. It's got a special toxin-fighting uh, nutrient that protects your dog. Also, it helps them live a, a long, happy life, and you can continue to enjoy them. So if you would like to get your Longevity Formula, we'll send you a free bottle of Paul Maid's Hip and Joint Formula, too. You know this. A lot of breeds have hip and joint problem. Well, Paul Maid's Hip and Joint Formula will help that as well. And we'll, we'll throw that in with the Longevity Formula. So go to PaulMade, P-A-W-M-A-D-E dot com slash Bubba, paulmade.com slash Bubba.
we've had a problem for a long time in this fallen creation of mean people. We we all don't we don't like them. I don't like people to be bullies, and when it's real bullying, and none of us like that. But we can't really say that that's what causes it because we've had bullies longer, you know, than we've had school shootings. So there there really was a time when bullying still was hurtful. It still hurt people's feelings. It still was not uh, behavior that we would any of us would accept. But people still didn't go, I got bullied, I'm going to get a weapon, and I'm going to shoot people in cold blood. That just didn't happen. So that's a relatively new idea. So, so it can't be bullying. How? I mean, that, that just really can't be, well, the, the, can't be the source because we've had bullying yeah, longer than yeah, we've had yeah, this Yeah, I agree. And, and here, here's a question, too. How in the world, logically, do you justify, okay, I was bullied at school, so I'm going to shoot other innocent people? Makes, they, they don't you, connect. Trust me, it would be better if you bullied somebody else than go shoot the school up, right. if that's your way of dealing with it. So, and, and I think we've brought some awareness to that uh, problem. I think there's deeper problems there again with some kids that don't know how to deal with things because they're being sheltered from it till they're older. They're not learning even at an early age how right, to deal right. with some of these things. So it's a bigger problem, a lot of moving parts. Right, and and so you have really, we said before, there's two things. You have what do we do to make the school safer Monday, and then you well, go and then in, you, in six it, months from now, it, a year from now, five years. From and now. we've talked about that, and I don't think tiny bats are the answer. But but then <laughs> yeah. but then what we do then what we do is then take on what in the world is going on compre- comprehensively from top to bottom. What in the world is going on in this society that causes there to be such deranged, evil people that can't seem to function through the the very normal? adversarial situations you find yourself in in life right and you know i i I grew up uh, with a kid who always struggled with weight and people were mean about it Mm. but but i i I learned to actually deal with them and and i grew up where coaches yelled at you and sometimes cussed at you (gasps) And, uh, and 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 hurt and, your feelings. I oh, hurt your hurt feelings. I grew up in a time that when they're they're really. I mean, I'm talking about you. You, you still wore blue jeans and just a, a a colored shirt and a cap. You were that young, and everybody didn't get to play. Only the kids that were good got to play. Yeah. <gasps> uh, I mean, we 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 had uh, we we had a time when if you made an F, the teacher would give you an F. We had a time that if you don't have your homework when they tell you to have it, we red, had a time. Red you, pen. We had time if you yeah. didn't have your homework, the teacher would take out a board, and you would and light we, you and up, and either would take you into the hall and paddle you in front of another teacher uh, as a witness, or if she couldn't find a teacher that were busy, she would say, "Now the rest of your classmates will just be the witness." I, I we grew, didn't even have the witness program till I was much older. I remember yeah. the early the early right. whoopings. You didn't even have that. Yeah, and so so <laughs> witness we, program. Yeah, so right. We, we, I, I, we had teachers that would tell me to come up to the front of the room, face my rear end toward the room, bend over and touch my toes, and when she was ready while reading out of a chapter, she would take a ruler and hit me across my butt with it oh, yeah. and, and then tell me to go sit back down and shut my mouth. And then you know what I did? It was a weird concept. I sat down and I shut up because the next thing, she was going to call my parents or she was going to tell the principal, and the principal was going to paddle me or, or punish me. And if I, my parents found out about it, it was going to make the teacher and the principal yep. look like Sunday school. So, so I that we didn't we we did things differently, and we. Six minutes now past the hour, a brand new hour from the No Name Studio on the bleeding edge of technology. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, makeup team Rick and Bubba. And we thank you for being here. Please join me and welcome back for a brand new hour, Mr. Bill Bubba Bussy. Um, Sorry about that. Yes, it is. (laughs) Bubba, how are you today, buddy? I'm good. Glad to be here, Rick. Glad to be here. So, um, we we uh, it's been believe it or not, it was 15 years ago today uh, that uh, the show uh, and uh, and our family uh, went through uh, a calamity 
Uh, there's no other word to use. Um, and uh, and it was uh, the earthly death of my youngest son. I have five children, and uh, uh, William Bronner Burgess uh, is the youngest. Uh, and and I remember so vividly, uh, you know, the the number forty. Uh, when you look at it in Scripture, forty years, forty days, it, it's a number um, that that God uses to to prepare people. For what is coming next, it's, it's, it's literally called a, a number of probation, where God is using this number to prepare people for what's next. The forty days of the flood was a renewing to the next. That was that was probation, and and you see this in forty years of of his uh, of him refining uh, the, his people who rejected him and the ones who did not have faith that they he would give them uh, the promised land. And he went forty years and and really removed all those who doubted him. And uh, and got and left the two that didn't, uh, and and their ch- and the children of all of them, you know, all this. So this number forty. So I still remember this, and you know, and 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 I don't I don't see this as something sad. I, I just see it as something to to go back and remember. And you guys were there. Uh, it was my fortieth birthday, and uh, we, we, Sherry and I already had four children, and Sherry, of course, uh, the stepmom of Brandy and Blake, and then she had given birth to to Brooks and to Brody, and uh, and we were trying to decide whether we wanted to grow the family or not. Do we want to continue to to have children? And we were praying for God to, uh, you know, to answer that question for us. And it was my fortieth birthday, and you look back on things that you you don't you don't you don't even realize what you're saying. And so Sherry tells me as we are dancing together on this beautiful fortieth birthday party that she prepared for me. She said, and I used to make this joke on the show that if you live in the South, as long as you stay inside five children, you're not white trash. If you have five or more, <laughs> and she made the joke, and that's a joke, she, she looked at me and she said, you are going to be white trash. And I said, what? And she said, I am pregnant, and we're going to have child number four, uh, uh, number five. And so, uh, so that was the going joke. And I said, and if y'all remember it, I even said it at the party, I said, God uses the number 40 to prepare people for something. Mm. And, and, and I have been on this earth for 40 years, so I think God's got something. Now, I'm thinking things completely different right. than That's what true. God did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so th- when, when, this, uh, when this happened uh, 15 years ago and, and Bronner went into the presence of a perfect father, um, I'm, an, I'm not a perfect father. But but Bronner is in the care of his perfect father and actually his true father, because he's God's. And we you know we are these children have been given to us on loan, but they don't belong to us. They belong to him, and and he's perfect. We're not. And so when when the process of walking through this, a couple of things I'll hit you with. Then I'll come back and I want to try to offer some encouragement because that's kind of how Sherry and I. This I know some of you may have read what Sherry posted. Uh, on her uh, her personal Facebook page, and I think they put it on her author page as well. Um, she wrote this past weekend. So every year, you know, you have highs and lows when you on something that is that is so uh, so so daunting, uh, you know. And 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 if we were honest, all parents everywhere. I remember being in this position before it happened to to us. I remember seeing other parents, and I would think to myself, man. I just don't know how people get through that. I don't know how you ever, you know, that that's that thought. It's back in the back of our mind. Please don't let me bury one of my children. You know, let them bury me, you know. And uh, and so when it happens, it's just so rattling uh, for obvious reasons. But but there's a lot that, that comes from it, especially though, the, well, if you're a person of faith, and that's what we'll talk about more when I come back, this is not something God's silent on. If there's if there's one thing that, that Sherry and I and we don't and we're trying so hard to have the right tone, is I, I just I, it bothers me when people of faith keep acting like God doesn't talk about this and hasn't told us about this and what it's all about. Well, you know, we just don't know why. It is true that in our finite minds we cannot completely grasp everything God is doing and everything God is. It's too big. However, and this is a very important however, let's go get everything he allows us to know. And he has allowed us to know a lot about this topic. 
He is not silent on this topic, and I'll prove that to you next. Now, those of you that have maybe heard Sherry and I speak to what God's taught us, you may have already heard some of this, but I, I think it's a time of encouragement that for people who are hurting. I don't really, Sherry and I don't really want a ministry of ministering to people who are suffering and specifically people who are burying their children. It's not a fun ministry. I really don't want to be in it, but we are. And, I mean, I talked to a young father just yesterday. And But the beautiful thing about it is because of the last 15 years, God has enabled me to help him, to help. You know, and, and, and so, and God does it, but, but he says, if you'll just be obedient, I'll use this. And you can use this in your own life, but also, and maybe more importantly, you can use it to help other people when they need it. I'm going to teach you, and you tell them, and it'll comfort them. And maybe it'll draw them to me. I, I can tell you all this right now. I watched the people that have come to Christ through this calamity. I cannot even remotely give you a number. The number is too, it, it's too vast. There's, uh, there's no way for me to, err, and, and it's not important that I know the number. But, but, but I see God going, I told you, just trust me. Okay. But I can tell you something as simple as this. Sherry calls me one day. This has been a, a, several years ago. I was in the Taco Bell drive through I remember it vividly. One of the kids had a little league practice. I don't remember who it was. But they're in the back seat, and I'm ordering Taco Bell. <laughs> and Sherry says, there is a family whose child just drowned in the Gulf of Mexico, and I have been over sitting with the mother. You need to go see the dad. Meet me with the kids. I'll take them from you, and you go see him. Now, let me tell you ahead of time, he is not a believer. He is not a follower of Christ. I said, okay. So so I get there, and I go back there to sit down with him, not because I wanted to, which you'll see in a minute, which is what caused him to come to Christ, <laughs> because I was told to. I'm just being obedient. It's not what I want to do. So I sit down with him. We go on for hours. It gets, um, and we have the show the next day. I have to get up at 4.30. We get about 11.45. And he says, well, I hear everything you're saying, but I just wish God would give me a sign. And I said, it's going to be midnight in 15 minutes. I've been sitting here with you since about 6.30. I have to get up at midnight. It'll be four and a half hours I have to get up. I have not been home today. I'm just not that good a person. I am your son. Hmm. And he just stopped. I said, I don't even know you. If it weren't for Christ, I would have heard your story. I would have been heartbroken for you. I would have ordered the number three at Taco Bell, and I never thought about you again. I'm just not that good a person. But he cares, and he's why I'm here. And he repented, and he gave his life to Christ, and they are flourishing as followers of Christ. Uh, God gave them more children. And I could tell you stories like that mm. over and over. Just the number of people that have come to Christ and have, he have heard about what God has to say about suffering over Sherry's sacrifice of five years and time away from me and time away from the kids because God told her to write that book and the, uh, Bronner, A Journey to Understand, another great resource for you. It's in audio and print now. It's been out since 2016. The, I, I got a, a, a person that that book helped two days ago. A person was helped yesterday. And it just goes on and on and on. And then the things it's done for us, grown us. One of the things I'll tell you today, I don't think in the 15 years I've given you all these updates that I've even told you this. If I did, I'll repeat it again. I couldn't remember telling you. That's why I have a beard. That's what this beard is. I, I wore a Fu Manchu or had, had slick face all the way up to 2008. And then when we went to Israel in 2009 on the one-year anniversary, the transformation in my life spiritually was becoming so powerful that I said, I don't, I don't, want, there is, there, I don't ever want to be the guy I was before this. And I said, I'm going to do a marker to remind me, and I grew a beard. And that's why I've had it ever since. We joked around, but that's why I wear a beard. Because I wear this beard to say this is me from 15 years ago when, when this radically changed my life. 
Now, was I justified in 96? I was. But unfortunately, I was like a lot of Christians. I thought that was the end, not the beginning. I thought, well, I got that resolved. And I, and I was a better person. But after this, complete transformation. And, and so there's a, there's, a, there's a, and you may not understand it, but today I'm, I'm kind of, I'm full of gratitude. I'm full of gratitude for what this calamity, what God has accomplished through it for me personally, for Sherry personally, but also how it's been used by him to advance his kingdom and draw people to him. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Produced a tougher person that was able to take things and handle things. All of this is is relatively new. I mean, certainly we've had exceptions of individuals over a longer period of time, but but nothing like this. And even those individuals, if you look at history, are still on the re- on the new side of things. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's still new. Yeah. You the know, the one thing that's added to that, which you were right on all what you just said, is the social media aspect of it now. Right. Where now. There's, you know, yeah. all the 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 apps, uh, Snapchats, Instagrams, right. Facebooks, right. Uh, Internet, stuff like that. So th- you can't ever get away from the bullying. So, like, sometimes you might get, get raised on at school or at practice or whatever, but at least you could go home and get away from it. Now it's just constant. You must not have lived in my neighborhood, but I understand what <laughs> you're yeah. saying. You didn't have yeah. the Internet. But, but yeah, but because but, when, when we went there, they were also the neighborhood kids. That right, yeah, neighborhood. yeah. But, but you know but, what I'm saying in but, general. But, what, but, but, it, but it almost balances out. Because I also said everywhere we went, there were tough people. Yeah, no, I now, agree with what now, you said. Now, mostly, I mean, what, you think Phil, the accountant, is going to jump up in your grill and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and say you didn't get the job done yeah. at Little League? They didn't play for Larry Wayne and Billy Joe oh, no, and, they didn't. and Pete no. from over at and Lee Brass, Pat, you know, with, uh, with tattoos Matt, on their Daddy arms. Wayne. And yeah. p- people out there yeah. saying, let's get one with a Paps Blue Ribbon that they just finished <laughs> off sure. and, and cigarette smoke going up in their eye. And still in his coveralls from working over uh, working seconds. Saying, get one. Yeah, yeah. Let's get one. Yeah, let's get one. <laughs> I mean, so it all balanced out. We we were around tougher things. I understand about social media, but they also don't face the tough things we face. They didn't. No, you're so, right. I mean, but, that, but but let's all say this: there is no excuse under God's authority. There's no excuse. There's nothing that anybody should be asked to understand why you went and shot people in cold blood. I don't right. care what happened to you. There is no excuse, none whatsoever, and taking a weapon and killing people in cold blood is a relatively new concept that has not existed until modern time, and there's a reason for that, and it is much bigger than bullying. Much bigger. And we're and, and, and now we're looking for these these real the, you know, well, you know, you have to understand somebody was mean to him. I don't care if anybody was mean to him. Nobody should be applauded for 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 shooting up the place and killing people that had nothing to do with I, anything. I, I would-
73 minutes now past the hour. So uh, I'll take this uh, day on this 15th anniversary uh, of uh, our son uh, stepping to the presence of his uh, perfect father. I want to take time, as I do every year, to try to remember to thank all of you, Speedy and Bubba, uh, for the outstanding job you guys did. Uh, while I was away and uh, how God used that. I mean, the numbers on that are hard to count. Uh, thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit that happened at the eulogy, uh, for Chris Molesky and Ryan Greenwood for introducing me to something called YouTube that we didn't know what it was, <laughs> mm-hmm. and and putting that out to the world. It became the number one most viewed video on YouTube in the world for a week. Uh, and if you that that uh, someone was kind enough after YouTube allowed you to go longer now in those days, you can only go 10 minutes. So it was three different videos. But now it's all one video. And we have that at Burgess Ministries dot com. If you want to click on watch, I had somebody email me three days ago, said they just watched it for the first time. So there's that eulogy. Of course, Sherry's book is a, is a, a gift for you out there as well. Um, but uh, I want to just take a moment to. To do what what I can do, and I think I can do it in this time, I'll try. This is to kind of help those of you when when we're talking about suffering and what God has to say about it. Sherry's book is a much more in-depth look at it, so I'm not trying to do that. And there's, but for a short period of time, I want to give you four things, and and there and there's there's many others, but showing you God is not silent. I want to give you four reasons why we suffer. Here's four, and the and, the, and this is right out of Scripture. It's not my opinion. Okay, Uh, number one, to be brought into a more intimate relationship to God, which causes us to see how sinful we really are. Uh, Job, at the beginning of Job's story, he's called blameless and upright. After God allows him to suffer, and he 100 percent allows it, he's totally in control of what what can and cannot happen to Job. Mm -hmm. Job's called blameless and upright after the the suffering gets him to a point that he gets God's resume of who God is. Here is Job's own words after his suffering in Job 42, 5, and 6. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now, because of my suffering, my eye sees you, therefore I despise myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. Blameless and upright at the beginning, well, that was compared to other people. But when the suffering made him then compare himself to God, Mm -hmm. and when he compared himself to God, he found himself to be quite sinful. So the suffering brought him into a more intimate relationship with God. He did not have the relationship with God before the suffering that he had after. So that's one reason. It gets us into a more intimate relationship with God. Uh, The psalmist says in Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So it's also an opportunity for us to repent because we're now brought so intimately and dependent on God. And I was there when I was needing him to breathe. And that in and of itself says, now I know you so well, I despise myself. So that's one reason. Another, to test your faith. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, don't miss these two words, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing, the tested genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold, that perishes when it's tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why am I suffering? To test the genuineness of your faith. Right out of Scripture. There's reason number two. That could be it. Number three, to remove sin from our life, to refine us to holiness. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 2. Since, therefore, Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. Whoever has suffered in the flesh, listen to this, has ceased from sin so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. It redirects your whole life. Since I've suffered like Christ, since he did, I now, this, this process has now rem- is helping me to remove sin from my life. I'm not held captive by the flesh anymore. I'm now leaning on the Spirit because the sufferings forced me to do so. Hmm. And I'm cleaning house. That's out, right out of Scripture. And, and don't, don't, miss, don't miss in this that, that, that when these things that are happening throughout Scripture, it, it's showing us as clear as he possibly can why we suffer. Number four, to humble us. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, interesting commentary from the Apostle Paul. He had been taken into the third heaven and seen that revelation, and here's what he said right after that. So to keep me from becoming conceited, 
because he was quite a big deal. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me. Don't miss given. Who gave it to him? God. In the flesh, which became a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient, for my power is made perfect in what? In your weakness. I, I have to put it there, Paul, because without it, you won't be weak enough. I know you, and, and you'll get away, and the best way for you to be right with me is for you to suffer. I'm not going to remove it. Therefore, Paul says, I get it. I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So there's four things right out of Scripture on why we suffer. To be brought into a more intimate relationship with God, which causes us to see how sinful we are. To test our faith to remove sin from our life, and to, to, to refine us into the process of holiness and to keep us from being conceited. Those are right out of Scripture. Now, there's more, but there's four right there. So let's stop all this some, that we don't know why. We actually do. There, there's actually quite a bit that God has said about this. He's not silent on this. So, so let me encourage you, so you, if nothing else, hang on to this. So when you're in the situation, you start thinking, which one of these categories is going on here? Might be all of them. Bottom of the hour. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Now, no longer Whiskey Falls. Um, you were saying this in the break, uh, and of course that song talks a little bit about uh, really some bad theology, but still a good song about the end of time. But uh, apparently we have another person who says the church will be raptured uh, 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 April 23rd. Yeah, April 23rd, which I Ooh. had to ask, does that mean we need to pay taxes? Mm. You, you know, you think That's about that. Point. It's due the Tuesday before that, but uh, you know we get a push to the 17th this year. Don't know why they don't do Monday the 16th, but they push it to the 17th. Fine with me, but because uh, I'm gonna send mine in at the very last moment. But um, it, at least it's worthy of looking at filing an extension. Yeah, because I mean, you get raptured on the 23rd. You go, well, that was kind of a uh, kind of wish I'd. Have. Now, in a weird statement, and Bubba was just reading it to me because he knows, I guess, enough about the Bible since he's a new what do you call him? Christian numerologist. This is one of these people looks at the numbers in the Bible, and they are very interesting, and God does have numbers, and they all have meanings, and, and certainly I get that. But um, it, this, he knows enough about the Bible to know that Jesus said, that would be Jesus, the one who's coming to get the church, mm -hmm. that no one knows the day or the hour. And he said even in this moment, before he goes back to where he's going to be at the right hand of the Father, that he didn't know it, mm -hmm. that only the Father knew. Right. So... The guy says, I know when the rapture's coming, but no, I don't. Well, uh, because actually, he, because the he, story Because that, he throws that verse in there, well, the, the, I know it, was, it uh, but I don't know it. It was actually a skeptic who was who was reminding him of that. Oh, think, okay, so. good. That, now, that and, makes more sense. Because and, and, I thought, why would you tell somebody you knew something and then tell them you don't know? And, and then, but we'll, we'll cover it a little later. Uh, this, this is really one of these dandies. Uh, yeah. Because they've got the secret planet that we know nothing about that's going to appear oh, in Virgo and okay. all that stuff. Wow. Uh, it's really deep. It's a good one. Um, okay. Always interesting for discussion. But uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I enjoy discussing it. I really do. You know, know the season. Know the season, not the day and the hour. So, you know, that's... Uh... <laughs> well, and again, I've said this a thousand times, and I certainly <laughs> apply it to myself, too, because we, we, we all live in the same fallen creation with the same fallen flesh on and and have all the same struggles. But I will just say this. It is shocking, and really it's the only way you can function, or you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to go out of the house every day. Right. But but really your whole mindset needs to be that you could die today. Oh, yeah. But, and, but, and but, and because I will, the likelihood of that is so high. 
if well, you really think about it. Well, Rick, you know, it, it's a it's a hundred percent because no one has been raptured yet. So, right, the chances of you dying and meeting your maker on any given day is one hundred percent compared to the rapture because we have no no we have no statistical example to compare it to because it's never happened yet. Yeah. Although we all believe it's going to happen. We we walk through days with very little concern that you know you think well I got time and really everything tells you I wouldn't be certain of that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I mean, we all could be talking. Uh-uh. To, we could be talking to each other for the last time to one of us right now. Yep. I mean, and and that happens every day. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. So so why we don't put as much concern in that is, but I mean, I'm just and and, and I, I, I and I know I hear I know people's thought process. You think, wow, that's a downer, Rick. Don't don't right. hit me with that out of the gate. But it's actually but, be an upper. But I, I I see it as an upper. Is let's enjoy every moment. Let's enjoy mm-hmm. every friendship. Every tie we have to the max every day and then and then when it's over we have no regrets yeah and and don't squander opportunities to do what god told you to do if you're somebody who's actually been saved by him yep yep you know we act like that's that thing gets pushed way down the list doesn't it? <laughs> of all the stuff we got to do and that other stuff ain't gonna mean nothing you know but anyway when it all comes down to it but that the bottom line is uh, to me there's nothing more freeing than when you get to the point as Paul told us all, if you want to talk about all these philosophers, there's no greater way to live your life than to say to live as Christ, to die as gain. I mean, that's it. I mean, that 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 that's that's everything all wrapped up, in, up. And if you can if you can ever get in that mindset, guys, you just don't know how freeing it is. It's just, and you just don't sweat the little stuff. You, you you wonder why, and you don't think make things more important than they really are. So then you don't have to struggle with that old that old thing that we all have. We're gonna worship something, aren't we? God will make an idol in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but so once you get that right, that this is what matters and everything else really doesn't, and then you put them in the proper place, doesn't mean you don't enjoy them. Doesn't mean you don't do them. Phone calls now, 866-WE-BE-BIG. You can talk about any topic you want to. Uh, and the real Greg Bird just taking those calls from you now. Uh, things you need to know, yesterday's Bible study uh, from the Revelation installment number three, I think we did chapter two, one through seven, the church at Ephesus, uh, and we kind of set up the three different theological views of these letters to the churches, how theologians see it, so you'll kind of figure that, get that too. Um, so uh, phone calls coming in, and I do want to say this too on behalf of, of Sherry and me uh, on this day. Our apologies to, I know there's so many people that have reached out to us over the years. Uh, we try to help as best we can and respond to every single person I know during time, just because of the numbers, there's been, unfortunately, maybe some of y'all that we saw it, we were busy, we meant to get back to it, you didn't hear from us. I I hope that's not the case very often, but I just know by the numbers that happens. And if that has happened, we're so sorry. But uh, we we really do try. And, And again, Sherry's book is a great resource that has most everything that we're probably going to tell you anyway. Uh, but uh, but we we try to help you and everyone as, as best as we can. So if we've missed it, we apologize. But know when we get your request for prayers and for feedback, we try to respond and we always pray for you uh, and, uh, and and try to help you any way that we can as we all try to walk through this difficulty. But hopefully, uh, you know, some light w- w- can be shed on that from some of the scriptures. Uh, that God has has had there a long time, but certainly shown us through this because this will make you go search. Uh, and um, and of course, you know, on the last one with Paul, as we said many times, that kind of takes the whole word of faith, health, wealth, and prosperity, um, false theology, and kind of throws it in uh, out the door. Uh, if the apostle Paul couldn't get God to take away the thorn in his flesh, and he's going to receive the crown of righteousness because he fought the fight and he ran the race. I don't think the Apostle Paul had a faith problem uh, on uh, the on, on his suffering and the, the fact that God would not remove it. He said he pleaded with him. Mm. Three times he said he pleaded with him. Uh, and he said, but I understand why you're not removing it because I need it in order to serve you and to be in the right relationship with you. So sometimes the miracle comes. Praise God for that. But sometimes the miracle is it not being removed because that's the best thing for us. And I will tell you this sadly. It was the best thing for me. Uh, we go to the phones. Let's go to uh, Jerry in Birmingham, 1047 WZZK. Jerry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to point out the contradiction in Al Gore's 
statement. Oh, yes, there's many. Where he said that there's, the oceans are boiling, but the sea level is rising. And I'll just let y'all talk from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those two. I, I still okay. hadn't seen any boiling. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've never seen it boil. Uh, I haven't, unless somebody... Only where the uh, lava may be easing into the ocean in mm-hmm. Hawaii, where you have an active volcano. Tom Hanks boiled some on Castaway to try to get yeah. clean water. Right, right. Uh, let's go to Colton in Jacksonville. Colton, go ahead. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, buddy. So, I grew up in a little town, Pleasant Valley, out here past Jacksonville. I actually grew up with uh, Greg Burgess. I've known him most of my life. But Me too. I went to a little church out here, and... Uh, called New Liberty Baptist, and I've always been a man of faith, but the fact of you saying earlier about you grew a beard because you were so changed, you didn't want to be the same ever again, that's that's just some inspirational things, and I just want to say thank y'all for that, because, you know, a lot of people need that kind of faith and that kind of change in their life, and if y'all are people bringing it to them, then that's just, that's a blessing right there as it is, and I want to thank y'all. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a process, but I have grown more spiritually in the last 15 years than at any period of my life. And uh, and I think that, I mean, and, and it wasn't, I hate to say this, I'm just talking about how flawed I am. I don't think it was going to be done any other way. Sherry, as soon as we were justified, Sherry led the way, man. She started studying the Bible, doing this, doing all this stuff. And I just kind of laid back and said, well, you know, I'm, I'm justified now. I'm a little bit different. I'm not the way I was. I'm married now. I'm a, I'm 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 right with God on so many things in my life, and I'm gonna I'm getting involved with the church, and that was good, and that and that was steps that needed to be pl- taken, but this, this this caused me to desperately seek God, and God said, if you seek me, you'll find me, and and if you look at things like this, I know some of you don't hear me talking about a works based justification because that's not what I'm talking about, but sanctification is a process, and we do play a role in it, because even if you look at 1 Timothy 5, you hear Paul preparing young Timothy, and we had a great quote, I think came from Vadi Bachman yesterday in the in the Bible study, when he said, if you want to know what's going on with Paul and, and Timothy, Paul said, I'm going to keep doing this till they kill me, now you keep doing it till they kill you. Uh, and uh, but, but anyway, he says to Timothy, so man of God, which he acknowledges that he is, he acknowledges yeah. Timothy is, he said, you got a great resume, there's no doubt you're justified. There's no doubt you're one. You're one of you're one of uh, uh, our Lord and saviors. But now I want you to pursue righteousness. I want you to pursue steadfastness. I want you to pursue godliness. He didn't say God just gave it to him. He said He's giving you the ability to get it. But now you got to go get it. Now you have access to the power. But you got to go get it. And that's why so many people they just bog down. Rick Burgess included after justification, because too many times we present that as the end. That's the beginning. And, and, and then Scripture says, and it's going to be the theme of our conference coming up, Scripture says there now is a process of complete transformation. Am I where God wants me to be in everything? No. But am I where I was? Absolutely not. And, and, guys, I'm telling you, I have to admit that sometimes I think I lacked faith in even truly believing it. He really is powerful enough to completely transform. I had desires in my flesh that I thought would never be defeated, and they're gone. Now, does that mean I don't have things I still am working on? Of course it doesn't mean that. You hear this show, you know that. Everybody knows that. What was happening to us is wide open for everybody to see. But they're not the things they once were. Like I said yesterday in the Bible study, look, when I was first justified, God was like, we got a lot of work to do, but right now let's just keep you from going to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then we'll get – but now it's to the point, those little petty things, they don't – God, God's taking those away because of the growth spiritually, the sanctification. Now I'm to the point of God saying, like we talked about yesterday in the church to Ephesus, what's your motivation? I like that you do these things, but now I'd like to know why you're doing them. Don't forget why you're doing them. Now you got to be careful of that. Is it because you're trying to bring glory to yourself? Is it because uh, you've got a certain reputation you're trying to live up to now? Is it for the applaud of people? Are you doing it because of your devotion to me? Well, see, God could have never got to that in 1996 because there was so much stuff in the way. Yeah. I mean, he's like, I don't have to worry about that right now. You're, you're, so, you're so messed up. I, we got to work on the big stuff. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what, I'm going to get to the little stuff because I've called you to be holy. 
And I said in John 15, if you abide in me, now abide, again, that's, that's an action word. You make a decision to remain. Look at the definition, to act in accordance with. Jesus said, now, if you abide in me and I abide in you, then I will produce not a little bit of fruit, much fruit. And then what does he say? Proving that you're my disciple. He didn't say proving you're a Christian, by the way. Proving you're my disciple. Everybody who was called a Christian was already a disciple. And now we'll call you a Christian if you'll just say a prayer. So so that that's uh, that that you that you had to earn because it was a derogatory statement. And then Peter says, All of us that are his disciples will embrace Christian because it's supposed to be a mockery of us. We'll we'll take that badge of honor. But there wasn't anybody in the New Testament called a Christian that wasn't already a disciple. And what we'll do, we'll call ourselves a Christian now. We're not even a disciple yet. And that's why you see people making claims, but they seem to also have so little change and so little power, Rick Burgess included. This all happened in my life. I'm just sharing it with you. Uh, To the phones we go. Jason in Huntsville, 100.3 The River. Jason, go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Rick, uh, for your uh, testimony. Um, I'm just... (laughs) Is there any way that those last two segments of of what you had just said um, can be re- recorded and somehow on YouTube that in a block that I people like me can share with other people that would not be able to say it as beautiful as beautiful as you did? Well, again, credit the Holy Spirit there because you know you're talking yeah. about a pretty bad communi- a pretty bad pretty bad communicator here uh but yeah adler will do that and and we you know the host show gets archived every day on podcast and youtube but there are times that adler will pull segments out and save them and, and he'll do that yeah so youtube channel it'll be there okay so yeah that'll be done so and also i did a bible study on the suffering part that was a whole hour and that's in the archives of the Wednesday Bible study too. And I think it even has title on there why we suffer. But that was a nutshell. You may prefer that, so he will do that. So thanks. So just thank look, look for it on the YouTube channel. And and thank you for the kind words. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Jason in Mississippi. Jason, go ahead. Long time listener, first time caller. Thanks, Good man. Morning, gentlemen. Thank I got you. A question. Grew up. Grew up Grew up in the church, went to a private Christian school, and never heard of the book of Enoch until about Tuesday of this week. Why was that? Uh, I know that you're deep in the Christian whatnot uh, faith. Um, why was that book, I guess, not included in the Bible? Because, your take on because, it's, her- because it's heresy. It's, uh, it is not a God-inspired book. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so that's, I just uh, I, I I bought one and read it. I want I'm starting to read it, and I was just curious. I put it down. I'd, I'd get rid of it. Don't read that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Marcus in Florida. Marcus, go ahead. Hey. Good morning. Hey. Listen. If I recall right, how many became the cheerleading coach at UAB? <laughs> He's going to look really funny riding around that scooter. Yeah, 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 yeah not the cheerleading coach. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> Dalton probably in not, North. Probably not time for that call. <laughs> uh, Dalton in North Carolina. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, boys. Monkey Draft and Green Acres. Thanks Thank for the you. call, buddy. Thank Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say today's my 25th birthday. I know it's the anniversary of Bronner passing. Um, and I'm actually having my first son in about a month. How about so that? The thought of losing him is uh, scares the mess out of me. <laughs> well, but don't let it scare you. A testimony. Yeah, we're not called to a spirit of fear. Uh, don't, don't, mm-hmm. don't, don't, don't let no. That, look, it's um, that's not the intention. Uh, and here's here's the deal. Just take those lessons that I had to learn the hard way and go ahead and do them now. Uh, and uh, you know, and take this and and apply it. But but you should be excited, ready to celebrate what a gift uh, children are to mom and dad. And I want this to be something you guys celebrate. Um, and uh, so so don't have any fear. Uh, and you, you trust solely in the one and only living God. And you rest in the peace that he's overcome whatever's ahead of us, okay? Okay. All right. And if I, if I can help you in any way, let me know, okay? 
Uh, so excited Thank about you, that. Thanks. And uh, that's another thing. We had over the years, I don't know the number now, I think the last time I checked, there's about 15 kids in the listening audience that are named Bronny. Mm. <laughs> over wow. these last 15 Rick years, too. Bubba, we'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Just in the right place. <clears throat> Did y'all ever really enjoy these things when you had them in the wrong place? They drive you crazy. When you get to where you, your whole world's not wrapped up around something, you really can't enjoy it. It's freeing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just like, yeah, this is fun, but it ain't the end of the world. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not the end all. Uh, 15 minutes past the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba Show. 866 We Be Big. So, once again, we have another person that says April 23rd. My favorite of the ones. Yeah, we'll that, get you the details how they came up with that. My favorite is that when they predict one, it doesn't happen, and they just predict another one as if we're going to listen to the next prediction. Yeah, get ready for the April 24th update of that one. 16 minutes past. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Back guarantee. So, if they don't get the job done, you won't be out of anything. Uh, if you'd like to talk to them, why don't you call Timeshare Freedom Group right now at 1-866-766-8719. That's 866-766-8719. Also, you can find a link at rickandbubba.com right there under the sponsors. Now, Bubba, you you mentioned this. We're pulling up the footage of these these bench-clearing brawls in baseball. We'll do that in the next segment because I'm going to be sure to find the videos first. I got them. Oh, you do have them? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I see, and Bubba's been writing this down, looks like you have actually found the story. Huh. It's back from January, but undoubtedly Bubba is just now hearing about it and watching how Bubba says that ice cream has been the answer to so many things, <laughs> including IBS. Uh, the, 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 um, that, uh, <laughs> what you, <laughs> yeah, just saying that. is, um, uh, <clears throat> is Bobby, you want to do the fights then now that you got them? I just didn't want yeah, to well, do the, the fights because we have a, a, I was trying a, not to do the thing to Speedy that we do all the time is want to see something that we've never told him about and watch him scramble to try to find it. Well, that's, that's yeah. part of the fun right, of right, doing right, the show. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, the, uh, well, it started earlier in the day. Right. Um, we have, um. The Padres playing, and there was a bench clear uh, brawl there at Coors Field after the Padres threw at Nolan uh, Ariano, and he charges the mound, and uh, that's the first of two that we'll discuss. This one here was pretty intense. Uh, they're playing the Rockies, uh, the Padres are, but we'll pick it up there. Take a listen. Gonzalez in story against Perdomo. Here goes oh, Nolan out to the mound. Look at this. And oh. So we're full blown fighting now. I bet it's harder to run at somebody and hit them when they keep moving. It is. And in, in the pitcher with a with a classic move of throwing his glove to hopefully break the stride of the batter coming and give the catcher time to catch up. Yeah. Did the ball even hit him? Or it, I heard it hit him. It hit, did he throw it behind him? <laughs> I heard it hit the board back there. Yeah, and yeah. behind him, isn't that kind of the the fight is on if you throw behind this him? This has been going on with this, but these Correct. two teams for, for a little bit. And that's yeah. the commentating is even saying that now. Right. They're saying I, this has been brewing. Yes, uh, big time. Uh, but I'll go back one more time. Is let it you funny see the to y'all here. that the Padres are fighting? I couldn't see it go by because of the. It's kind of. I saw it right hit the board. Him. Ninety-six mile per hour fastball. Was it behind him or in front? It of It just him? kind of skimmed right from past him here, right by, by the past his left elbow. Yeah. How about he took one swing and if he had connected, it'd have been a good one. Yeah, well, it would have been. I've never understood why they removed their helmet either. Yeah, I've yeah, never understood. It's like they that. want to fight politely. Yeah. Right, right. Well, that's the same thing in football. Yeah. But yeah. who in the world in football takes any gear off when the fight starts? Yeah. Leave it all on. Uh, so that that was the one that kind of got the day started. I don't know what was in the air uh, <laughs> last night. John Smoltz even said it on the MLB Network last night when right. he was uh, helping with the uh, the Red Sox and Yankees play. Now you got to understand, it is really really cold at this game that I'm about to tell you about. It was I think 40 to 41, right. 15 to 20 mile per hour winds. It was just a very miserable night, uh, and the Yankees and the Red Sox are playing. And I think the day before yesterday, I want to say the Red Sox beat the Yankees like 14-1 to 1 or something. It was pretty bad. Well, the Yankees are jumping on the Red Sox a little bit. But the Red Sox, <laughs> I mean, they had a grand slam or whatever. Well, uh, one of the Yankees, uh, Tyler Austin, went into second on a bunt. Uh, he was trying to beat the throw to second. A bunt was laid down at third. And they go to second for the force out. And he comes in with his spikes a little high and cleated the second baseman on the calf. And uh, they got up and 
kind of faced each other and were just jawing a little bit. The cl- the bench is clear, but it was just a formality. Everybody, no, no punches were thrown or anything else. Well, later in the game, Tyler Austin is up to bat. And uh, one of the uh, Red Sox relievers who threw a 98 mile per hour fastball hit him in the uh, the side, and he took exception to that. And that's why he. It is seven minutes to the top of the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show, eight six six. We be big is our number. Car Shield is our sponsor. If your car no longer has warranty. Uh, forget all the uh, callers that are trying to call your phone. Just go directly to carshield.com slash Bubba. You don't want what they're hawking. What you need is a protection plan uh, that uh, will now cover repairs uh, and uh, that you would have to pay for since the warranty's gone. Protect it, and if you get a covered repair with your Car Shield protection plan, guess what? They pay the ASC certified mechanic of your choice directly. You get a rental car at no extra charge, and you also get 24-7 roadside assistance, and we're going to get you uh, 20% off your protection plan. If you go to carshield.com slash Bubba, you also can find that at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. How bizarre. Another wacky world. We had a dandy yesterday. We got another one today. So here we go. baby. Rick Boone, North Carolina, a man in North Carolina, is accused of stealing a tractor and leading police (laughs) on a miles-long chase. Oh, this is good. WBTV reports that a witness caught some of the chase and shared the video on TikTok showing police leading, uh, I'm sorry, (laughs) showing police vehicles chasing the man in a stolen tractor. Please look. So here he comes. So he stole it. Does he think he's going to Probably this, not going out wrong. This police chase, they say, topped out at about 20 miles an hour. <laughs> so now he's trying to do zigzags. What is he doing? He's going to wreck. what he's going to do. Yeah. He, uh, he, turn he damaged some property and so was I think he, damaged a church. Was and, he under the influence of... Rick, I'm going to step out here and say there may be alcohol involved. Yeah. Uh, you, got a you know, bit of a mullet, you, too. you don't hear of a lot of tractors being stolen. <laughs> I guess that's one reason you can't really get away very quick, right? Yeah, they said he jumped off the tractor, wait you out. waving a knife, <laughs> and uh, officers got him with a taser. Had a knife. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and they got him without injury to anyone involved. Uh, they said that he, uh, they shot one of the tires because he started going the wrong way toward oncoming traffic in an elementary school. So they shot one of the tires out, mm-hmm. uh, and that's all we really know. Uh, Said so they a, used uh, the stop sticks to stop the tractor, but the officers eventually had to shoot the tire out. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. About to, yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, so, so anyway. <laughs> he it, hit some park, parked cars, too, or something. He just they said, uh, they yeah. said he had earbuds in. He was listening to the theme of Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dukes of, just some you know. Police identified the suspect as Ronnie Hicks. Of course. <laughs> yeah, old Ronnie, Rick. Right? <laughs> Rick, Ronnie got to drinking. Hey, you, know how, you know how Ronnie does when he gets to drink. Well, I mean, Ronnie was here, and um, I, I, I mean, he, he got in the shine a little bit, and uh, huh. he, he got Ooh. on that tractor, and he's gone. I, yeah. I don't, and, 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 Ronnie and, done stole the tractor. Well, they say nothing. Ronnie done stole the tractor, and the law's after <laughs> Nothing runs like a deer, no, they say. Right. Well, what is, what is that on the back of the tractor? What kind of attachment yeah, is that? I kind of want to know that, too. Somebody yeah, might have been business. It looked like somebody it's was holding like. a giant yeah. stirring stick or something. What was it? It looked like a post hole digger, yeah. like for putting fence in. Like a made drive. <laughs> now, again, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, do, yeah, I, I only got a glance Let's see it again, Adam. I, I, only got, I only got it's a glance. It's not an auger. Uh, did he mean business? Uh, well, it's not, <laughs> since it wasn't his and he stole it, I'm he not sure. What, is that a... Are you saying that's a pile uh, driver or something? Yeah, that looks like, like yeah, yeah, it's more yeah, of a pile yeah, driver yeah. there. Putting up a wood splitter or something? Yeah, something like why, is, why does the Ram truck taking the lead? It looks like that's probably a, a police officer as well. In that. Is it? Yeah. And, okay. and what is Ronnie thinking? I mean, you're just pro. Oh, Ronnie ain't thinking. They're pro. You're prolonging it. You know, it's going to end. There's <laughs> yeah, no way. You're not getting away. Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie has no concern about that. <laughs> he's not thinking at all. Let me tell you what Ronnie's thinking about how that how that wind feels on his hair and beard. Yeah. 
You know, that's, that's he stopped all. at store to get him another one. <laughs> right. He did. You think what? You think drugs, alcohol? I think one? he had too much. To I drink. think just crazy as an outhouse rat. Right. When everybody said Ronnie stole the tractor, people who know Ronnie, anybody surprised? No. Anybody? I mm-hmm. doubt it. I doubt it. This may not be his first defense. Okay, look how laid back. Don't miss how laid oh, back. He's, he's, <laughs> am I wrong? Oh, he's driving he with one up? hand he's on the wheel. He's having a time of his life. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like he's out for a stroll. He's having a time of his life. <laughs> just one on top. Just a single on just top. Just one on top. <laughs> Fantastic! Uh, like he's even looking at the landscape yeah, of the land. Like yeah, you go yeah, out and ride yeah. in the country and have a look. Yeah, I love to ride in the country. He Y'all looks, love it. Oh, he oh, looks man. at the camera person just like casually, I believe, right? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's what's going? up, man? Just going one for hand, a cruise here." One hand propped up on the on the cab. One hand on the wheel. Oh, oh, zigzagging. Wow. Yeah. Hey, yonder go Ronnie. It's a wonder he didn't flip it right there. Yes, yeah, he got a little squirrely. <laughs> yeah. All right. I bet those, what'd you call them, the tracks, the the stop tracks or whatever yeah. that the police use? I bet that didn't do nothing to those tractor tires. Mm-hmm. I, I really wish that somebody could get filmed him getting tased. I, I oh, kind of yeah. needed that, too. I bet Ronnie. Ronnie he can take a tase. Oh, I, was about to say, I bet Ronnie didn't go easy. <laughs> yeah. No. I bet you didn't tase him once. No. no. Huh? You had to get I bet you had to have those kind of dug in with a little wire on it. You know yeah. what I'd say? Once you get that tase on Ronnie, hold on to it. Rick, Rick, don't, don't Rick let him take up. a look at him. Oh, Look at that hair. Oh, Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. He, he Ronnie. looks like a cool guy. He looks like a normal cool guy. You know me. what this means? Who thinks this guy would still Adley, you know what this means, don't you? Local band ain't got a bass player, sir, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He plays in the Just Us band. Don't <laughs> know what you were thinking there, Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. Doggone it, Ronnie. Doggone it, Ronnie. You know better than this. Top of the hour. If you leave us, have a good day. You got more Rick and Bubba, and we'll do a top of the hour break. Then more should come right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Drilled here, and he slams the hurt so bad. All right, now, now <laughs> w- l- let me go back real quick. Earlier, you love when it cuts off. You're like, hey, they got the announcer. Earlier, too. earlier in the bat. Uh, at bat, I should say, there was about a 98-mile-per-hour fastball that came in mid-thigh that he kind of just straightened his legs and it missed him. And that gave him a heads up that, all right, something might be on. And I think this was the third or fourth pitch at bat where uh, they said, okay, this time I'm going to make sure I hit you. Now, you'll see uh, Judge, he comes running out and grabs the uh, the pitcher for Boston. He comes in number 99 here and grots there and grabs him. You can see him. He's the tallest one there, and he's just trying to hold him. The dugout's empty. Here come the bullpens again, and this time it's for real. <laughs> Unlike the last time. So last time it was just a standoff. Right, which was at look, second look at that I was catcher. telling you about. Look at the catcher just over. He's just locked up with somebody. They're yeah, just kind of so hanging mad. out. You know, and, and a, lot, there, a lot of both catchers in both games, uh, there's been a lot of criticism of, of why they didn't, they, get the they, guy. they didn't get out and get the guy. In the first one we talked about, the Padres and the Rockies, he just sprints immediately. And it's almost like it would have been hard to catch him. On this one, Everybody knows it that's does, the catcher's job. You tackle the guy he's, going after the pitcher. He's pitchers. just walking right there. He should have gotten in front of yeah. him and stopped him there. He just he didn't get him. But now he did tackle him a little bit right there, but uh, he was getting a little bit of criticism. I like, of why I like how he put his mask down. That's pretty smart. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, we used to practice that, Rick. The catcher's got to get that guy quick. <laughs> uh, let me tell you what's funny. There's a coach there, number 50. Hey, look, because he looks like – this is the thing. This, you, it took forever for them to figure out. They even had to go to replay uh, to, throw to, to, to New York. And you know, the umpires are over there with headsets on, and they're trying to tell them uh, who's getting thrown out, who's not getting thrown out. Well, you know, then they got to go to the bullpen uh, because um, the, uh, the, uh, the Red Sox pitcher, Joe Kelly, who, was, who hit uh, Tyler Alston for the Yankees, he's thrown out. So they got to give the guy time to warm up. And, well, d- during the time, the third base coach for the Yankees, he realizes that there wasn't one of the Red Sox guys wasn't getting thrown out that th- was throwing punches. He goes nuts and gets <laughs> thrown out. <clears throat> and, because, and so then the Yankees uh, coaching staff runs back out and <clears throat> j- is jawing with the oh umpires. And the whole time – the reliever for the Red Sox is trying to warm up, and the ball is just flying all around. It was just, it was very intense. But I want, I, I didn't have a clock on it. I didn't start the timer, 
But I would probably say it might have been a 15-minute delay of them trying to figure out what is, you know, who to throw out, who not to throw out. It was 10-6 at the time, and uh, the Yankees were winning 10-6. It was, bitter, like I said, bitterly cold. But What they, a great use of the replay. Yeah. Well, yeah. well the thing that, that gets me about baseball that makes baseball so dangerous is, you know, when you play football, there's not enough games, and if you get thrown out, you could really impact your team. Yeah. In baseball. I mean, it's you know, if I want to fight and I get I get thrown out of the game, there's 160 something of them. I mean, it, it's almost well, especially if you're a pitcher. Yeah. If you're a pitcher and get tossed for say six games, you've missed two starts. Right. Yeah. I mean, whoopity do. It, yeah. it, it's yeah. like, but in football, you know, you're like, man, if I get thrown out, we really need to win yeah. this game. It's, but yeah. but I mean, in baseball, there's so many yeah. games. It yeah. seems like if you got a, something to grind with somebody, you're like, well, they're gonna throw me out, but it's worth it. Yeah. And when Tyler Austin went into the third inning. And, and clipped the uh, the Red Sox second baseman, Brock uh, Holt's leg, they had to review that to see if he went in. But because they didn't try to complete this, the, the, the double play, it was unreviewable uh, oh, wow. because he didn't to try to complete the play. But we'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Seven minutes past the hour from the No Name Studio on the bleeding edge of technology from Sweet Home, Alabama to the world. The gang's all here. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler. And welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. Rick, glad to be here and thank all of you for joining us. It's the little party we call Rick and Bubba. Yep, and we got ourselves a science update here. Here we go. So, uh, Bubba, would this uh, be high tech as well? Uh, it is high tech, Rick. It certainly is. is We're it? talking about robots here. Not as much as BT. <laughs> Still love technology. Always and forever. In a week. You, uh, you remember. Uh, <laughs> You remember the first little vacuum cleaners we had that were like robotic, you mm-hmm. know, the little rumbas or run around them. Yeah, yeah. Them. and uh, you know they they <laughs> huh? Do what? We still got them. Yeah. Oh yeah, they've yeah. upgraded. They're they're several generations into it now. But you know, it, it gave us kind of an idea of what might be coming. 
And we've heard some of these guys that are on the cutting edge said, look, we're a few years away from you having a robot at your house that's going to do oh, – yeah. you, you, you had a robot yeah. grass cutter. I did mm-hmm. for a yeah. while. Mm-hmm. Well, if and, I could have uh, a laundry a guy and a, a right. robot and a uh, mm. dish guy. Mm. <laughs> Dishes well, we and laundry. Ha- we have robot. a dish thing called a dishwasher. Mm. Well, yeah, but they don't put it in. It doesn't put it in there itself. <laughs> so Boston <laughs> Dynamics has been one of the leaders. Oh, they're they're one of the first dog. companies that come out with these dogs that you see everywhere. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. spooky. And mm-hmm. they've got their Shoot their guns. latest incarnation, and um, it, it's really amazing where these things have come and their ability to move around. Check so, this out right here. So so what does this one do? He looks just like a human. Uh, I forgot my tools again. Oh, that's not the robot. Oh, I'll give you a demonstration. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here, looks like he's he comes. Greg, here comes trouble. He's well, typing. I don't like the way he He's walks. looking for us. Oh, Isn't that no, wild? No. It looks spooky how he's uh, moving. Yeah, Bubba, it sure does. No, I don't wild. like the way he moves. Watch the way he gets He can up do that. Why he is he jumped. jumping around like that? He, uh, Can't he just turn? Watch the way he, he gets up there. It's, it's like working with Michael Jackson. Why, why can't yeah, he do it? Oh, he's got this guy's the tool bag. This mm-hmm. is fantastic. He picks up his tool bag. Now he oh, goes up no. steps across a board oh, that's that he good. put there. Don't forget that. Jumping with the tool bag. If he jumps up on that thing, okay. just through the tool bag. Now he's not going to be able to do that. There he goes. Dishes. Pushed over a box. Is that how he's getting down? Jump down. I did a box jump. Y'all aren't ready for this. No. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there's no. really a person in there. <laughs> no. That was a, a what? So he a, texted on an iPad what a, he wanted and it told awesome. the robot to go that's get it. Show. It did a half twist <clears throat> flip as it came off. It ain't going to be funny when it's choking you. I'm Ooh, telling yeah. you. But how, how agile are those things getting? Is oh, that yeah. not unbelievable? Of course they are. Now, they still look wow. a little strange. Oh, yeah. Yes. But the fact that, that it can reason to do that and make those moves that's just incredible so so you're saying that a contractor is going to be at the house and they're going to go okay look here's our bid for the job now do you want the robots or no robots because if we bring the robots here's the price we got two of them we'll bring them with us and they're good helpers yeah. well we i get think it done in a couple of hours they're good I, I think helpers. while they're, they're really good help. The, the guy may be still doing the construction his helper may be a robot Instead well, of a guy. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's what, yeah, that's what, my, that's what and, I'm saying. And you remember even SpaceX, we, we saw the video of their guard dog, you know, that's keeping an eye on everything. And at CES uh, that was uh, that was debuted just a week or two ago, like Ring Camera, I don't know if you saw this or not, they have a a drone. It's a little bitty helicopter drone that has a camera on it that will actually walk and go through uh, an area like your home flying through and looking for anything and sending pictures back to you. I mean, that's, and, and that's just going to become standard equipment, yep. you know? Well, it, it's another thing, and this has been brought up, but it does make me think watching where they're going. We know that the whole world, um, eventually it's already happening, you know, this, this indictment on American football. It's, it's <clears throat> barbaric. It's horrifying. Yeah. All this, of course. Now, I think a lot of people are not going to like that narrative when they no longer have these contracts that change their lives for the rest right, of their lives. Right. And and most everything in life does carry some risk with it. And no one plays football that doesn't understand the risk. But um, do you think that we will? Would we enjoy watching robots play it? Do you, are you no. are you referring to the? You remember the Jeff? Not the Jeffersons. <laughs> Jetsons. 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 <laughs> when they. That's how they're football was played it was robots remember yeah. and somebody would get crashed up and they'd send that little thing yeah. out and sweep up yeah. the parts right. run off with yeah. it. do you uh, think do you think we'll, would we enjoy i know we watch no. these I, like, i'm telling kind of, you we're not crowd of these robot wars calls we're, we're not that show oh hey, no, big, no, big that, no that's big they're doing it yeah. in high school well right? wouldn't this just right. be a, a, a version of that but a sport well it, it the robot Matter. wars are a little more um uh you know Primitive, I guess, in their mm-hmm. designs, as opposed to something like this that can move. But like couldn't a human. that? If you got, but I'm gonna tell you, we're not far away from somebody going. Let's have a football game with nothing but these robots playing. Like picture this That's coming. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, what what happened, guys? Ah, uh, man, you know our wide receiver, that robot. <laughs> man, he has helped us. He got broke. I mean, got got yeah. hit by another robot, and I had to take him off field. And once he was out, we just couldn't move the ball <clears> after <throat> that. Uh, the robot they put in, he wasn't as good. Yeah. You know, or it's it's um, uh, I, I I don't 
I don't know, but uh, it, it, when you see this, you start thinking those things are coming. I'm not saying it will replace it. I'm the, joking about that. No. But I bet Bubba's right. I bet somebody will put together some league like that, though. I mean, we've seen the Puppy Bowl. We've seen the Lingerie yeah. Bowl. The Robot Bowl is coming. Just mm-hmm. stand by. And and the way that they'll do it is somebody will be playing like Madden. They'll have controllers, and they control all the robots. But it'll be a live game. I'm not interested. Yeah, you're I'm right. not, either. not either. These but. robots that look like people, and there's a movie out about it now. What's this movie about this girl, and she's got a robot that looks like her? And she's oh, yeah, the one that comes over to like to babysit or something? Yeah, something no, weird. You don't want nothing to do with that. These that look like people? That's yeah. the ones that creep me out. Yeah, that, they're really weird. As long as they look, oh, they metal, look like that guy? I'm not, you know, or the, the robot on Lost in Space or something. Yeah. I, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. it's no, whatever the robot's name is is the name of the movie. I can't yeah, think of Megan. It's Megan. Megan. There it is, yeah. and it's got a three instead of eight. It's a horror movie, though. It's yeah, it's hard. Well, yeah. yeah, and so is this going to be whenever mm-hmm. we embrace it. Right, robots right. come into our lives. It's all going to be it's a horror. It's going to be movie. bad. Rick, do you, do you, you been know, to the refrigerator too many times? Mm-hmm. Sit down. Mm-hmm. I, I know they're probably not at every Me, school, but I, you, I know you entered uh, fifteen hundred calories, Chubbalicious. Mm-hmm. Give me that Th- Snickers. These kind of robot wars you're seeing here. I mean, there's several high schools in our area that compete in that, and they have teams. Oh, sure. National and can go international. They're pretty good. Yeah, Battle uh, how much deer sausage are you going to eat today? Greg, right. I think. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I, I think. Uh, You've been eating uh, since 6 a.m. Central? <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that Reese, our nephew, was on a robot team. You started looking for the knife the ro- at 545. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the robots they build crash into each other and fight. I don't, I don't know if that's what they do. Yeah, no. Like these. Well, yeah, yeah. No, they, they see how cool a robot you can make. Yeah, you know, I don't think they actually get in there and fight. No, and it's true. It, it's it's who makes the best robots. That's right. So what do they do, though? Do they have They to, perform feats. They yeah, have to go pick up, move yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. So they don't have, like, saws that come out and kill the mm-hmm. other ones? No, yeah. unfortunately, no. you got to no. flip them. That was a TV. So. got to flip them. But em. you think about that, You like you were talking about, these robots we've done in the past, you mm-hmm. enter uh, 1,500 calories, all of a sudden when you hit it, they just cut food off from right. you for the rest of the day. <laughs> you're, and you're, you're like, it's only 10 a.m. <laughs> <All right. laughs> How about working a walk? <laughs> <laughs> it's because I love you. It's because I love you. <laughs> That's it, Adler. That's because I care. We'll go phone trolling next. First one of the day. We've had a phone segment, but we haven't had a phone troll. That lets more of you in. We kind of pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, all right, 866 We Be Big, whatever's on your mind. Comments, questions, no shout outs, no shameless plugs. Uh, but we want to hear from you when we come back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Um, when we were talking about in his intro, you know, Pete's in a cup, and there's been a number of things. I know that was copied in the movie The Jerk, but Bubba. innovator on road eating yeah you have and that's the only way you can eat pizza on the road is in a cup and you've often you've discovered some great attributes of ice cream that really the from what i know the the dietary world has never known uh the things that ice cream can do uh including Rick, really- including cure uh, you know, chronic <laughs> diarrhea but uh but which i that was a first, i've man. never in my life Heard anyone no, say this, the solution are, is in the freezer? Y'all are exaggerating that <laughs> just a little bit, but look, it's a great comedy, and I love it. I'm, well, I'm all in. Yeah, did I come past your door and you say I got, I'm having a really bad stomach day? Yeah, yeah. And, and then but it was it wasn't quite to that, right? But it was just you know. And did you go on to eat ice cream? I did on well, a bad stomach so day. So Rick didn't exaggerate at all. <laughs> so, but. It, it's it, it was really if you feel, if you look at the right. at just if you look at just ice cream and and what's right. in ice cream and stomach problems you don't you don't see the connection I give you that understood but if you look at the happiness that you ice got, cream now, now brings that, yeah. and how it can conquer anything now in that, your body now you're on that's something. the connection you need to focus on now you're on to there's something. a mental part of this we are leaving out gentlemen it's not just about molecules that's so right. you're saying just seeing ice cream in general would lower your blood pressure i'm telling you there's there's something mm. to the happiness that a food brings that can cure a lot of things that's all i'm not saying. cure it but just for the time being you, you know what i would call better. it you know Let's what i make for it, a make it better yeah. make it. you know what else i'll say placebo yeah, yeah. Well, placebos work. See, yeah. we right. we all act like well, that was placebo. It didn't do anything. No, it got the results mm-hmm. via the mind. That's right. So we still got the results. Let's not look down on placebos. I, look, our our world is full of them. If you really think about mm-hmm. it, and I won't go into that. We don't have time. That's but now, another segment. but now, Bubba, it it has happened. Uh, and you said you had a companion story that's a little a little more of an update. 
But we did find a story, and I guess we just didn't do it when it came out. Or if we did, I don't remember it. And this is what you have been looking for, the ice cream diet. How, it, how does it work, and is it good for you? Now, Rick, the ice cream diet claims, yeah. mm-hmm. it claims <laughs> that it can help you lose weight, reduce PMS symptoms. Thank God. Reduce <laughs> your risk of developing colon cancer and lower your blood pressure. Good night. Now, Maybe that's their claims. Not go mine. get some ice How cream, much you got y'all. Eat? No, that, it's all about Let's give it a shot. Yeah. We keep going back to that. Bubba, I see a healthy regimen here for you, my friend. The ice cream diet uh, is based on a book by the same name by Holly McCord back in 2002 is when this thing actually oh, first came out. Nice. Well, she is a registered dietitian and what was former her, what's your first name? Editor. What's your first name? Holly. You would have thought Peggy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in the book. <laughs> now, get to, this is really a simple wow. concept. It, it's really much simpler than, we, <laughs> you than we're wanting to make it. In the book, McCord encourages people to eat a portion, portion, keep that in mind, mm. of ice cream every day as part of their diet as long as as they follow a healthy eating regimen, okay? Well, well, good. I mean, so yeah, so right. what, what, what does that look like? What, that, what's that the mean, real world? That means that? go take, do an healthy, a healthy eating regimen, and that's what's going to help your health, and every now and then get you a spoonful of ice cream yeah. for fun. That's she's what saying, that really means. She's saying, and however you, you want to divide this, you have some freedom, but consume 1,250 calories a day and – a portion of ice cream that's 300 calories to give you a total calorie intake for the day or caloric of 1,500 calories, okay? And she says most people will burn much more than that, 2,000 to 2,500 calories a day, especially if you're a man. So by taking in, uh, by burning up more than you take in, you will lose weight. It's, it's just a simple, but- again... The ice cream could be anything right. to get you to fifteen hundred. Right. I mean, right. But what's I, the ice cream got to I do? I think with? she's saying though, Fine. because some people, when they when they're on a, a regiment of fifteen hundred calories a day, they get burned out because they feel like they're not eating as Fun much. Zone. They're not getting the foods they usually get. This gives your body a little. Hey, it's okay. We're what's, all right here. What she's you saying know? is it's the 1,500 calories a day that helps you lose weight, yeah. but but this ice cream's there yeah. to have some fun. Yeah, I love how they do this. Because I promise the... if you go to 1,500 calories a day, you'll lose yeah, weight. That's, yeah, that's yeah. when I, when I was uh, lost my 40, that was my goal mm-hmm. every day. That's where, I try, that's where I try to hit now. Even. And we know from Horrible. a test we had actually uh, with Help South one time, they performed the test. Here we go. Uh, it is uh, phone troll time, our first one of the day. Uh, phone troll, a little different than a, just a phone segment. Uh, and the reason why is we're trolling now. Uh, 30 seconds a pop. We're trying to get a lot of people on. This also, we open up 10 lines because this also enables uh, people that over years we would hear, I try to call, I never can get through. Well, now we have 10 lines, which makes it easier to get in. And then we do troll format which then moves everybody a little bit quicker, and it kind of forces us to round off what we want to say. Probably want to drop out, drop out, you know, hey, man, y'all out today, you know, and uh, or whatever, you know, just kind of get right to what you want to say, and then you get your comment in, and if you have a question, we can follow with that. There, is, there are two timeouts, so two callers could be extended. Uh, but, uh, Kyle, I meant to bring this up today, Kyle, and I'm glad you have this topic we may unpack this in its own segment, but but Kyle will get us going. Kyle, 30 seconds on the Rick and Bubba Show. Go ahead. Hey, y'all. Hey, Thank buddy. y'all for what y'all do every day. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I just want to ask why Rick had uh, bought Matt Mitchell on Twitter. Yeah, I, I saw that picture yesterday. I think that may have to be its own segment because I can be – I'm completely honest. I don't know what he's talking about. Now, this is not the Matt Mitchell – that was that is Cassio Kid. That's Cassio Kid's real name, by the way, uh, and that's the confusion. And he's trying to clarify that he's not the Matt Mitchell from the Rick and Bubba show. And he holds up this picture and he says, "They don't even like me." Rick blocked me on Twitter. I have no recollection of ever blocking. I used to tell y'all I thought he was pretty funny. You're talking about you did, you did the fact. radio show here? I, no, my first, Matt Mitchell, no, the thought- guy that does the. SEC's different team's reaction oh. has the beard. The ostrich. Ostrich. The yep. ostrich. Yeah. Yeah. ostrich. Because his his drawing, his pencil drawing is. looks just like Matt yeah. Mitchell Cassio. Yeah. I mean, I thought that's who it was for a long so time. So we can talk about that because I don't want to take up the whole well, phone troll. Right? 
Well, if I did it, I, I think did. You, I think you did it on accident. I think you I did it on accident. Did, yeah, yeah. Because I, I know how you are with your phone, and yeah, that's, that's the a good first point. thought when when I saw that <laughs> yesterday. I thought about Brett Rick's done this on, uh, just yeah. on accident. Yeah. When I saw that, I went. He didn't mean to. I went. You've even seen me show you some of his videos yeah, and stuff. I'm I like, know. I got nothing against. Uh, now I'll tell you what could happen is I tried to block Cassio Kid. Now, 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 now that's possible, and I blocked the wrong Matt Mitchell. Uh, let's go to Kevin in Huntsville. Kevin, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Good. Oh, great. Good. Good. Hey, just uh, back to the robots. Uh, back in June, uh, there was a Google engineer that was put on paid leave because he was saying that their artificial intelligence was becoming sentient, which meant right. it started to get feelings and emotions, mm. and then it could, you know, start so, discerning right versus wrong. And self-aware, so yeah. They're taking over. My you know, I, I still, I still argue. I don't think that is capable because I think programming is programming, and all it can do is do a line out of a program. So I, I don't know that. You know, I may be totally wrong, but I just don't think it has got to the point that it can program itself, so so to speak. Yeah, this guy looks like he's he was maybe just a little bit lonely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is that him? <laughs> That's him. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Eric in Pennsylvania. Eric, go ahead. 30 seconds. Hey, guys. Hey, I thought Alex Jones was in some kind of trouble. Say that again? What Alex the heck Jones. was he doing? What was he doing talking about atomic bombs at an economic forum? <laughs> That's funny. That's a great point. That That's hilarious. a good point, Eric. Put, what, tell what? Adler to put them aside of each other. It, it sounds just like him. Wow. He, that, that is funny. And a little bit of uh, John Goodman. I was getting that, right. too. That's Al true. Gore. Yeah. Nick in Birmingham, ZZK. Nick, go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks so much for taking my call. Enjoy the show. I, I am a pastor. I've been pastor for 21 years. Thank you. I uh, just moved to the Birmingham area and uh, so grateful for two guys. You know, in a world where many of my colleagues preach what sells instead of what saves, mm. it's uh, it's so refreshing to hear you guys on the radio standing on the truth. And uh, thank you so much for sharing the gospel the way that you do. I, I'm just so grateful. And uh just want to say thank you. I pray for you guys every day. Love what you do. Thank Enjoy you so it. much, man. Very, very kind. Very you to say nice that. of you, sir. And those prayers are desperately needing needed, as you know. Uh, let's go to Herb in Alabama. Herb, go ahead. Thirty seconds. Greg mentioned that he wasn't interested in watching robot football, but I was wondering how about midget robot wrestling. Greg, that's a that's a <laughs> okay, great question, Herb. Go. That's a way to be thinking. Do you yeah. think you could you know build them with a little <clears throat> cherry belly and some? You know, short, stubby arms and legs. It's it's tough to replace the micros. (laughs) It's tough. (laughs) The genuine article is pretty good one. (laughs) The genuine article. (laughs) Micro. Did you say micros? Micros. Yeah. Yeah. Micro wrestlers. Uh, Bradley (laughs) in Alabama. Bradley, go ahead. 30 seconds. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, Hey. buddy. I've got a question. We've got (laughs) with Biden putting his hand on the Bible, saying he's going to protect us from foreign and domestic. Yeah. That cancels him and Kamala out. Somebody needs to get them completely out of office. Okay. Hey, look, I understand what you're really saying, different. but I don't think it's realistic. <laughs> right. What is he saying? Well, he's Thank saying you. that if they're going to actually protect us from threats, foreign and domestic, they need to step aside. Well, that's true. I see what you're saying. It, we're not. Yeah, very few people are going to declare themselves the problem. No. No, no, no. Uh, it took me a long time to do it. Uh-huh. Tyler in Missouri. Tyler, go ahead. Hey, you guys are talking about robots, and uh, I didn't know if you guys had heard about Chat GPT yet. It's a uh, chat bot with uh, like AI technology, and um, it can you talk to it, and then say so you want to code a program, it will write the program in like three seconds. Um, if you want, like you're in college, you need a paper wrote about something really specific. It can do it in like three seconds. Jordan Peterson, I've seen anything about him talking about it. Tyler, what was the name of, of it again? It's Chat GPT. Chat. Right behind GPT. you, buddy. Look right behind okay. you. Got it. I think uh, universities are getting kind of freaked out by it because it's so um, intelligent and just write papers and everything pretty quick. Where was this thing when I was in school? It's mm. it's it is amazing what mine it can was do. the Asian student. Yeah, it, look, I'm not saying there isn't very big, very complicated, and very well written programs out there, but even Chat GTP is still going to a line in a program and spitting back out what's put in it. 
Yes, it is. Uh, you can put a prompt into this chat GPT program and say, write me a paper about the history of football using sources and quotes from former players oh. and and uh, like whatever you want to Where do. Where was and this? And it will spit out this paper very quickly that seems like it was written by a human. But the thing is, to Bubba's point, it doesn't know what it is doing. No. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay. It gives you a good start, though. But wow, is it good. And, yeah, and teachers wow. are, are in a really tough spot now. They're like, who, was this? who wrote this? And it really Frank makes you probably listen. It makes you question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Taking notes. <laughs> what does it cost? I'd like to do one just for fun. It's to free. It. It's just a free open. Oh, it, yeah, it's just online. And But it makes you question a lot of what you read now online. It, it really makes it so that these bots and chat bots and things like that are really, really uh, sophisticated, and you are, are, are having to really uh, figure out if you're talking to a human or a person. And because it's a robot, they can give you an assignment, but you're not going to have the creativity of a human writer, the skill set of a human writer, as far as something you were reading for entertainment or for inspiration. He's talking about you need a report turned in at a, for academia. We can do that. We used to copy uh, it we'll, out of the We'll world give you the, sh- the notes. We'll give you the references. All that. But I just wild. I just pulled it up. Chat GTP. It says it's at full capacity right now. Check back later. I bet it okay. is. <laughs> Braden's gone there. We know that. <laughs> He's Look getting that paper Rick done. And Bubba, Rick and Bubba. In the studio on me and Rick, where they hook you up to this breathing apparatus and all this, they can measure how many calories you burn literally sitting watching TV. And then you know what you got to do in activity on top of that to get, you know, burn more calories. Bubba, you get that stat and the ice cream stat in one day. Man, I can eat ice cream and sit on my butt and breathe and lose weight. I love how they do this. Of course, whole, that doesn't always mean you're healthy, but yeah. No, this study, this whole article, right. and then read the last two paragraphs on the last page. I, I love how they do that. However, however, however. <laughs> Despite the apparent pros associated with the savoring uh, uh, of ice cream every now and then, following a fad diet can have potentially damaging consequences. Uh, The University of Pittsburgh Medical Center has warned that attempting to religiously follow a fad diet can cause poor long-term weight control, increase your risk of developing chronic diseases, and diminish your athletic ability. Then everybody knows that. Sure. Yeah. That's why I got off of it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, fad diets, Look, we've said this on the air before. Every single diet anybody's come up with, you'll lose weight. But where is the lifestyle change where you'll be a healthier person long term? You know, and and you know they all look if you if you reduce the calories that you're you know burning off, you will lose weight. I mean that's just a fact. But but now how healthy you are now that's a whole different animal. All right, Gabe Kapler, are you familiar with him? Hans? Oh, he's the was, manager. Welcome of the back, Phillies? Carter. No, yeah. no, this yeah. is another one. He's Fast a baseball break, great guy. Movie. <laughs> He's a baseball guy. <laughs> He's the that. manager of the that. Phillies. Uh, apparently, he is a fitness fanatic, right. but he also is, like a, us. is addicted to ice cream. Yeah, well, we and, all have a thing. and they say, and many players that, that have played under him for for years in the minors and the pro, the, the pros say that he will eat ice cream, but then he spits it out so he doesn't ingest the calories. Ah, ah. by the way, that's he gets the gross. flavor and spits it out. That's Ryan Greenwood's sniff dot. Yeah, yeah. it really. Ryan is. used to sniff cookies. Yeah. And then throw them away. Yeah, throw them away. Mm-hmm. Look, wait, I, I've I, seen Speedy do that around here mm-hmm. with cakes. And I like his thing of actually getting it in your mouth to get the flavor and then spitting it out. That's I've, heard gross. People, I've heard of people doing That's that. That's just gross. Well, it's it, gross to be around them. You know yeah. what? You know what we're talking about right now. And I told Bubba this before we started the show today. And I certainly don't want to be insensitive <laughs> to any of this stuff because some of it's very, very serious. And I know that sadly firsthand with some dear friends. But these kinds of things are only first world ideas. Right, you're right. Oh, you're yeah. right. Okay. You're all over that. Yeah. Kimba, Kimba's never <laughs> sniffed the food and threw it away. No, 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 no. no. It doesn't some of some of our eating disorders are strictly first world problems. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. You know? <laughs> and only a first world person uh, that is doing really well would say, "Well, I like to taste ice cream and spit it out." That's a first. Do, do that's a Jay first Leno. world idea, right do there. Do the Jay Leno bit because I love it. I love it. The reason why the rest of the world hates us because we play with food. Yeah. Here, Kimba. Here's Mr. Potato Head. Kimba, eat Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> no, Kimba, put a hat on it. <laughs> yeah, it goes back to that. Kimba, love ice cream. No, you don't want to get fat. Just taste it and spit it out, Kimba. <laughs> It'll be we'll, a nay. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
35 minutes now past the hour. Somebody say. So uh, let's move on today. I do want to uh, push you to uh, Upside.com, or you can just go to the App Store and search for the Upside app. It's free. Uh, and use our special promo code Bubba25. Put Bubba and then the number 25. And once you do that, uh, you're going to get 25 cents or more back on every gallon on that first tank of gas you put in there. And then that kind of activates the app. Uh, and then you let the savings begin. Whatever you're doing, uh, you simply go and, and check in at the business, pay as usual with your credit or debit card, and get paid back. Uh, say, you know, you, you, everything everything out there right now, let's just call it. Everything out there is costing us more, whether the government wants to acknowledge that or not. We know why. They, they, they must think we're foolish. But, but we can counter that by trying to find ways to save some money, uh, get money back. And the Upside app is a way to do that. Uh, so go to Upside.com, use that code Bubba25, or you can go to RickandBubba.com and get the app uh, there at the link we have under sponsors. All right, so we got a little bit of Biden, a little bit of Jean-Pierre. We, we got a little bit of that Where'd go? over in the political world. Where'd he go? Uh, Basement Joe. So um, we were told emphatically in the very beginning when Vice President Kamala Harris uh, was uh, appointed to be vice president, breaking all sorts of barriers. Unfortunately, right when she did, we no longer can make things male or female, so really it kind of ruined the whole thing. Uh, we want to celebrate her as being the first female uh, but we can't really do that because we're not allowed to say there's male and female, which is kind of a bummer for Kamala. But anyway, so um, <laughs> yeah, it's if, hard. It's hard to be historic on one hand and not recognize gender on the other. It really is. So if you go back, um, has anybody got her pronouns? Uh, but if, 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 if we, if, guess, we yeah. if we go back, remember when she first was put in this position. We were lectured about how we say her name, mm -hmm. and they used little children to teach us how to pronounce it. So somebody has got Biden mispronouncing it like this week, not not way in the past. Yeah, just what well, was yesterday. Really. Yeah, and yeah. going to bring those children back that were training all of us <laughs> to right. see if they can now train the president. Mm -hmm. So here, here, here it is. That's what I asked Kamala. I'm asking for your trust and support in 2020 for Kamala and me. But as Kamala said, it's not Kamala, it's Kamala. That's what I asked Kamala. <laughs> oh, so good. So come on, come on, come on, come on. So, so will, will he get? That's what I asked Kamala. Will he get corrected? <laughs> no. Huh? Well, he might now. But as Kamala said. It's not Kamala. It's Kamala. That's what I asked Kamala. Kamala, Kamala, okay. Kamala. Kamala. So good. Bless his heart. <laughs> I'm so thankful I'm not his handler. Boy, I tell you, there's got to be a lot of people that mm. are just wringing their hands going, what are we going to do? I think mm -hmm. I'd get that robot and let it speak. Yeah, I know. Let it write what it is. To say. Kamala. So now we've got uh, CNN. Uh, Joe Biden did, in fact, meet with his son's corrupt business partners oh, yeah. on multiple occasions when he was the VP. Now, now this is in the news because of all the, the stuff that's going on, and right. he claims he didn't meet with them. And mm -hmm. there's so many things he says. Now, don't forget, this would just be another one. All the lies that we absolutely know that Joe Biden has has produced, but Joy Behar told you, the reason why he's treated differently than Trump is that Trump's a liar and a thief, but Biden's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's Biden's character mm -hmm. that makes us give him a pass. And Joy's a genius. Yeah. So here he is, uh, and again, uh, this is when the old dam be begins to break. Is when CNN and all them start Ooh, being critical of when they turn on you. Look yeah, out! So, you got no friends. So here we, piece here. here we go. Despite his denials, a CNN review of the laptop data, as well as other public material, shows that Joe Biden did interact with some of his son's associates while serving as vice president, though it's unclear exactly what was discussed. One example, the Republican site, Miguel Aleman Magnani, a Mexican businessman and son of the former president who Hunter was trying to woo. In 2014, Aleman Magnani and his dad were photographed at the White House with then Vice President Biden. In a later email, Hunter Biden reminds Alemani Magnani of the favors he's done for him. We have been talking about business deals and partnerships for seven years. 
I have brought every single person you have ever asked me to bring to the effing White House and the Vice President's House and the inauguration. Hunter Biden bluntly acknowledged the power of the Biden name in a memoir, writing that the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, which put him on its board, considered my last name gold. I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that, uh, that if my last name wasn't Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Now, keep in mind. I, well, that's I, CNN that's doing CNN. that. And that's, that's actually investigative reporting. When was the last time you wow. heard CNN even say in their in the piece they put together, Republicans made this accusation, and we've confirmed they were right. When's the last time you heard that? You know, be- we heard they were making changes over there, and evidently yeah. they are. Well, and, and, it also and heard, shows you that they're getting rid of Biden. Yeah. I heard some great commentary on this, Rick, and there's uh, Bubba, and there's two there's two thoughts here. One is they're they're taking him out, and kind of what, what you were thinking, Rick, uh, when you were talking about, yeah. hey, they're, they're going it's after It's a double Biden. play. The other is they're trying to get all this out so early that by the time the elections come in 2024, it's going to be an afterthought because they're like, let's get all this mess out of the way now. And then that way in this microwave society where everybody only thinks about what's going on right now and they want it quick, they won't even, you know, it'll be an afterthought, but sure. we're probably leaning on one. And that is that they're, they're yeah. getting, they're getting rid of him, but who knows? Um, Pretty good commentary though. Yesterday on uh buck and clay is B any count. <clears throat> To be, oh, the photo. Uh, yeah, what, what are we doing here? What's what? Why is this important today? What, what? Well, um, oh yeah, I, I, here's uh, Hunter Biden in, yeah. um, in the in the green Corvette. Yeah. yeah oh, the I one see. The, the one uh, classified one. documents was found next to. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the house. <laughs> he's got some. He's got some pastures mm-hmm. riding with him. The house mm-hmm. that the Corvette was stored in. That's where the classified documents were found. Um, <clears throat> and. It's come out that Hunter Biden lived there, mm-hmm. stayed there, oh, yeah. and, and then paid his dad like 50 grand a month for at least a year f- to rent that house. Which <laughs> that's a incredibly, that's it's just money laundering. Yeah. That's what that's, that's, that's just uh, money that's laundering. All that, yeah. And, there, and that shows you he has access to anything that was in that garage. Yes. Yeah. And, and again, showing you what a fine and upstanding person Hunter Biden and is. We, we didn't. We didn't cover the story the other day, mm-hmm. but you remember he had a he had a child with the stripper. Yeah, and she oh, is, yeah, and now he is suing her to block her from that. using his last name. I saw that, even though he is the biological father. I saw that. I saw that. Fine person. Yeah. Right. Who he, are these girls that he's giving a ride to school that it's in the car with him? My <laughs> goodness, a, what in the world? What in the world? I know. There, there, there he is. I think we all know how There's about. Mr. Classy. Gracious. Do we want to work in here the insanity of Representative Sandra Feist? Total insanity. Total insanity. It's like they never know where to stop. They just don't know where to stop. This is this is pretend. And again, it's a, it's it's a dicey topic. If you got kids or whatever, it may not be a topic you want to talk about. But um, you know, nowadays, as I said earlier, that you know, boys will be boys, girls and girls will be boys. It's a messed up, shook up <laughs> yeah. world, except for Lola. You talking about wasting yeah. your time here? Yeah. So they always go too far. Look, I understand what you're saying. Is there are people who are biologically one gender and they want to live their life as the other gender? But there's certain things about that, even if they start doing surgeries, they cannot change, okay? What she is talking about <laughs> like is, is total insanity. So the, 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 the word that is used for a woman's cycle is about to be used, so just want to warn everybody out there if you're sensitive to that. But here is Sandra Feist, and I want you to just think about this. I would encourage uh, the committee to vote no on this amendment um, for a few reasons, um, practical, financial, social, emotional. Um, First, uh, there are a lot of schools that are moving towards gender neutral bathrooms. And if we add female, we might become obsolete very quickly. Um, Second, not all students who menstruate are female. Um, We need Mm. to make sure that all students have access to these products. Um, There are obviously less um, non-female menstruating students, and therefore their usage will be much lower. And that was actually um, calculated into the cost of this um, and how much we decided to fund it. And so we we do not expect that the non-female menstruating students will use um, these products as much as the the students using female bathrooms, but it's important to have them there. Um, And that brings me to just the social emotional reasons for that. Um, These students who are not female, who menstruate, 
demonstrate um, face a greater stigma and barrier um, to asking for these products. And so providing them in an easily accessible place um, in all student bathrooms is particularly important for those students. But but, no, but, 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 but but if you're still needing them, it's almost like watching mental illness. Oh, and you're, and you're still asking for them. If your trip into the men's restroom includes access to these products, mm. you're in the wrong restroom. That's right. That's the simple answer a, a, for that. that. You're yeah. in the wrong restroom. Your biological body is doing something that males cannot do. And you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's it, maddening, how, isn't it? This doesn't seem that difficult to understand. If you want to portray yourself that way, it, you know, in your private life, I guess that's your own business. But publicly, you're kind of asking us to adapt to things that, that, are, that are just complete, complete lunacy. Uh, it, it, it's, you, you think you, about you, how You can't basic, need these products and be a, a male. How, how basic is the genders? Male and Could female. anything be more basic? And I tell you, the, the way some of these people are so lost in it, it's, you know, I feel for them. I really do. Tampons in the boys' room. Oh, oh my <laughs> Here he goes. Oh, Rick, here we go. Rick, you Instead know, of, you can pot him <laughs> down, Instead right? Instead of smoking in the boys' room. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. The Rick and Bubba Show. And all of us have admitted this in the break uh, that have multiple children. If you think because you have more than one child and they're involved in activities. Of 16 children. Wow. 16 children. She gave birth to her first baby at 21 and has since had 11 more hmm. biological children, including the latest edition, Vaughn, who is now two. Here they range, two to 22 now think about this Ooh. with her husband of 24 years. They've made those 24 Ooh. years count, buddy. I mean, they have Badly. made those count. She homeschools and has a bus and shuttles her 16 children to 88 sports practices a week. Good night! Wow, 80, 88 88 sports practices per week. I'm on, here, I'm, y'all take the number 88 and look at it. <laughs> nice. That's a big number. Now, Rick, think about these facts, <laughs> That's a facts big too. number. Think about these if facts. you said 88 in a month, I'd and, be like, And, yeah, and a few I'll, of them are yeah. not doing anything yet. Yeah, because yeah. remember that? And, yeah. and some yeah. may be too old. What's 21 doing? Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. helping drive the bus. 22 is helping it. Yeah. Rick, here, the, the numbers in this story are amazing. This mom has spent 10 years of her life pregnant. Unbelievable. 10 years wow. pregnant. Wow. She has gained and shed 600 pounds in baby weight. Bubba, you, you, Bubba now th- you might want to talk to her. I mean, I mean, you talk about gaining and dropping 600. Look here, she did it with ice cream diet. Look, I know. Bubba. How about that? Look at that? How about that? Not one C-section. Mm. I know a lot, of you, a lot of you ladies. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, wow. Goodness. Not one C-section. Wow. We're pushing them all through. Thanks, Rick. Rick, some people just lot. have a gift. That's, well, I, I'm just telling you. She must have wide hips. Greg. <laughs> well, you know, Rick, I, I can say, Greg, I can say live on the she has That's a gift, not, and Greg yeah. has to – he has to read. Have you never heard that? They go, well, yeah, I don't think that hips. was That's the gift he was talking baby. about. Though. It is if you're going to well, have 16 babies. <laughs> it was the gift of being able to bring children into the world she's very built freely and easily. She's yeah, obviously she's built, built for it. it. Right. Well, Greg, you can't argue that. So whatever. <laughs> Greg, how about this? The proof is in the bus. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Greg. Where it's do they that, park the bus, I wonder? In. Goodness gracious. By the way, I'm looking at their house. they got a super nice house, They do. Daddy gets it done. He's in real estate, is that right? Yeah, he, he, sure he better. Is. That son of a gun moves some property. Yeah, because he's got to have some room. Mm-hmm. And how about this? He and he's lived with a pregnant hey, woman hey, for twenty years. Greg, how about this? Also, pretty good at managing time, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Evidently, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not a workaholic. And you know what? He, you know how some people say, "Well, all that goes out the window when you have your first baby." Apparently not. No. 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 I mean, no. Uh, you talk about somebody that's able. They to, look refreshed, energized, yeah. good looking bunch. Do you realize how many things they just worked through that everybody says I know. Will, oh, won't God. happen? Read these numbers on here. Obviously, their life what together seems through. to be healthy. Yeah. Their life, their kids are organized. They get them all school. Get them. To, they, they, how about they're not saying, "Well, we got too many kids, so you can't be involved in stuff." They're involved in stuff. Rick. Play the numbers in this story. It's all about these numbers. It's mind boggling. They go through six hundred and fifty dollars of groceries that come from a wholesaler a week, what including the? twelve gallons of milk, one hundred eggs, 
40 pounds of chicken and 40 to 50 pounds of potatoes or rice. Mm. Woo! Listen to, not, listen, not l- listen to no. this breath of fresh air for all they the need a They need a whole laying house for that, that many eggs. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're I'm telling right. you. Know? They should wow. have their own chickens. How about oh, this? Going. Here's a breath of fresh air. David and I, talking about our husband, we're blessed to be able to have children, and we really truly believe that raising children is an incredible opportunity to do something amazing in the world. I, I agree. Man. Well, I they're agree. amazing. Man. They are amazing. They are. That's a lot of them, though. 88 practices. Good mm. night. Oh, you don't think yeah. I sent this to Amanda and said, look, anytime we start mm-hmm. yay yeah about who's going to go get what kid, she starts, let's revert uh, back to this. How do you yeah. not forget and leave a kid I somewhere? Oh, I mean, you know, how do you, you know, know them all? You know that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a good point. You, you how put do a little you? name tag on <laughs> all yeah. of them. You know, I know this one. About nine minutes to the top, the Rick and Bubba Show. 29 years still here. Thank you for being with us today. From the manchurch.com, a uh, man church service tonight, First Baptist Church, Opelika, Alabama. I-92 WLWI, Andrew Varvudis there tonight. So make plans to be with him, and you could plug into a small group as they roll through our curriculum if you are not already in one. But you're welcome to attend tonight, and you'll enjoy the message from Varbudis, I promise you. And they'll have a great night there tonight at First Baptist Church, Opelika. Get details at themanchurch.com. Just click on events and that'll take you to, uh, you'll see a prompt to go find a man church near me. Others coming up, you can find them all there. All right, so uh, we, we have an update uh, from our favorite here today, Bubba. Of course, that is Jean, Corinne Jean Pierre. Uh, yeah, yeah. boom boom. Filet boom boom. So we, we got that. We got that. Uh, what? 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 What, what did you say? What did you say? He filleted it. You, you're you said filet boom boom. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's calais boom boom. Calais filet whatever. <laughs> you know we got a we got a kid from France on the team. I could ask him what yeah, that means. Oh, we did research. I have it. Yeah, Remember? we've had yeah. several people tell us. Somebody eating candy. Don't talk we've had several people tell, tell us, and it's 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 Somebody kind of candy. vague though. There's we, not no, a, nobody we, really locks we, in. Well, on. we played it about candy. Let me give a shout out to a teammate. What about candy? We played it for Frenchie, and then we played it for a pastor from. Uh, French-speaking Canada, and and they all were kind of like it's something kind of like they weren't as clear to them either. Yeah. They, they were. They said candy, something about candy. They were a little gray. Candy boom it. boom. Don't you want to like? <laughs> don't you want a bonbon? And what is something like that? Stop, just buddy. Stop. Just turn boy, you've man. had a bonbon banner week. Bonbon. This, you need. Rick, you know what you, you are right now. Bonbon. You know what you are right now. Look, if you were flying around, look, you know I'd say this. Let's just land. Let's just land. Land that plane. Yeah, all right. You guys know bonbons? Play boom, boom. Know bonbons are. By the way, candy. yeah, I do. They're candy with ice cream in the middle. All right, so let's go to uh, Corrine Jean Pierre. Uh, she is, it's a big day on the show for Kamala Harris. Uh, not only does the president refer to her as uh, the president, not vice president, apparently, press secretary will do the same. Listen closely as, as she declares Kamala Harris is the president. Here we go. This Sunday, the president will speak about the fight to secure women's fundamental right to reproductive health care in the face of these attacks. She will talk about what's at stake for millions of women across the country, and most importantly, the need for Congress to codify the protections of Roe into law. This Sunday, the president will... The president, president and then she... That's vice president. Yeah, it's not the president. I, I mm-hmm. still, I, I'm still confused with this language I keep hearing about codify, 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 whatever, uh, <laughs> row when the Supreme Court sorry ruled on it, said it's a state. Issue. I know. I don't get that either. Well, I do get it. They're just, you know what it is? It's a child that says, no, 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 I don't like that answer. <laughs> no, I no. Want, I want to have my way. Uh, all right. So next, 
Uh, we have uh, the Justice Department has not told the White House that it cannot talk about the facts underlying the special counsel. So, uh, again, now, I remember she was saying they can't talk about it because yeah. of the Justice Department. But the Justice Department said nobody's under a gag order. Well, good luck getting an answer for Kareen because it's not going to happen. No. Uh, so I feel bad for the reporter that unpacks this, especially when she gets the comment, when she has the comment ready for him. Here we go. On that, uh, we've all reached out to the Department of Justice. A law enforcement official tells NBC News the Justice Department has not told the White House that it cannot talk about the facts underlying the special counsel investigation into classified documents. So trusting you've received that same information, understanding the desire to be prudent, then why, why can't you speak about the underlying facts? We've been very clear when it comes to even underlying facts, when it comes to specifics, when it comes to something that is under the purview, that is that the Department of Justice is looking at, especially legal matters, investigations, we do not comment from here, Peter. That has been consistent. So We've been that very consistent. Mm. So he's, <laughs> yeah, it has been consistent, but but why you're not commenting is inconsistent. Bad. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's inconsistently consistent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now the next one, now she's about to get mad. Yeah, she's about to get mad. She's about to get the, mad. Mm. Reporter, don't miss what, what the reporter says at the end. So. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, reference an interview that President Biden did in mid-September with 60 Minutes. And in that interview, he chided former President Trump for having in his possession classified documents. He called it irresponsible. First of all, do you think it was proper for President Biden to comment on an ongoing DOJ investigation? So I'm going to say this, uh, and I'm going to keep it really short today, as it relates to this particular issue, I as bet it you relates to an ongoing uh, legal matter, I'm going to refer you to Department of, Just uh, Department of Justice in, with the, that specific, as it relates to uh, anything that you want to ask of us uh, about uh, this uh, this legal matter, I would refer you to the White House Counsel uh, Office. I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to go I'm into gonna, further. I'm simply asking you to comment I, and on I just, the person I, that you work for. I just commented. I just commented. We're moving on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I already answered your question. Go ahead. Well, I, I did. <laughs> well, it's your it's your opinion. It's your opinion. It's your opinion. That is your opinion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did he just what say brilliant? He just zoo. go brilliant. Yeah. Wow. What a wow. He said, "You no answered my answer." <laughs> He said, "No answer is not an answer." But he, he, what he did is that they, <laughs> the reporter caught her in her own words, saying that they can't comment on legal matter. But Biden was commenting oh, on yeah. the legal matter when it came to Trump. And and he didn't ask her to give up anything these others do. And he says, "What's your opinion on that? Do you find that to be inconsistent?" Yeah. Well, she's not going to answer that first no. of all. But well, she did, Rick. Uh, well, be <laughs> I love when he goes, "Brilliant, <laughs> great," <laughs> and he said, "A no answer is not an answer." <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I already answered your question. Go ahead. Well, I I did. Well, it's your it's your opinion. It's your opinion. It's your opinion. That is your opinion. Go ahead. 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 Y'all, you really see the tide kind of turning on the Biden administration. Oh yeah. And this is all. This is the Gavin Newsom coming about. The USS Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, who is going to be, I'm going to predict, the Democratic nominee. Yeah. Let me tell you what we're having here. It goes back to what I said. It's a little something we call everybody on Glenn. Everybody on Glenn, everybody and, on Glenn. And, Ready to break. And w once it's been declared that Biden must go, and there may be a chance at a double play here, because then we can claim to be consistent. Right. We got to get him. And he's and we don't want him running next time anyway. He, he has no value now. He must go. He, he's... Yeah. He's, he, they needed him when they were mad. Yep. They don't need him now. You know how someone becomes an asset, then they become a detriment? Yeah. yeah. Basically push you out of the back of the plane. You're right. Yes. <laughs> Without a parachute. Thank you. All right. Top of the hour. If you leave us, have a good day. You got more. We'll come back. I want to take on this thing of this thing about me blocking uh, uh, Matt Mitchell, which is funny. And then we have a news story that may be a, a great Rick and Bubba shout out. Rick, a message in a bottle. Rick I'll come. And Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Well, now this one I don't know that way. I mean, <laughs> he, he doesn't hang out. As, Was that Jay or Tommy? I can't. Yeah, he just keeps getting pushed to the back. Yeah. Starts oh, yeah. her day each day at five thirty, uh, with prayer time. I bet. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lord right, help me. 
writes a to-do list before homeschooling the children who learn math, science, languages, history, and art. On top of their schoolwork, the kids uh, who are old enough attend at least one sports club. In total, they attend 88 different sports practices a week. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. So she. What even, sports do they play, Rick? Does it say? Bubba, I don't. It doesn't mention tennis. No, I just wondered what. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you see here. You see a lifeline that never stops. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Keep them coming. So well, good. if you locked into that family, they got good players. You do. Uh, well, look, don't laugh. I mean that that does exist. No, I, we have it. Yeah. We have it at our school. We've got. Uh, I think several. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got those families too. We got we got one you can count on. <laughs> uh, so uh, so anyway, so there you go. That's something, yeah, but but you know it. what, it kind of goes back to you know when you when you decide <laughs> yeah. to do this and, and any if you ever talk to any parents that have lots and lots of kids and I'm talking about like beyond, you know I, I thought I had a lot because I had five I mean yeah. the, the, these people laugh at that you know uh-huh. oh, but yeah. what I'm saying is they they say that when you talk about it never fails if you meet these really large families they're always incredibly organized and well behaved you know why they there is be. no other option right. Yeah. If they're not organized and oh. well behaved, you can't function no, with, that, no. with those kind of numbers. Mm-hmm. You know. Now look, your, your your factor of having a few that go rogue is high. We know that. Yeah. But but uh, right, they had all them duggers in here. Oh yeah. Oh good gracious, yeah. yeah. A lot of duggers. <laughs> a lot you, of, you know, as and a, they, they didn't even bring them all. We, we just had a bowl couple. You can't. If you're all the, the youth boys coach, had ties on. Yeah, if you're the youth coach to one of these Weird. kids, though, you don't have to worry about a helicopter parent leaning up on the fence because oh, no. you they know they're time. just dropping slow. Yeah. You know, just slowing down enough for them to jump out <laughs> yeah. and go into the next. <laughs> one. True that bus. Uh-huh. Yeah, my mama didn't have a three kid, and she wouldn't stay for a practice. No, this, they they don't have time to stay for a practice. Uh-uh. Good night. Look at that bus. How about our generation of parents? These parents that stay for practice, they just kind of tilt their head and go, what, what are they doing in practice? No, no. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't, don't they have something they could be doing, like going by the grocery store, getting dinner ready? Um, all right, bottom of the hour. Uh, you got you were, guys were telling me, this reminds me of Newman uh, on Seinfeld. Do you remember – the famous Seinfeld episode. You and I talked yeah. about it just a few days ago. Yeah, yeah. where uh, Jerry had a storage unit, which storage, if you live in New York, is is, is gold, and everybody has it at, at remote locations, you know. And he was splitting a storage unit with Kramer, and Kramer needed to get something out, so Jerry carried him over there, and they opened the door, and bags of mail start falling out. Right. And, and Jerry's like, well, what is this? And Kramer says, well, I rented part of my half to Newman, who is the post office, the postal worker. Right. And apparently he had been stashing mailbags in there that he couldn't get delivered. Yeah, and you and I were laughing because, you know, Newman would do that crazed look saying the mail never stops. Right, Jerry. it just keeps coming. And then right. do you remember the time that Jerry ended up delivering his mail and did too good a job? Well, he and- wanted to get rid of that backlog, so he started delivering the mail. To, he thought he was helping him catch up. Well, he was delivering on Sunday, so people knew something was up because the mail does not come on Sunday. Right. And then Newman got in trouble because he was so efficient. Then he got in trouble with his supervisors because they wanted Newman to do a better job now to keep up those numbers or something to that effect. But it, it was, you know. He set the but, standard too high. Newman yeah. was like, you've, done, yeah. you've gone too far. Well, it looks like now we're in the real world, and we have a U.S. Postal Service mail carrier who's accused of paying a man to throw away 11,000 pieces of mail Mm. and hiding another 6,000 in his home. That's a lot. That's a lot of mail, guys. That's a lot of people didn't get their stuff. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you got to love. Christopher Block, 39. Do you love his comment? (laughs) Looks like I'm going to jail. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yep, I believe they got it. bud. Yes, Chris, I think you probably are. Wow. Y'all realize that tampering with the mail is a felony. Well, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, but Rick, this we've had this story before. This is not the first one. Yeah, it's actually common. Well, it's not common. I mean, Greg, exactly. don't say that. Uh, we you know, we had know, another one a less than a year ago. It yeah. was less yeah. than a year well, ago. We had you know this the old joke. People say the checks in the mail, and you, you never get it. And yeah, yeah. But maybe sometimes it was. You know, <laughs> yeah. and now it's in yeah. the woods mm-hmm. <laughs> somewhere. The mail but, never... but the guy was he, the guy he he gave this to was supposed to destroy. He was supposed to burn it or something, yeah, right? He, he did. Yeah, but why do he have another six thousand in his house? Or he could run room. You know what you don't want in the U.S. Postal That's Service? A lot of mail. Someone who's a hoarder. No, you don't. No, no you, you don't. Do you don't no, want. You're talking about feed the beast. Hey, all the mail just keeps coming. 
Mm. It just keeps coming. And eighty percent of it's junk. I mean, yeah. oh, isn't it though? I asked this morning, is there a do not mail list like there's a do not call list? That's well, the one. do not call list doesn't work. No, you're right. Apparently that one's not. Out. Boy, they're calling my cell phone weird numbers, too. And, Rick, I never numbers. had that problem till you mentioned it on the air. And the next day, I'm I started sorry. getting phone calls. Sorry, that's, right. that's Siri. Sorry. That's clearly Siri. There and I'm is. still getting this where people call and go, did you just call this number? And I go, no. Well, your number's up. I said, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, we went I didn't that. call you. They somehow. Look, like, I have, have a rule. If you're not in my phone, I don't answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Text me and tell me who you are and what you need. I'll my, call you back. Mine is. I'm not opposed to talking. I'm just not yeah. going to take that chance. Well, I let it go to voicemail. And then if I listen to the voicemail, I go, oh, yeah, that's so, so-and-so. I have to change his number or that's somebody I've been trying to get, you there know, you some, something business-wise or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or something, something. Right. Yeah. right. And then or but, somebody but see, I want y'all to yeah. think about how bad, <laughs> bad it is that these telemarketers are taking these numbers, local numbers, and using them so you think it's somebody local calling you. Yeah. Six minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba Show. Yeah, let's go. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler. All here today. As we do another hour together, welcome back, Bill Bubba Bus. Rick, glad to be here. Thank all of you. We only ask for five hours each and every day. All right, so this is, we'll start a little session uh, to start this hour uh, called Rick and Bubba Shoutouts, okay? Uh, and they come in all forms and fashion. So, uh, had a guy from Troy call earlier. Don't know if it's the same guy. Uh, and then we, we had an email yesterday from a guy, uh, Kyle. And he says, hey, man, I got to know the backstory on this tomorrow, guys. Well, come hey, on, guys. yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> there is a – would you say he's a comedian? What would you say he is? What is this guy? Uh, you talking about not, not Cassio, not, not but Cassio. The, other, the ostrich. You're right. Yeah, I, I think he's a comedian. And so, puts out some really good so stuff. So keep in mind, before, we, ostrich, before we go any further <laughs> – Cassio Kid's real name is Matt Mitchell. Mm -hmm. He's now a stand-up comic. Uh, He does a podcast about pro wrestling, I think, with Ric Flair. Does you still use Matt Mitchell? Yeah, I think he does, doesn't he? I don't know. He's got all kinds of He's got all kinds of names. Cassio's in there. Yeah, (laughs) and and anyway, and and then uh, then he does a a morning show as well with with one of our our favorite radio legends. So, uh, Rick, he classifies himself as a comedian. I just followed him from the Rick and Bubba account, show him a little love. Mm Mm-hmm. He says, comedian, sometimes funny, always hungry. This is our kind of guy. No, I've, I've always Evidently thought this. not. I, I always thought this guy was <laughs> was lady, funny. I, I have no issue with <laughs> the Matt Mitchell that isn't Cassio. I, I so, thought they were the same person for a long time. So, Bubba. Bubba. Wow. I did. I did. Wow. I did, too. I did, too. I, I did. You thought see, Cassio this, Kid was the ostrich. See, this thing, yeah, Cassio, I did. See, I did. This thing no. Cassio has with the beard and the bald yeah, head up see, there, yeah. that's a whole different name. It's <laughs> like... Really? He, yeah. Is he created a character I, or something? Because yeah, you know he's big into wrestling. Yes, he is. He has a podcast now. But yeah, anyway, with, uh, Fla- oh, anyway, here's the point: This Matt Mitchell must be asked if he's Cassio enough to do what he's done here. Yeah. That's a good so, point. Yeah. So, so he has put and, Cassio Kid's picture up and says, "Different, but also funny guy." And he said, "Everybody keeps asking me if I'm the Matt Mitchell from the Rick and Bubba show." And look at the bottom: Rick actually doesn't like me. He has me blocked on Twitter. Dang, Rick. Right? Come well, on, Rick. Well, wow, I, Rick. So I, what do you do to I'm sorry. Now, sorry, I, Matt. I, so, let me say this, ostrich man. Uh, you went with ostrich man? It, didn't he say something about an ostrich? It's Alabama ostrich. Yeah, Alabama I've never ostrich. I've seen this guy. What <laughs> I'm saying Play is. Nice, Rick. What, no, no. No, what I meant was because I now have to identify if I say Matt Mitchell, they may think I'm talking about Cassio. Yeah. I'm sorry y'all you have. Talking this, about Dirty Mouth? Uh, I'm sorry y'all have the same names. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. It did confuse me in yeah. the beginning. I Matt Murphy. I really did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I really did think that the Matt Mitchell, when I saw Matt Mitchell, I too thought it was Cassio until I started watching his videos and I said, oh, it's a different guy. But in the beginning, I saw a bearded cartoon feature, Matt Mitchell. Our Matt, our, our Matt Mitchell looks very similar. Yeah. But t- back to me blocking him on Twitter. You did it accidentally. If I blocked you on Twitter, it wasn't on purpose. You mean I'm, I, I'm, I might have had big fingers. Now there I, is. I tell you, I know exactly what you what what yeah, happened. I think you. you're I right. Think I was going down the same road. It now it is no. possible. That is possible. That I went to block Cassio Kid <laughs> for some of the stuff he posts. And I and I blocked the wrong Matt Mitchell. That, yeah, now that I, I no, Cassio and I have talked man. I think that's more what, like what's, yeah, what's okay. Cassio's tweet? I don't. I don't have. I don't have. I'm telling you, he's got a bunch of different ones. I have no Clone idea. Clone art or something. But when I saw Matt Mitchell, 
You know, I may have That's seen weird. something, and yeah, I'm like, and, and I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> and so I probably, I, I either accidentally block the Alabama ostrich. It's funny. Or I thought that. I was blocking Cassio Kid. It is so you funny. didn't mean to block the Alabama ostrich. I never went to block Alabama ostrich. I actually think he's pretty funny. Yeah, he is. He <laughs> yeah. is pretty funny. Yeah. I think I mean, you had the that. discussion, Rick, about we did. Cassio Kid and the fact he was going into some areas we wasn't really yeah. comfortable with, yeah. uh, you know, and I supporting talked to, him. And I talked to Cassio about that. Yeah. I, uh, because we had some people say they went to his show and they're like, wow. And, uh, and I, and he, but he did say, he said, look, I, I don't, I try not to identify too much with the show during my stand up. I understand where y'all are. We we agree or disagree on certain levels of of yuckness and all that, you know, or hey, I'm not quite there yet. I'm still, you know, kind of here and and he's and, he, and I don't think and he'll say a lot of times too, which is bad. He said if you come to see me do stand up, now I'm talking about Cassio Kid, not Ostrich. Guy. Rick, Rick and, back to Ostrich. Guy. Well, they have the same name. I got to do something to differentiate this. And and he says a lot of times because of where he is in his stand up career he can't really mandate who the warm up acts are, he said. And a lot of times even when I'm headlining the two guys in front of me will be filthy, mm-hmm. and he said. And I'm probably not where you would prefer me to be, but I'm not to their level. But but he said if you combine all that together, I could see where some listeners of the show would be like a little shocked by all this. So so with that being said, well, it's name. possible that the former Cassio kid whatever names he goes by now, it, it's possible that I went to block something he put up and I blocked the wrong guy. Do you think we should have him on the RBU podcast and that way you can apologize to him? To Ostrich guy? Yeah. I'm, look, Ostrich, I got no what problem with you. What does he do? He's a comedian, Greg. If you get on your social media some, or once some a while. It's, Twitter most, thing. it's mostly it's content Instagram. creation on social media. The stuff he does with SEC fans and, and the, the, I thought one of his funniest bits. I thought that was funny, you man. You don't have to apologize. Well, I mean, block her if you want. I know, but I, I, if, I, if, I, oh, if, I, if I blocked him for reason, I'd stand on it. What yeah. I'm saying is I actually he didn't mean to. I didn't mean to block him. We're raising on Rick. So this ain't funny, man. He needs to apologize. It's ain't funny, man. I think it's just. Yeah, bunch of do about nothing. Well, really. I'm just clarifying. If somebody's out saying, "Hey, they don't like me because Rick blocked me," I just want to know that, that if we don't like you, it's not I, the block was not yeah, intended. You didn't do that. Yeah, so I didn't you block, blocked him. I had no motivation to block you. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let y'all work it out. Block, at some point. right? Yeah. What are you gonna do next? You're gonna block three year Letterman? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, guys. Funny. Not Kenny Rogers. Not after Kenny that. Rogers is very, funny. very funny. Very ask, funny. Ask him to the farm. Y'all go fishing. Yeah. Okay. Drunk well, Albie's pretty funny too. Yeah, there's some good ones out there. All right. So now, in the second shout out, <laughs> comes from a news story, right? About about some. Yeah, guy this finding... is uh, from WLOX TV down on the uh, coast of Mississippi mm-hmm. in Biloxi. Uh, a story about a message in a bottle, and it uh, somebody had sent it to us. And Please, get, Greg, you're not ready for why. this. You're you'll not ready why. for this. You're not ready for this. Discovery while fishing on the Pearl River. This discovery dates back to 1983. Lauren Martinez has more on the story. Jeremy Ware, a retired school principal, has collected antiques as a hobby on his boating trips for as long as he can remember. But never in a million years did he expect to run across a bottle with a message inside, dating back four decades. I was out on the river. Uh, One of my hobbies is is collecting driftwood, occasionally old bottles. If I see an interesting bottle and it's out on the pearl, I mean a big one too. New logo. Occasionally bring them home. On Monday, Jeremy headed that's, north on the Pearl that's, River that's toward Bogalusa. Right that's when he came across the mysterious bottle. Got the bottle home <laughs> and and looked at it, and there kind of washed the mud off of it, and there was something in it. And I looked at it initially, and I thought it was just trash. I noticed there was a little baggie, a little plastic baggie, and it had uh, it looked like a maybe a calendar out of maybe like somebody's planner. And it was dated 1983. Ware says That's the bottle enough. instantly caught his attention out on the water. He said the bottle had a more distinct shape opposed to others he's collected. Well, it was an odd <laughs> bottle. It had uh, the the stop. It had a stopper on it with a a metal oh, clamp holding it on. The old uh, kind of an antique sort of of clamp. 
Ware worked with his daughter to contact that, that, the sender. That, that's a, that's oh, a, that's a, found that's the sender. A, let me tell you, that's a uh, that's a shout out to Beat the Band, right? Yeah, there. that's yeah. a good I mean, one, that, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. It's very good. Much. The logo looks real good. <laughs> it does. Uh, he uh, he wore it calmly. Didn't try to bring attention it's to clean. it. It's yeah, clean. It's very clean. See yeah. what a clean logo. Yeah, good thing you wasn't on Twitter. Uh, it really it really hops out at you. Sadly, I blocked him on Twitter. Yeah, but the Jeremy Ware, great job. That was in my attempt to block Jim the Sign Man, and I apparently. But no. I'm just kidding. It's just Buddy, it's fun. I, I did y'all, let me ask you fun. this. Did you, did you ever throw bottles. bottles with a message in it? I did not, no. but I know you did. You yeah, told did. me this. I did as a kid. You, you're sure telling, you know Bubba put a message in a bottle. What did it say? Oh, we did, did it say? several times. What did Bubba, it say? what did it say? Uh, you know, it, it dated it and said where it was put in, and if you find it, you know, call this number or something. Uh, no, you sent balloons out too, I bet. Oh, yes, absolutely. I've launched a lot of balloons. <laughs> the messages on them. We go phone calls next. Eight, and I see a lot of them now while I'm out hunting. Eight, other I do people too. have lost. I do too. Eight, six, 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 we be big. All ten lines available. Let's talk to you right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Well, think about all the problems with that. Like, according to what certain kinds of lines of work you would be in. So now somebody sees what they think is you calling them, but it's not. Right. Well, they call you back, but then there's this conversation could go to where they now know whose number it is. Yeah, yeah, and, you're and right. Maybe you're the kind of person that said, "I really would like to decide who has my number and who mm-hmm. doesn't." And now somebody says, "Oh, this will be convenient." Now I got the doctor's cell phone or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, no, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah, it's just all part of the hack because you know your phone gets a data stream and so many numbers are this, so many is that, and so on, and they can manipulate that number to show that it's somebody who's not calling. So it's it's a mess. Well, I mean, there's a lot of similarities because the mail really has been doing for a while the same thing that we just talked about yesterday with Zuckerberg's review and all these ways where people, if you ever order anything online, and we have ordered things online because it's gotten efficient and sometimes yeah. cost effective and whatever, <laughs> but if you do that, here come the catalogs. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. and your mailbox just gets jammed yeah. with, with catalogs galore. I bet, I bet you in a week, with zero exaggeration, I get twenty five catalogs. Yeah, I get four a day. Easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. For something. Yeah. I don't get that quite many, but I get a bunch. I mean Eddie gets a bunch. Four a day is a lot. Oh, I average yeah, absolutely Crazy. four a day. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Easy. See, and it goes it probably goes straight to the trash. It does. Yeah, we need to put our trash can next to the mailbox, save a step. <laughs> well, what, right. what it is, is what, well, here's what happens. What happens is, just like we just talked about yesterday, it's just the mail version. Yeah, You don't just get catalogs from the people you actually ordered from. Mm-mm. The people right. you order from let people know you like to order things online, and then mm-hmm. other companies start trying to sell. You mean they sell mm-hmm. your information? Rick? You got to be kidding I'm me! I'm afraid they do. Our Who phone, our saw phones that are, coming? Our phones are listening to us right now. They are. My phone must be bored to tears. Yeah, I know. Yeah, mine, mine's, uh, mine's crying over here. Mine keeps saying, "Are you gonna do anything other and mix it up one day?" Bubba, I guarantee <laughs> you're gonna start seeing ice cream ads on the websites you go to. <laughs> We mentioned it this hour, you know, a lot of you that uh, listen to the Rick and Bubba show, and we should do thank you for that, started calling us. Guys, have you all seen Funny Man? Have you seen him? Have you seen the videos? And we were like, no, man, we, we haven't. And then we watched them, and uh, very fun. Johnson, and he's here. Hello. Welcome, hey, Jermaine. Welcome, Jermaine. Doing? It's Richard, finally happened. Bubbert. How are you guys doing? Everybody <laughs> <laughs> good? Uh, well, here it is. It finally happened. Yeah, man. I, I finally got here. I feel uh, part of the team here, coming yeah. from uh, Radio in Birmingham. Oh, so yeah. You guys have been carrying the torch for a while. Congratulations on everything. Well, as you know, uh, it is a modern medical miracle. Uh, for, for, for any show and radio to stay on this long. Yeah, yeah. my hairline is a modern medical miracle also. Yeah. That's why I'm wearing this hat today. Uh, oh, really? It hit you early? Oh, real early, man. I woke up, my hair just started cutting itself one day. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, c- could you say that you're relatively new at this game? I mean, and when I say that, a lot of times you think somebody, has uh, has just started, and you find out they actually been grinding for a while. So, how yeah. long have you been been out there trying to be heard and and 
you know, banging on your craft, trying to get better. How long? This is my 13th year. See? Started August 25th, Overnight 2005. Sensation. Overnight sensation. I know, right? <laughs> it just, you know, things just start clicking in 2015. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's been a grind just trying stuff out, just seeing what works for me, what works for the audience, and the audience changed so much. I haven't changed a lot, but the audience changed. You, you know, you got to learn what to say, how to say it, who to say it to. What planet you can say it on? It's a lot of rules <laughs> yeah. to comedy right now. So, so how old are you? Huh? Well, I mean, you're not a woman. I can Tw- ask you how old you are. <laughs> T- twenty-five. Okay, let's just say between twenty-five and sixty-five. Okay. You're sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, the reason why I ask is I've realized what you might have heard us talking the, the, uh, this hour right. that I don't realize how old I am. And right, so I'll right. throw out phrases. See, I things. think I'm thirty, but I'm not. And some right. of the younger people that listen to us or they don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, I met a guy yesterday that didn't know who Larry Zonka was. Oh, I, I wow. mean, I mean, I was like, so you know, Larry Zonka, am, am, am yeah, I, the football player. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't see him play, but I know the am name. Am I that old that the, the guy didn't know? Who, I mean, <laughs> this is the guy I was hanging out with, and I was like, you don't know who Larry Zonka? And I thought, so that that's the point. If you're doing what we're doing, you said it. Yeah, gotcha. you, you know, you don't want to leave who you are, but you you can say things and think you have this hilarious story. <laughs> Yeah, and then nobody gets. I will tell you what, I'm in, I'm in my thirties, and the hardest part for me is dressing age appropriate. Oh yeah, I don't yes. know. Should yeah. I look more? What do you mean more, by that? Yeah, do I should I look more? Twenty one minutes now past the hour. Rick and Bubba's show, all ten lines available, and here we go. Uh, and you can join us uh, right now. 30 seconds a pop, largest number of people, shortest amount of time. And we'll roll through it. You can uh, talk about things you've already heard today. Uh, you can bring up a new topic. You can ask a question. You can bring information to the table. Uh, today, Bubba and I uh, are planning uh, to record a brand new edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Look for that coming out again this weekend. Usually publishes on Saturday, wherever you get podcasts. And after the interview is done, we'll tell you a little more about it on tomorrow's program to prepare you uh, for uh, looking for it this weekend. Uh, so uh, let's start with Tom. Tom's out of Jasper, Alabama. If you want to join us, Helmsy's on the phones right now. You certainly can. Uh, there's a line available for you. And because of the phone troll format, which features everybody's friend, the buzzer, uh, we will move through the calls a little quicker, and that'll let you uh, give you an opportunity to get on sooner. So uh, fire up your phones at 866-WE-BE-BIG, and let's get you in line and hear what you have to say today. Tom, you'll get us started. Jasper, Alabama, go ahead. Hey, Rick. The uh, message you sent out from your son, that's amazing, very encouraging. Thank but you. the note that was found in the bottle, I need that to say either someone help daddy or my all-time favorite, I've never been no work. <laughs> we, we really should take that message and, and send it out and just see if somebody finds it. Uh, the, uh, it we, the, when, when Bubba and I were you know trying to send out coded message and stuff like that, when Kelly Vanilla was trying to learn English, <laughs> and we were claiming we had written clues in there on the bathroom, and all he had to do was go in there and look for it. Oh, God. Golly, that was such I couldn't good breathe. One. Could not no, breathe. No, no, no. I thought was, I was going to pass out. It was one of those opportunities when you say Ooh. to yourself, uh, we may all go to jail today, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a a windfall for the show. Yeah, yeah it's going to be funny. Yeah, it's going to be funny. Um, did you see also uh, Pennsylvania governor? Did yeah. you see this? Yeah, it, I saw that. Is is this going to make anybody feel better about the state of Pennsylvania? And don't don't miss <clears throat> the state of Pennsylvania just voted for I, I don't even know what to call the the person they voted instead of Doctor <laughs> Oz. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is not going to help with the credibility. So the governor of Pennsylvania is now going to remove college degree requirements for most state jobs. Uh, there may be a logical reason for this, Rick. I know in the headline you think, it, it well, feels, what, what's it, the deal here? It, it feels, That's going to change the job description of about 65,000 <laughs> state jobs. One of the reasons that I heard that they were doing this was that they can't fill the jobs. Yeah, I did. They cannot get enough applicants in that qualify, so they're lowering the standards to try to fill the jobs. And look, you don't, I mean, why why they had that in there to begin with, I don't know. Uh, If it is directly related to the job you're doing, okay, I could see that as a prerequisite, but... Most of the time, if you can do the job or you have the qualifications, what difference does it make? Right? Well, there was a yeah. time 
and, and Pennsylvania would be in this part of the political landscape, not everybody, but a lot, as we found out, not enough, uh, on the other, on the opposing view. But there was a reason they did that, because it glorified the universities, which, of course, is some of their favorite indoctrination camps. Right. So they would glorify this higher education as you must have it in order to, to perform duties. Those without it are considered to be right. inferior people. But now they've realized we can't get anybody to fill the job, so all of a sudden they've dropped all that. Yeah, it, it's not. It's really not critical to it. They said that this will mean about 92% of all government state jobs in Pennsylvania yep. uh, or about 65,000 positions can now be available to people without a four-year degree. Yep. Um, now, there's still about 8% of them does require that, depending on what it is, and I assume that's some of the more – High tech jobs, maybe that they have, or doctors, or you know, state uh, uh, auditors, or something. I don't know, but anyway, ninety two percent of them will be opened up. I, I don't, I don't really see that being a, as big a story as what some people have tried to make it today. No, I find it funny that somebody as liberal as Pennsylvania has admitted that people can do the job without these educations. <laughs> they keep telling everybody yet, and that a college degree has become more and more worthless. Uh, so uh, another story today, and unfortunately, Bubba, these stories draw our attention more than they did in the past. The 12 lifestyle factors which raise risk of dementia. Mm. Uh, experts claim hundreds of thousands of cases, cases could be avoided if people did these things. Uh, and they have the 12 here. Now, they have all this in here on how they've done the research and how they're supporting this and and all of that. I want, I'll save you that. Let's do it the way Rick and Bubba prefer. Let's just get to the list. Yeah, give me so, the list. So here is the list, 12 steps to cut mm-hmm. your risk of dementia, getting at least seven hours of sleep a night. Wow. Mm. Uh, Greg, I'm so sorry. Mm. I'm so sorry. Um <laughs> I am now getting more sleep because of this uh, new commitment this year that Sherry for this year is going to get up with me every morning. And uh, and so what I, Sherry is in the list of people, and it says we all do, but y'all know what I mean by this. Some people can operate on less sleep than others can. It doesn't mean anything other than some can, some can't. Some mm-hmm. need it, some don't. Uh, but it, we all need it for our health, mm-hmm. you know, as far as functioning. So what I've discovered is Sherry, to your Sherry must have eight. She must have eight. Uh-huh. So what's happened, since she's getting up with me, she starts wrapping us up like we're going to bed at 730. And I'm like, baby, I, I'm not going to bed at 730. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just not. I mean, well, I mean, uh, uh, but I want you to. Yeah, but baby, 730, I'm not even getting any time away from work now. I'm coming home from work if I have a long day and eating dinner with you and then going to bed. I mean, <laughs> tell me we're not 85 yet. And, and so um, so anyway, but she has to have it. And she said, well, I'm done. I'm Now my body's saying if I'm going to get my eight, yeah. we got to get in the bed. So anyway, but I will tell you this to this, uh, to this story. I sure do feel good now that I'm getting more sleep. Yeah, mm-hmm. it makes yeah, a difference. It does yeah. make a difference. All right, so the next one. <laughs> we need to challenge our brains on a normal basis. I would like to think this show does that, but it, yeah. some days I don't think it does. Yeah. Well, some days the show wins. Right. So you, th- this is, Greg, you and I, remember Miss Mac? Yeah. So Ms. we Mac used to do multiplication There tables. used to be a, old. an older lady that lived down there by my grandparents who had a little cabin on the, the Black Warrior River. And Miss Mac, and she lived to be, good gracious, she, her mind was as sharp as a tack. She said she did her multiplication tables every day. And just keep Everybody that mind keep working. That mind keep sharp. that mind working. Hmm. Keep it working. So the next one is looking after mental well-being. Now, I need more specifics on yeah, that. Yeah, what does that mean? What does that mean, looking after mental well-being? Well, yeah, if I don't want to get dementia, I probably want to be mentally well. Does it say get a pet in there anywhere? Uh, I hope not. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. Like having a good old dog helps you out. I don't see that in here, but, uh, but you know, it might help you not to be lonely. I'm not sure what it will do Bang. for dementia. Unless you're trying to figure out what to do with it, which then works the mind. Yeah, it does. Uh, so I, I may be quite mentally healthy the more I look at mine. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they mean by that particular one. So let's move on to the next Maybe one. Maybe having like friends or something. Yeah. That, that means get a dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Staying socially active. Yeah. Meaning, you know, don't don't be don't be a recluse. Don't be a hermit. Get, get out, out there. Get out there and grip visit with oh, people. Oh. Uh oh. Which means oh. you're taking care of yourself and having to get you know, cleaned up and dressed right. and go somewhere. Or sure. in your case, be friends with dogs. Right. Uh, so uh, hang out with dogs. so right. this this next yeah. one, this next one hurts, hurts. Look after your hearing. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. If you I've can't seen that. hear it, I've seen that. You. No, yeah, I've seen I've that. I've watched a lot of people I love go downhill once their hearing went bad. Do yeah. what now? You see there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next one. Mm. Thank you, Field of Greens. Eating a balanced diet. Yeah. No. Eating the right foods that your body needs to perform at peak performance. The other, staying physically active. Do mm-hmm. not be sedentary. Mm. Be moving. Very unhealthy. Uh, Very. Uh, Dang it. Yeah, got to move around a little bit. Quit smoking. Dang. <laughs> I won't say it, Speedy, because well, that's I'm easy. I'm waiting. Everybody's no, looking. No, that's easy. I'm not going to do that to you. That's old right there. That's yeah, old that's, stuff. That never was true. Uh, no, thank you, you Yeah, and then uh, I don't enough, know what it is. The rest teenage. of them, and we'll come back, <laughs> drinking responsibly, keeping a healthy level of cholesterol, uh-huh. maintaining healthy blood pressure, Ooh. and managing diabetes as much as you possibly can. Well, you okay how, many, there? how many was on that list? I got a few on this list. Uh, eight out of 12 ain't bad. Yeah, ain't <laughs> bad, bud. I'm good. weak. <laughs> Is that how many they're against you? <laughs> or, no, <laughs> eight good. No, eight good. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Grown or more toward my college age? I don't know. So I wear like. <laughs> Tuxedos and Jordans, man, is weird. I don't know where I'm at as far as dress right now. Well, for this show, you dress perfect today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mixed it all up. Comfort. I got Jordans yeah. on my feet, uh, kind of slim jeans, camo on the head, and bama on the chest. I can't lose. You know what you, you, you know what you are right now? You're a roll tide, baby. Roll tide. I mean, you got That's it all it. covered. I mean, I might have just come out of the woods. I'm going to the game. Well, you're the only <laughs> right, guy right, with skinny right. jeans on in here. Yeah, now I'll skinny jeans. That. That's right. But I'm not skinny. I know that's the that's what's so sad about it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, still, know, you still look young enough to pull that off. Yeah, right? thank you. Thank so you, you don't look worried. Yeah. You're not that youth pastor that hadn't learned yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, Everybody's got that pastor, Craig. It's usually named Craig. <laughs> <laughs> youth pastor Craig. That's him. At every church, there's a Craig. <laughs> that's so true. Now we fa- we heard about you as first that got our audience going is right. And and we've had and and we've even talked about this and people around the country. Don't they think they may understand the Auburn Alabama thing? They think oh, they do, no. but as Bo Jackson no. said in the ESPN special, you, yeah. it's just tip of the iceberg. Well, don't quote Bo. I can't. I can't yeah. quote him completely. Yeah. But <laughs> but but when 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 you try to be funny mm-hmm. about Auburn Alabama fans, it's almost impossible right. to, to exaggerate. exaggerate it. Yeah, because yeah. everything that we could come up with really happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't think people realize it is all day here in the state. Like it will decide that. Logo that you have on the back of your car will decide if you get over in traffic or not. Like, mm-hmm. it's really that yeah. petty and serious <laughs> all day, every day here. You cannot describe it. You just have to live here. And But it is comedy gold. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and and you have you have mined some of that with some of the videos, and people yeah. start calling and say, y'all got to see this video. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, and I don't know whether it works on what we're doing right now, but if you, yeah. you go see them where you actually play the role of a typical Alabama fan watching a game. That, no, it's not playing a role. That's all me. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never write a script for any of the videos. Whatever I think while watching the game, that's what I say. And from that has come catchphrases and – over 2 million people a week during football season watching, and I didn't see that coming. Wait a minute. You just turn yeah. on the camera and just watch the game and say what you would normally say? That's it. That's it. Well, That's you know, that is. makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. 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 I thought to myself, yeah. man, he's got this down. Oh, well, well, no. Because no, that's who he is. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, no. That is that is all me. That's all Bama fans, man. And then I'll say something on a video like, go on, Jalen. And then I come out the house and everybody's saying what I said. Like young, old, black, white, the clan, everybody's saying what I said. And I'm like, I didn't know y'all were watching. I had no idea. But that is awesome that they follow like they do. You, sometimes you have a, a surprising audience. Right. right, right. <laughs> but, well, really, but, when you get down to it, everybody does like to laugh. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, even yeah, the clan. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think it, it, the other part of it is come along at such a great time because we were divided about everything. Okay. So with this, you know, me just sitting on the couch, and as the, the main point of the shows is to everybody's included. You know, it, it may look like an Alabama show, but we get all kind of fan base. There's Auburn, Georgia, Florida, Notre Dame. Everybody comes to the shows. There's no cursing at the shows, no sexual in your window. There's nothing <laughs> nothing like that at the show. So it's just fun for the entire family. You could bring a group 
of church members to the show. Just have a good time. Well, that, that's the first thing we heard. They were like, "Man, he's clean," and well, you know. And again, I, I, we're not we're we're Christians, but we're not prudes. But mm-hmm. but when people just try to be nasty, just to be nasty for a right. shock factor, or whatever. To me, that just I, I don't. Know, you, you, at some point, you have, you kind of outgrow that, and you're like, what? What? I mean, yeah, it's, it's just not me. Especially if it's yeah. not necessary. That's right. Just so be you, who you are. Did you grow up in church too? Oh, you I, got a my, background. Look, my dad is the super conservative. He's got the trifecta: <laughs> <laughs> military, pastor, country boy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You look, love you, God first, love your country, work for everything you get. That's my dad. And then my mom, bless her heart, she was. On the other side of things, <laughs> so that's where the gifts came from. But yeah, right. yeah, so the, gro- growing up in the church, bro, you you see a lot, and you start realizing like the similarities between the club and the church. What? <laughs> the club and the church? <laughs> Seriously, like that chameleon? That's a shot. Come on now, <laughs> that's a shot glass. I know a shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, won't get invited back for that one. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's the one. That's the one. No, I, I saw you going. I was like, well, I, I, he, I'd like to see where we're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> it is just similarities, you know, like uh, club wants $10, church wants 10%. <laughs> <laughs> club lets out about 2 o'clock. Amen. See, there you go. <laughs> Thirty-five minutes past the hour. Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us. All right. So security is an issue these days. Um, we wish it wasn't. We do wish we still lived in an America where you could leave your doors unlocked, not anything to worry about. That America has packed it on up and left. So, uh, so anyway, uh, simply say Bubba.com. It's good for your home. It's good for if you have, you know. Uh, uh, another home somewhere that you go to, the lake, uh, the beach, the mountains, or if you, you know, fortunate enough for that, or uh, maybe it's your office you're looking to secure. Whatever it is, simply say Bubba.com uh, can do the job. This is the latest in technology. This is the best of the best. Uh, so customizable. You install it yourself. You don't have any places in your property where you're like, oh, I wish I had a sensor there. Um, you know, I was limited to this boilerplate security system. I sat around all day waiting for somebody to install it. They're charging me an arm and a leg to monitor. None of that. All that's gone. Uh, we're using Wi-Fi. You you take care of yourself. It also alerts you of other hazards, fire, flooding, you know, this frozen pop thing that we had to deal with during the Arctic blast, uh, uh, or as uh, Al Gore calls it, Arctic bomb. Uh, so anyway... <laughs> <laughs> you can use their app to get, be in control of the system, and you can let somebody in if you went off and you set it and somebody needed to go by your house and get something or one of your family members, you can do that. Uh, it has the video verification, so uh, law enforcement says, ah, something is going on. Uh, and they monitor you 24-7 with professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. So make a move right now to simplysafebubba.com and get 40% off any new system. SimplySafeBubba.com. Also find that at RickandBubba.com under the sponsors. All right, so Bubba, I have great news for you. <laughs> I, ha- I have great, great news for you. Are you ready? Share great I don't, news. I am prepared to I don't receive want, it. Hey, Greg, move a little bit because he could, in elation, throw his hands okay, out. Let me get I out am there. prepared for great news. Bring it on. Greg, Bring stand it. by for a hallelujah. Okay. General manager expects Kirk Cousins to be a Viking next year. <laughs> oh, Bubba was hoping for that. <laughs> okay. Woo! All right. So well, uh, I think his. Uh, 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 doesn't he? He already had one more season left, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Two. When the Minnesota hey. Vikings signed Kirk Cousins to a contract extension last spring, yeah. the unspoken expectation was that he would remain the team's quarterback through at least the 2023 season, and the general manager, no way I pronounce that name, yeah. uh, says some people were uncertain about Cousins, who's going to turn 35 in August, uh, whether he'll get a short-term extension. And the GM says, I believe, all I'm going to tell you is I think he'll return next year for 2023. He, Let me tell you this, he's only going to get $30 million in cash, Okay. Uh, and now he has to count thirty six point two five million against the team's salary. That, that's right. Mm-hmm. So now I'm not sure why that is. And but, I, I, uh, I I knew that you would be standing by, ready to celebrate the return uh, of Kirk Cousins. You know, to the Vikings. The, the, I, I will say this, Rick. And I, 
I hear uh, from everybody that I hear, Kirk Carson. Excuse me? Kirk Cousins is a fine, upstanding man. Uh, of course. Um, Pretty good quarterback. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. and you know what? I'll leave it to the experts that run the Minnesota Vikings to make their choices how to manage that club. They've done such a darn good job for 57 years. Right. Uh, I think we'll just let them uh, do what they need to do. There you go. <laughs> go Vikes. Hi, Bubba. Skull. Mm-hmm. Skull, mm-hmm. baby. <laughs> I know I'm not. I know I'm talking to a distru- disgruntled fan. Don't do this. So, so don't I'm do not, this I won't even. Please start. don't. Are you going to start doing Kirk Cousins? I'm not. Hey, not crazy. I won't do that. I'm only going to hurt you. Not going to help him. Right. It's not going to hurt. I'm not going to be. I'm he not a he disgruntled play fan. De- he didn't play defense. Oh, that year. there we go again. Well, he didn't. He didn't give up 31. But the I defense. He was 31 for 39. I, I there hate you to go. say this. I hate to say this. The offense does play defense because if they stay on the field, the other team can't get the ball. Gosh, it's yeah, I'm telling you, you heard it. I know. Look, Greg's got the craziest it's, stat ever. I can't find it. You know what he's doing? He's, he's getting I, I read it. This ain't your family yeah, over yeah, here, the Vikings. I know. I'm just trying to help him. You get in those personal stuff. He's been with them since he's a kid. I think he's I have no fear. I have no fear of having to miss the Super Bowl with the Vikings in it. I just think he's mad at the wrong person. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at. I just don't think he likes him. Hey, great job, Mr. It's a sum about Kirks. There's something. I like Herb Street either. I know. Hey. Let me tell you, great job, Minnesota. Great mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. You've 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 once again Look shown that you don't get to the Super Bowl and win. It. So you can't get it it's too soon. I know. I know. What is the it. answer, Bubba? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I don't know. I'm I don't work for the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not a GM or a coach, so I'll just leave it to the pros who know better. <laughs> <laughs> leave it to them. What are you reading, Bubba? <laughs> it's like he's got his script. <laughs> It's like the GM uh, has handed him a script. Yeah, yeah. Bubba, it is. I, they're doing a great job. I, they all deserve a raise. Is uh, this that uh, robot again, B- Bubba? Yeah. Other than you, give look- them a raise, <laughs> <laughs> Bubba. I don't think you're going to out this. in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> haven't sniffed the conference championship, and I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look, there's a lot of it, there's some relief being a Vikings fan because you know you're not going to have to worry about going to the Super Bowl or a championship game and buying mm-hmm. tickets, mm-hmm. you know, all that. You can just save your money. So <laughs> when you look at uh, the only way you know this is if you picked up the story and looked at it, and I don't think the odds of that are very high. No. Do you know who hit the first three pointer? In NBA history. Yes, his name was uh I read it earlier, I forgot. Mm-hmm. Did you know before that I did? Uh his name gosh. But you didn't know that Pete till No, 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 no. No, I didn't. I <laughs> yeah. didn't. But I remember when all that came about because we were we were all following sports pretty close when that started. Chris Ford. That's right. That's it. Well, you found the story. Yeah, I did. I did. Chris I, Ford. I admit, yeah. I did. Mm-hmm. So uh, I admit it. Uh, first like three point shot made in the NBA. Yep. Dead at seventy four. And he's dead well, at seventy four. Uh, you are yep. announcing it too. Yeah, went mm-hmm. on in. Yeah. He went on. Well, in. Rick kind of announced it. Yeah, <laughs> he brought the story. Yeah, I brought it in. I, I thought it would have a little fun, you know, and, since we were piddling around in sports a little bit. Yeah. And I thought this was interesting. You know, we talked about the Dallas Cowboys having a kicking problem. Yep. They have said that their kicker, Brett, is his, is it Mar? How do you say his name? M A H E R. Yeah, I don't know. Um, will be their kicker Sunday in their matchup against San Francisco, but they have signed another kicker to the practice squad on Wednesday for insurance. <laughs> I think that's why. So do you think he'll be dressed out? And he if better Mar, be. If Mar misses another one, He's you, you got to get him out. Ain't there, no right? way I'm leaving him out there. Yeah. We're talking about extra points. I'm not talking about field goals. He misses an extra point. Ain't no way I'm leaving him in there. Well, at this, It could have cost him. At, at this level, now you're playing the 49ers, the top seed in the NFC. They're red hot. You just – if you win, you know you're going to have to play your best, and you can't play your best by missing field goals and extra points. Mm. But, but look, I, all these kickers, they, look, they have their days. They have bad days. I give them that. And, well, he had a real bad one. No, yeah, he did he. And, and, you know, Minnesota, I hate to bring oh them up again. Oh, my gosh. Uh, with mm. Daniel Carlson, traded up to get him. He had a terrible second game against the Packers. That was he missed ridiculous. like three or four field goals, huh? That was ridiculous. I heard it was And then they just cut fault. him. And then they just cut him. They blame they kept Kirk Cousins. Yeah. And and then he has gone to the Raiders and had a second life and is now the all pro kicker. He yeah. is the top kicker in the NFL and uh has done great there. So everybody can have an off day. I, or you know, maybe they go through a spell that they're off. I mean, you got him all these kickers a little do you, you know in do, the head. Oh, anyway. they're, they're absolutely I found do you, a stat for Bubba okay. to make him feel better. They did set another record. The Vikings became the first team ever in either regular or Postseason to complete at least eighty percent of their passes with no turnovers or sacks and lose the game. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, how right. you, this situation has happened forty-seven times. It was forty-seven and zero until. So every game. team, think, think every about other, how every hard. other team but your team that did right. this, they're right. forty-seven and zero. Yes. Think about how hard that's you had to work. Season or playoff. You yeah. had to work to make that happen. Yeah. So eighty percent. I, I will no say this. sacks, no turnovers. No, I, I know no. nothing about the the front office of the Vikings. I do like their coach, and I think he is going to be excellent. Uh, you know, the Vikings had a great year right up to the playoffs. Uh, and the and team he came lose. from, the Rams, fell off the who face is it? of the who earth. Who is their coach? So he, uh, I can't think of his name now, but I like him. Got a lot of respect. Young guy. Yeah. He's, 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 one, he's of he's one of my favorite coaches. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite yeah. coaches. Yeah. Well, y'all got the coach. You should but, beat the Rams. He was the offensive coordinator. Oh, okay. He wasn't head coach. Right? No. Um, <laughs> but he, he's done a good job, and I think he'll do a good job over time. Bud Grant was there. Did you see him up in the stands? I did not. No. My goodness. I, I mean, what a – I mean, maybe, maybe I, know, I, know, I know your way around, Kirk Cousins. Actually, call Bud Grant and ask him how he feels about it. Oh, I, maybe I love, if he likes love, him, you would like. I him. love Bud Grant. Is it Kevin O'Connell? And Kevin O'Connell, that's it. And uh, Dan Moultrie appreciates how much I love Bud <laughs> Grant because I I've, <laughs> I've covered for him on the phone a few times. Yes. <laughs> that was kind of cool to get to talk to him. It was. We'll be right back. I met him. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. There it is between the church and the cliff. A lot of them. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so you, does your daddy laugh at that? I know your mama does. Oh, my dad lives. <laughs> he lives vicariously through my career now. Okay. Cause, oh, cause when he, yeah, when he preaches the first 10 minutes, it's stand up. <laughs> Everybody will tell you that. Like his first 10 minutes okay. is pure stand up. Oh, yeah. So he loves what I do. And he calls me every morning, 6.30 a.m., with a new joke, I'm sleep. I just leave him on speaker and I go back to bed. No. Right. So, so he so now that he knows this is your craft, he he wants to bring something to the table. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. do you get to be the example in the sermon ever? Oh, I bet. Oh, all the I've time. I've got a son. Yeah. All the, oh, he he name drops. My dad is a, a solidified name dropper. <laughs> okay. And he opens up. Yeah, my uh my son is funny man. And uh, turn with me to the book of really. <laughs> you gonna put me before Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. But that's the household I live in, man. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, we'll come back more with uh, with Jermaine, Funny Man, yeah. Johnson. So uh, the first time we saw that, we thought it was like like M A N G or something like that, and then we saw it was spelled like the state, and then we saw your name. We go, okay, now we get it. Okay. There you go. At first, I'm like, why is he? It took us a minute, but we got. It. And why is he talking about the state of Maine? That don't even make sense. <laughs> I'll, I'll break it down. Okay, right, we'll do that. We'll come back. We'll talk more with Jermaine. If you want to see him this weekend, Comedy Club Stardome, Birmingham, Alabama, go to stardome.com and grab a seat. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Um, all right, so you were telling us when we went to the break, we're talking to Jermaine Funny Main Johnson. His uh, his website's at show notes at rickandbubba.com. If you've never watched, and he's using all the stuff available now for you to have some fun, uh, you can follow him. on. Uh, we're on Facebook Live right now. You can uh, see his videos. You can find out where he's going to be appearing. As a matter of fact, this weekend, Birmingham, uh, you'll be on that wonderful Stardome stage. And oh, yeah. if uh, you want to go out and see him, uh, we've got shows 12, 13, and 14, and 15. And you can uh, you can go enjoy that at stardome.com. Uh, so you, you obviously are from Alabama, but you were going to tell us how you came up with this name that you, that you have. It was from the MySpace days, if you remember that. Oh, I yeah. forgot all about MySpace. Yeah, yeah. So all, is everybody else. Yeah, all it was <laughs> supposed to be was I uh, needed something, myspace.com backslash something. So I was like, what can I put my name in but let people know I'm a comedian also? Mm -hmm. And I chose Funny Main since my name is Jermaine. That's all it was supposed to be. And people, as I started promoting that page, people would introduce me and say, come into the stage, Funny Main. And I would get (laughs) heated, like upset. And I was like, that is not my name. But people just liked it and it stuck, and I just kept rolling with it. How about that? It was supposed to just be MySpace. I know. Well, <laughs> no, I well, and that brings up a sad story with us. The original name of this show was Rick and Bobby. Uh-huh. And, uh, but, uh, it was all a misspelling uh, thing. It was all a misspelling thing. But uh, but so that that was MySpace. I forgot all about MySpace. Yeah, well, it was fun times, man. Is MySpace will it will it will it be the beta of its era? You remember when we went? Well, to I don't know. Considering this week with uh, old Zuck, it make it make a comeback. It may make a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It was intense, bro. Choosing your top eight that was very intense. <laughs> Time, right? <laughs> a lot of divorces behind that topic. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. So it says here that you're going to Los Angeles as well. I'm looking yeah. at the tour dates. Mm-hmm. Now, how's that? How does that? How does the Los Angeles audience receive you? 
Well, I go by my Facebook analytics and where people are usually asking or where they're watching the videos. And believe it or not, a lot of people from the South that moved out there, they're just like, dude, come out here. We need some Southern fried, just football, mm-hmm. Southern comedy. And then, you know, you – you put it up, and then the ticket starts selling, and you get on a plane, and you go. There you go. <laughs> so really, I, what I'm trying to vision isn't happening. You're just calling the people that are trapped there that are like us. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah we're going to get out there. We're going to barbecue under the palm trees. We're going to make yeah. it. We're gonna... It's like a prison ministry. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely what my shows are like. <laughs> absolutely. But, yeah, it's just, it's just I cannot – Describe like how fun the shows. You really have to come to one to experience. So tell stuff. me, do you, I know it's impossible mm-hmm. to describe. First of all, and our audience always asks this. You said it's clean, so it's right, clean. Right, right, right. So am I going to hear stories about your life? Am I going absolutely? You, you do observations on what's going on in the world. Not, not talking about politics. Just mm-hmm. funny stuff people do. Things you've done. What? Yeah, I'll, I'll let people know how I kind of came up. Uh, at some point, we'll talk about some football. They'll find out about my family. I recently got engaged. We'll oh, talk congratulations. about all of that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I look so forward to marriage counseling. That's what I'm looking <laughs> for. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, they'll find out a whole lot. And, and at the end, we do like a, a Q&A. No, and we'll you don't. Some, yes, I do. I love Q&A. Oh, I love, it's, I it's love the, Q&A. It's dangerous, but it's fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was just in well, Chattanooga. Well, it keeps you from having. We're back. Ten minutes to the top. If you want to try to squeeze in a phone call before we're done today, 866-WE-BE-BIG. And, uh, Real man right there, there's a man, man. He's a man. Things you need to know. Man Church tonight. First Baptist Church, Opelika, Alabama, the I-92 WLWI market. Andrew Barbudas speaking there tonight if you're going out and you can plug into the strategy and get one of our small groups too and uh, so that's happening uh, we record another uh, edition of rick and bubba university the podcast uh, we'll put that out this weekend uh and uh, bubba you you called for uh bud grant uh we we must see him when and i don't remember how old he was here when he does this uh I don't know how many years ago this real, he's he's Way over eighty. Yeah, and and he uh, it was it was frigid in Minnesota. What, out, what out, was the temp? Two out, degrees. It was yeah, two two and a half. Look at this. And he comes out for the coin toss in a golf God. shirt with no, with sleeves. <laughs> Look at everybody else how they're dressed. Yeah, and, and the yeah. steam coming out. Yeah. I hope yeah. they show Pete Carroll. That yeah. was the funniest one. Pete Carroll. He's well, got that parka on. You can barely see his face. Yeah, Pete Carroll, on the other hand. Uh, Look at like, their, their breath coming out. Yeah, yeah. Pete Carroll was dressed like the little brother on A Christmas Story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Bud Grant's in a polo shirt. Right. Yeah. And, we, yeah. and we wish you could stand That is crazy. Is that the one they missed the field goal that uh, time? No, we do. Yes, yeah. that's when they missed the, uh, field, the chip shot. Chip for shot the for the win. Yeah. That you didn't even watch because you knew he was Or was miss. it an extra point? I can't. It was, was, it, was, it, was it was very short, whatever it yeah. was. It yeah. should have been automatic. Yeah. Because they were playing at the University of Minnesota Stadium while they were building. In there. What happened that, that you didn't go turkey hunt with Bud Grant? Scared. Did you have Did you have some con- <laughs> yes, Did you have some conflict come up? How'd you no, mess that up? That 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 event usually corresponds with spring break. You, you left You left him hanging. Yeah. I think during that time you were coaching tennis, uh-huh. and Maybe. that's what it was. Well, I think wow. you just I think left you were him still coaching. He remember. took tennis over Bud Grant. Well, I mean, he. That's I think this was back when he was. Y'all, Rick, do not talk about the other. Oh. No, this is the old. That's the old. Well, if I drop my keys, he can find them. Hey, hey, do you? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> if I need some weeding, do you remember too? Guys. He would not allow them to what have heaters doing? on the sideline. No, I know. I love <laughs> I it. Mean, it. Makes you soft. <laughs> See y'all making. You like water used to back <laughs> in the old days. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I met him that night. You. Have mm. you're out of control? I met, I met him that night. He asked me where Bubba was because y'all had interviewed him. On oh there. yeah, of course, said, Bubba. He didn't. I thought for sure he'd come see me since it's my only time going to be here. And I said, I guess he don't care. Bubba, I can't believe you didn't a turkey hunt with Bud Grant. Rick, you I could, had a commitment. I'm telling you, I think oh. somehow you could coach tennis Look every day. Legend. You can't go hunting with Bud Grant. You could at least every day. showed up at the banquet. I think he had like 
playoffs or something with hey, the kids. Calm, no. school. Calm down. I'm trying to help you out, but he, he went into coaching then. He went into coaching then. The score, the score of that was. game was ten to nine Seahawks and the and the Vikings had a. It was either chip well, shot. Did to Kirk Cousins or, play then? Because you could blame him for it. <laughs> oh, look, no. if you look, good. if you <laughs> listen, guys. Here's the thing about this footage we just watched. Bud Grant is old right there. Oh yeah, and he's still around. He's ninety five. Ninety. He's amazing. Still not wearing a jacket. Y'all want to call him? Mm-mm. Okay. In, that game, Rick, in that game, that's, the that's, Minnesota kicker, Blair Walsh, had a 27-yard field goal attempt. Greg, he's found, the, he's found left, the highlights. Hook look at, left look how with, close hey, it is. With 22 seconds look, left. Bubba, look. I know. I know. I already left the room. Bubba so claimed he got close. up and walked out of the room. It's <laughs> not even close. <laughs> look, I have a witness to it. All right, Bubba, you always you claim. How did you know that? I Bubba, said, you're I a conspiracy guy. Did he miss that on purpose? No, I think they're just helpless. <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> the disgruntled Viking fan that owns me. It, it, uh, it's very funny. <laughs> no, I'm, look I'm at the mascot. Look at the mascot. His hands are on his knees, <laughs> just looking down. Like, no, 27 no, yards. I'm a pro kicker. Look, 27 yeah. yards. 27. No, no. It's really cold, Bubba. What right, happened? Watch to the mascot. Right. Just watch the mascot during the whole kick. Number one back there. <laughs> he's gonna watch it go he up. Oh, stand. look at the fans! They're, all... They're freezing. <laughs> he's got his There's Bubba. Bubba. I wish Bubba was in that costume. <laughs> what happened? Hey, the, uh, I think that's Buck against Grant. Atlanta that time to go to the Super Bowl. Same thing. Wasn't it somebody? Yeah, I can't they remember. A, he, and they hadn't missed a field goal all year. <laughs> yeah, they said Pat it. Summer all even says he hadn't missed all year. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. This is Bud Grant. You're looking to the Rick and Bubba show. Hey, oh, hey. Boy. Rick, Rick's Tom in it. <laughs> Rick, 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 don't do that. Rick, Tom Landry has passed on. No, he has, but not in our world. Can't you leave him alone? <laughs> he still lives with us. Oh, this is Tom Landry, uh, but you're listening to the Rick, Rick and Bubba show. <laughs> It's like it's the first time I hear it every time. <laughs> I love it. And the best part is because y'all went in. We'll keep that. Thank you. <laughs> of course we do, Greg. Well, what are you going to do, got, ask a legend for another one? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, no, it's Baba. It's Baba. <laughs> it ain't Buggle. Right, it's Buggle. <laughs> I mean, we, we still have Richard Simmons in there. I still oh, can't boy. get past the fact that Bubba didn't go hunting with Bud Grant. But I, I'm telling you, they're, they're, those, those turkey hunts, they've, they've been problems. Is it because you're like scared the board, of, too. I think it's because you're scared of snakes, and you didn't. that's why you don't turkey no, hunt I, now. I don't like snakes. Well, you would do it. Well, you didn't want Bud Grant to see that. That's, yeah, what, that's what it is. He didn't see him want to crawl. I can't get down there. I'm scared. I think that may have been the year we had a trip planned to the Bahamas or something. Oh, uh, now you got Bahamas. I thought you were coaching. No, we... Do different things. Don't sp- forget, he was. On we the don't coach to during, usually during spring there. break because the the team didn't play. So you didn't want you didn't want him to see you with chaps and and snake boots on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Well, especially on the beach. In the Bubba Bahamas. had his snake boots on the other day. He was telling me about. It. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coach. I wear hey, them coach, all. That's the only boots. Coach I got. Grant, this is Bill Bubba Bussy. I can't go turkey hunting. Don't be mad with me. <laughs> I'm nopey now. I don't know what that was. <laughs> oh, we did. Okay, we do have it. Uh-huh. All right, because I, if I'm, I'm pretty sure that voicemail you left for Bud Grant, we found it. Don't be mad <laughs> with me. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to found- I wanted to find the details on that coin toss that Bud Grant was that boy's on. That coin toss. The, <laughs> the temperature, the real temperature, was minus six degrees, wind chill minus twenty five, and he's night. in a golf shirt. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's just mm, unbelievable. I know it. I know it. <laughs> That's a real man right there. And they buddy. couldn't even win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Might have been somebody oh, you'd like to have met. They, they, yeah. Bubba, the Viking curse, it couldn't, Bud Grant couldn't even fix it. I know it. I know At it. least they didn't tease you this year. They went and got over with it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we all knew that was coming. I thought it might be a week later, but they yeah. went ahead and got yeah. it out of the way. Yeah, well, that, that powerhouse giants that barely made the hey, playoffs. Hey, go Chiefs. Guys, yeah. look at the snowblower is literally blowing snow at him as it clears the field, yeah. and he doesn't even care. No, yeah. he doesn't care. Uh, look at that. Well, you see, you feel Rick, bad because even he he's trying to cold. work. He's trying to find some way uh-huh. for them to win this game, and they just can't do it. Yeah. Rick, they it's showed him cold. up in the. Uh, Rick, up don't in, say he's got a little office, you know, up in don't in their anything. in their dome, and it Rick, showed him this weekend. No, I, I thought he. I thought I think he had that. I heard he sat on top of the dome. Yeah, he wants yeah, to yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bet he didn't like when they went inside. Oh, yeah, he that ain't but he has real air football players play. No, yeah, mm. he hates that, and people don't come to our camp. Yeah, <laughs> he told me he was done with Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I had to be something important. No way you would have missed that. Mm. Yeah, you know? we, what we year know? was that? I don't I have remember. no idea. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. But that, that's, on, a, that's always a, that, I was there. That spring break is is always a conflict with that event. 
Yeah, I have. You could have taken him to the beach. He could have found some seashells for you. That was probably back when the spring breaks were pretty Doug fixed. Grant. Yep. Is that 2016? That's, Maybe. That's, what, I, that's I, what I'm looking at here. I, I don't know. No idea. Possibly. All right, we had him on. We had him on Friday, November the 12th, 2010. We had him on. With Good Mark grief. The turkey hunt went 2010. 2010. That was a different time there. Yeah. It I think we be, had him on again on. in 16, I think, but 2010 was 16, the first time probably. we had him on. All right, guys, wrapping her up. Uh, for a lot of you, we wrapped the day up, up together. Thanks for being with us. Uh, for those of you that uh, may have more Rick and Bubba content rolling your way today, hang in there. Should be coming up. Uh, we'll catch you tomorrow if you're wrapping things up, Lord willing. If you got more Rick and Bubba, stick around. Find out all the different ways to get Rick and Bubba content, both live and archived, at rickandbubba.com. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.